Amanda. The doctor. Ah! And I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Yeah. And welcome to the Vaping Doctor Shonda podcast, all things related to the black culture. The doctor in front of your name. Stop scrolling for one second. This month, we are bringing back the psychology of black women, the online class brought to you by yours truly, Dr. Shonda, licensed clinical psychologist. Y'all, I've been getting so many questions about why anxiety and depression presents differently in black women. What do we do about it? How can we start to combat this? And what are some of the reasonings behind it? Listen, if you are a black woman who has questions about anxiety and depression, it's something you experience or something your loved ones experience, or if you're a professional who works with black women who experience anxiety and depression, I promise you this class is for you. Make sure that you sign up today. Hey, what's up, everybody? You are now listening to The Paging Dr. Shonda Show. I am your host, Dr. Shonda, and here we encourage self-reflection through meaningful conversation. I am so excited to hop into today's discussion because we are talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac. And we have none other than DJ Richie Sky with us today. DJ Richie Sky, please introduce yourself to the people because we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here. Uh, for those who don't know me, I actually was on a Bravo show uh, in about, I think what, 2018, I was on a show called Stripped, where they take all of your possessions for 21 days, and then you are forced to see how you live without those possessions, and you get one thing back every day. So they take everything, including your clothes, your car, your money, everything. So you got to kind of figure it out. So that was pretty yeah. neat. I had already come from the world of journalism, and I was already recapping shows at After Buzz TV. So after I left the news world, I just said, you know what? I was having a conversation with Funky Daniva, who said, you know what, you should just do what you were doing at your new show and just do it yourself on YouTube. And honestly, it's been nonstop ever since. And the funny thing about it is I actually was we were laid off from <laughs> from the new show, like on a Friday. I remember it. it was me and my co-host. She's actually a real housewife of Miami. She was on season two. And so I remember oh, wow. we went into work that Friday. We did our we did our jobs. And. The next thing you know, we're being called into the green room and they're like, well, this is your check for your last for your last week. <laughs> and we were just what? like stumped. Yeah, we were we were really, Yo. really stumped. And so I had to pivot really, really quickly. I mean, I, I, you know, thank God it just happened to all work in my favor. But now it's it's kind of nice because. I get asked to come to news stations now, whereas before it was like I was scrambling to try to work in news. And the funny thing about it is when the last day I, I was actually kind of relieved because I discovered that that type of news just wasn't for me. So I felt like God moved me into this position and I'm, I'm just running with it. That's amazing. I was literally just about to say that, like that literally sounds like God's plan, like all over it. Like mm -hmm. literally shutting one door so you can walk through another, period. Yep. And if you don't <laughs> shut it, God will shut it for you. Come on. That's a whole word. <laughs> <laughs> you about to start preaching. <laughs> okay. So first of all, I love, love, love your content. I am a huge fan of when you review like the Real Housewives of Potomac. I was watching one day, you were talking about colorism. I was like, yo, he's so intellectual. And then you was like, yeah, NECA, you should read this article. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh my God, that's <laughs> my article. I wrote that. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let me reach out to him since he's, you know, he doesn't know who I am, but he's familiar with my work. And hopefully we can just have a conversation about this. And I'm so happy yeah. that you accepted the invitation. Okay, so it sounds like you do agree that colorism does exist on this cast. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Okay. 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 So what have been your thoughts while seeing this unfold throughout the seasons and like things that have transpired over the reunion? I think that there is a, um, oh my God, it's, this is layered, man. Like I know. I think the first thing is I'll go back to my first, I think the first time I heard the term colorism, because I'd never been able, I think it wasn't until recent years where I actually recognized that that, that was a term, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. I'm going to be straight up. Like I've always known that there were this, there was this, take it back to school days. 
Right. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. <laughs> TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. You had mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the good and bad hair, you know, situation. Right. And for whatever reason, this is where I was telling you before we got on that I was going to be honest. I always just assumed that that related only specifically to women. Mm. So I thought that that was really a thing that it, it never really occurred to me that there was a broader issue. I just thought that because of school days, and you hear little things when you grow up, depending on where you grew up, especially in the South, like in Virginia, like I did, yeah. you hear little things and you hear little remarks and stuff like that. But, you know, for me, I just I don't I didn't I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. But also, too, I recognize that I'm a man and I'm a light skinned mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. So I don't you know, I, I look back at my life now and I often wonder when I'm having these conversations about it with with my community, like, how am I being received when I'm having these conversations? If I'm yeah. pointing out what I feel like is colorism, but I'm a light skinned man, do I have that mm -hmm. right? Am I have I has has some level of privilege gotten me to this into spaces where I might not have gotten otherwise? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But what I do know is. I'm willing to at least ask the question, mm. might it have gotten me into these places? Could it have played a part in some, in getting me access to something? And that is the part where I feel like Potomac fails. Yes. The women who are, I think, uh, who have the privilege or the perceived privilege, I should say, they are unwilling to look at how might my actions be impacting the group in such a way that the audience mm -hmm. feels like I am either A, a colorist or colorism right. is happening? And mm -hmm. then B, how do I stop being so afraid of the word colorist that I stop at least trying to understand what they are experiencing? Because I think that also plays a factor in it too, this fear mm -hmm. of like, you labeled me a colorist. Uh, like that's all I heard. So mm -hmm. now I can't even have a conversation because I'm so sensitive about it. Mm -hmm. Versus saying, that's, like you mm -hmm. said, you're not even willing to ask yourself, well, what did I do something? Like, did mm -hmm. I, am I being perceived a way? And I, I'm, and maybe I'm unaware and then do I care? And, and that's the, the unfortunate part, right? So if we're going to have conversation, well, first of all, you, you said a lot that I, I want to unpack. I know, okay. I know, I know. No, no, no. This is great, though. This is great. Okay. Um, <laughs> so to the Fox Soul community, you guys are getting the shorter version. So if you want the longer 
version, make sure you go to my page. But um, you talked about like, okay, do we even have the right to talk about these types of things? Because like, if you're of a certain complexion, is it even received well? And I will say, that's like a comment that I get a lot. I talk about this a lot on my social media pages. I get some people who are like, you know, you're this complexion, da 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 da. You don't even know what racism is, da 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 da. I have other people saying, thank you for using your privilege in order to be able to talk about this type of stuff. Mm. Because if I, if I was a, you know, a woman who was darker complected or, you know, who, um, who, who it is being in, like, I'm the, I'm being impacted by colorism or whatever, um, which some could argue that it, it could happen, but you know, different conversation. But if I am on that other side, like people might not receive it as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just like from a racism perspective, if a white person is standing up saying no y'all this is actually like racism uh white people this is white supremacy here let's address this as opposed to like you know somebody black saying no this is racism or whatever like it's, it's received so differently so i i totally hear you and i empathize with that perspective and um even going back to what you were saying about like the uh I call it fragility right so i call it light skin fragility <laughs> if, if i'm gonna be honest um hearing somebody talk about colorism and you know saying i operate in this way or whatever i automatically causes me to be in tears and fall apart or whatever like what were your thoughts when you saw robin's uh tears of fragility i mean whenever somebody cries on tv i look for the tears i'm like i, I got a magnifying glass up to the screen like is i mean is there any water running is the mascara running like what is really nope. happening and i didn't see it right so i assumed that she was having a what felt to me like an overreaction in order to express how horrified she was at the way that Candace was expressing to Giselle how she felt Giselle used her privilege. She didn't say that to Robin. Maybe mm -hmm. the audience has said it to Robin, but mm -hmm. Candace did not. Candace mm -hmm. directed that toward Giselle. Robin took it on. So yeah, either she's taking it on from simply Candace or Candace and the audience, and now is directing the horror at Candace, mm -hmm. which is okay. tricky, right? Because now you yeah. have made Candace responsible for your feelings. That's a whole other level to me of manipulation right there, because mm -hmm. now you are now everybody's just pointing a, a, a gun at Candace, who has been told, tone it down. Oh my gosh. Okay. Can get we get there, into that? Get there and take it. Take every bullet that that anybody that wants to throw at you right now, because they were definitely throwing them. So it does it kind of go into to me. Um I hate to use it because I feel like the term is a little overused, but the like a Karen behavior okay. where it's like <laughs> You know, like you've been shocked and scared by the by the by the black person. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When it's like, no, y'all, we can have a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. What am I doing that makes the audience feel or you feel that I am exhibiting some type of right. colorism type behavior? That's all it is. And how can we how can we change that? That is so simple. And you brought up a great point because I, I didn't even think about this. Um, I was like, yo, why is she so like she got so much energy for Candace and Candace didn't even say this directly to you, to her. But you're saying that she could be internalizing what the audience has been saying about her and projecting that onto Candace. Yep. And like, how do we even address this if no one if everyone's continuing to deny that it even exists? Yeah. And I think the issue is also too. I mean, I think that there's probably a level of favoritism that yeah. goes into um, how the network perceives the structure of the show, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I mean by that is typically there's a face for every franchise, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you could argue that before Nene left, it was Nene for Atlanta. For sure. you know, clearly, it's Teresa for um, New Jersey. Clearly, it's Kyle for Beverly Hills, but at one point in time, you could have argued that it was Lisa Vanderpump, regardless. Mm -hmm. And clearly, the face is Giselle. So with that perceived level of favoritism that is already in place in the structure of the franchise, it doesn't make it any easier because now it is perceived that you already are favored. You're already 
-hmm. you already you, this is your complexion mm -hmm. are you now we weaponizing that using that to your advantage i should say let me not say weaponize are you using yeah. that to your advantage so that you can ice people out because what it appears to be now is that every time you get into it with a, ca a cast member of a darker complexion and you drop something explosive and they fire back at you with something equally as explosive you can't take it and then you choose to ice them out but if it's a ca if it's a cast member who is the same complexion and they shoot back at you, i.e. Karen, because Karen has loaded a lot of clips at Giselle. A lot of them. And they were, some of them were a lot worse than anything that Wendy has ever said to her. Uh, so come to on, me, sing, like, sing. You can get, exactly. So you can get over that with Karen, but you, for some reason now, just have this utter disdain for Wendy. Make it make sense, because we saw it didn't happen. We Let's take it back, to because people forget. But let's take it back to season, right, right at the end of season one she dropped the bomb about the fireman with Sharice, right? Mm -hmm. Sharice, at some point in time, acquiesced, got back into the good graces of, you know, the, the, you know, queen of the franchise, right? The face of the franchise, right? So then you have Monique, boom. But Monique doesn't back down, okay? At yeah. when, when Monique figured out what was up, she lit a fire under Giselle. Giselle was not able to recover from that. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think that Giselle even mm -hmm. liked her anyway. Um, so I felt mm -hmm. like it was, uh, as Candace stated, it was to Giselle's benefit that Candace and Monique got into that because now you get rid yes. of Monique. You give a soliloquy at Monique, but not at Mia. Okay, cool. All right. Which happens after that, Monique. That is so you, would think, you would think that... If you gave Monique that soliloquy, then you would be giving a sermon to Mia, right? And this is no disrespect to Mia, but I'm, we're talking about another altercation that happens on the right. show where you've already right. had an altercation that you said you weren't going to stand for, but that one was okay. So it's, it's just a systematic, yeah. it's like this systematic thing that just keeps happening. And mm -hmm. you look at it and you're like, well, what is going on here? So to the audience, what are we left to think? Yeah. And even thinking about that, like um, going further into like how they they label these women, uh, women of a darker complexion are often labeled on the show as being aggressive, even when you're the one getting the, the drink thrown in your face or antagonistic. Um, I'm even thinking about the altercation they had this year where Deborah, who's clearly a light skinned woman, was the one who was the aggressor. However, the women who were darker complected were seen as individuals who incited that that uh, interaction that they had. Exactly. Versus, I mean, honestly, yeah. if I'm blaming anybody in that situation, I'm blaming my business partner because you brought this person here to our event and I need you to mm. understand what, the, what this business means to me. Yeah. And no disrespect to Ashley because granted, do I think Ashley do I think that Ashley felt that that was going to happen? No. Just in experiencing Ashley the way that I have, you know, in social settings, I just don't think that that's who she is. But I do think that if you bring someone to my house and they act a fool, I have to blame you. And I struggle with with that because, you know, I I would I I don't tend to label people, especially you know, on my platform like. This I, I would never say this person is colorist or I, mm -hmm. I, I would stop myself before I ever said that. But I do think it's like at least be willing to take a look at what people are saying and just take yeah. it in to say, you know what? What can we do to make this better? Mm -hmm. And I and I, I wish that Giselle had taken that stance because she's clearly looked at as a leader. Yes. And I think that that is why mm -hmm. the the. The, a lot of attention is is being placed in her direction because everyone know everyone on that cast knows that the network looks at her as a leader. So if the leader is failing to absolutely lead in a way that feels, you know, uh, or if they if they lead in a way that feels morally ambiguous, then the audience is kind of mm -hmm. and the cast has to look like, what are we supposed to do? What do we do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I'm 
I'm going to take heed to what you said because I typically don't use the word colorist. I usually say colorism. So if I did say X, Y, Z no, is colorist, you, you I take that back. Oh, okay, okay. I was just thinking about it. It's, it's something I often think about too. It's like, yeah, I, as, because I know that in this discussion, you know, I we are, for me at least, I am looking at Giselle because I feel like she is, she is, she's, she's the roadblock in this instance for me. Yeah, yeah. And until she's willing to move and, and flow like water, then mm -hmm. there's always going to be a dam. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And you know, there's a difference between being someone who is like a blatant, you know, I don't like these girls because they dark skin. I'm a colorist, blah, 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 versus someone who uh, behaves in ways that is aligned with colorism. And go. so, yeah. And so, you know, I don't think that any of the Potomac ladies are bad people, but no. denying it is definitely aligned with white supremacy. And, you know, we got to address these things. Yep. And until we're willing to address it, if you can't talk about it, you can't heal from it. Come on. That's a whole word. Um, okay, so my last question to you. We just got a, a you know a good piece of content today from Mr. DJ Richie Sky talking about how Candace was told that she needed to tone down her behavior and her verbiage during the reunion. And I'm wondering, like, what were your thoughts on this? My thoughts were, was everyone given this directive? Yeah. Because, I mean, again, I, I saw this comment posted somewhere i think it was my girl taria um i think there was a question posed has the jersey cast ever been given that directive because if you've ever watched one of those reunions i mean while candace is sharp with her tongue yes some of those ladies are teresa <laughs> i mean can be downright <laughs> filthy with hers yeah so for me i'm just wondering I mean, was that directive only given to Candace right. or was it given to everyone? Because yeah. it seemed like only Candace was the one who got that memo. And, you know, I can see like while I was watching Reunion, I'm like, yo, what's going on with my girl Candace? Like she was literally like biting her cheeks. You can see that she was trying not to say certain things. She wasn't as like I was expecting Candace to say something back to X, Y, Z and it didn't happen. So you can literally see it. And so it made sense when um, we heard that piece of content today about her being told to tone things down. And my response is like, I immediately go to, oh, they trying to police a, a dark skinned black woman. Why are they policing her behaviors? Why are they policing her tone X, Y, or Z? Because like, like if they didn't give that directive to everybody, I think that goes back to our first theory regarding if we please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. <laughs> TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home. Build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Love. Our money. She's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, 
Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. And they're they're also aligning with colorism as well. Sorry, production, but like it is what it is. It's like, well, what are you doing to put a stop to it? You exactly. know, are there any ever are there going to ever be consequences for some of the actions that some of the cast members have taken that have just kind of gone over the line, which is what right. has caused yeah. Candace to react in the past anyway. So. Yeah. To be honest with you, when I really think about it, as you were talking, I was like, it might have been better that Candace, you know, did chill and kind of relax because it allowed mm -hmm. other people to show us more mm -hmm. of who they are. Mm -hmm. And we found ourselves, I think, even more disappointed when, when we yeah. got to see that. I feel like a lot of masks were removed this season. We mm -hmm. got to see a lot of people's true characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think maybe... You know, you never know. You never know how that could play out with her, um, them encouraging her to uh, play nice for the mm -hmm. sake of moving forward, right? Um, because I did feel like I felt like she. I felt like if Giselle had opened up, I felt like Candace would have opened up as well, absolutely. Even more. Um, and I felt like they could have they could have made some strides towards moving forward, mm -hmm. but. It just mm -hmm. didn't happen. And that was disappointing. It's like watching a movie, right? And I talk about this all the time, like on the when I'm yeah. talking about shows. We love conflict because when we're watching a movie, it's it, it's the conflict that takes us, you know, that is it gets us ignited, right? But conflict without resolution feels like a letdown when yeah. you're watching it on television. Yeah. So that is why the audience continues to feel this way because there mm -hmm. is no resolution to the conflict that's not good tv oh my gosh yes you just explained like why i've been so like <laughs> like dreading sundays at 8 p.m it's like no it's not gonna be a conflict. conflict yeah i feel like bravo needs to hire you as a consultant dj richie scott because you gotta get this together <laughs> like what like what is you know, going on? I, I just love television in general. I love reality <laughs> yeah. TV, and I just you know it's a shame because I think Potomac was at one point in time my favorite show, yes. and Thanks. you know now it's it 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 would it became what Beverly Hills was at one time for me, and that yeah. was like oh my god I'm cringing watching this right, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to do that. Exactly, exactly, and you know it, um, going back to what you were saying about it being the one of the most popular shows i think a lot of my friends like had potomac up there like probably higher than atlanta at one point um and i'm going to close on this thought like people loved real housewives of potomac because it wasn't like your former actors your former athletes white blah blah, blah. these were everyday dmv women that like who were just making a name for themselves things that they were doing in the community and we love to see that on tv because they had stuff they were aspirational they did things in the community and now we're seeing things that plagues our community in terms of like black women which is colorism and you know xenophobia like all these things but y'all are not addressing it like it, it has the potential to make a great comeback if they were just to address it yeah and I, as you said that, I think the maybe the parting thought is that you can't have all that good and not have a little bad. But when you do have the bad, you have to address yeah. it. Come on here. Like, period. First of all, thank you so much, DJ Richie Sky, for coming into the building, dropping so many gems and a lot of things for us to continue to think about. Um, can you let us know what you have going on? I see your book at the bottom of your screen. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have a book series. It's called The Wickedest Wives. It is ironically, <laughs> it's it's a reality romance mystery series where, you know, an ex-journalist, you know, goes into the world of reality television and she discovers that it's not all it seems. And there's a little bit of murder, a little bit of, you know, other things going on. So uh, book two will be out on May 14th and you guys can pre-order it on Amazon. It's called The Wickedest Wives, A Vicious Reality.
Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, for sure. We definitely going to support that. So make sure y'all go to Amazon, order DJ Richie Sky's book. Y'all make sure that you tune in next Thursday at 9. No, we changed the time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, you have the power to create the emotions that you want to experience. God bless. I am Paging Dr. Sean. I am the, the Dr. Sean. And I am a licensed clinical psychologist. Yeah. And welcome to the Paging Dr. Sean, the podcast, all things related to the black culture. Oh, whoa, whoa. The doctor in front of your name. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Dr. Shonda, and you are watching the Paging Dr. Shonda Show, or you could be listening to the podcast wherever you're listening to the podcast audio version. I am here with a very special guest. We have Mr. Ron Days back here at the Paging Dr. Shonda Show, uh, who is a, a legend. So, Mr. Ron, would you mind introducing yourself? Well, hello. Thank you for having me. My name is Ron Days. Many know me as Mr. Ron from... TV's award-winning Gullah Gullah Island, a show of the 1990s. Uh, I am a native of St. Helena Island, South Carolina, one of the, uh, uh, in one of the states, one of the four states that's now a part of the federal Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. And I am a former chairman of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission. For the past, uh, well, I retired from Brook Green Gardens uh, as vice president for creative education in 2022 and for 18 years, I worked there and uh, part of my work was uh, introducing Gullah Geechee culture and heritage to the hundreds of thousands of guests who visit this premier sculpture gardens in our country. And uh, there are some permanent outdoor exhibits and continuing programs about Gullah Geechee culture and heritage that guests can enjoy while going there. That is amazing. And, and you and, and Miss Natalie are in the uh, African American Museum in... Yes, uh, Miss yeah. Natalie, Natalie Days, Miss Natalie from TV's Gullah Gullah Island and I are husband and wife. Yep. And there is an exhibit or there are several exhibits about um, our work. Um, at the International African American Museum Love in it. Charleston, South Carolina. That is amazing. That is so amazing. I'm so happy to have you back at the show uh, because the last show, I learned so much about Gullah Geechee culture and mm -hmm. a lot of listeners, a lot of the viewers on the show learned a lot as well. And I know that is your passion to talk about it. Yes, it is. Yeah. I love this. Okay. Well, so we're going to hop right into it. I'm wondering if you can kind of like tell us a bit about how growing up in St. Helena um, amongst Gullah Geechee culture, how did that influence you to create Gullah Gullah Island? And what was that like? Well, uh, my wife and I were uh, the stars as well as cultural consultants mm -hmm. for Gullah Gullah Island. We did not create it. Um, it was not our idea. But um the uh, idea was pitched to us to serve as performers by uh, a woman who had come down with, soon after Gloria Naylor, novelist, had written Mama Day, which was based on a fictional Gullah community, very much like Defusky Island in South Carolina. After the publication of that book, she uh, bought a home on St. Helena Island and we became friends. Mama Day was to be, um, was being optioned for a Disney movie um, for which Lawrence uh, Fishburne was to star in and direct. He, uh, the woman who's to be the executive producer of the Mama Day Disney film, came to Buford County to uh, scout sites. And my wife and I were invited to this dinner party on the last day of their visit, the last evening. And uh, Maria Perez, who was to have been the executive producer of that production, um, informed us that she and her business partner, Kathleen Minton of Perez Minton Productions in New York City, who had been working on a TV program idea, a multi-cultural um, programming idea. And this was her first time visiting a Gullah community. Perhaps it could be about some magical Gullah community. She herself uh, was, is a Puerto Rican. 
And uh, we said, sure, but we didn't think much could, might, might happen to it. But as promised, when she returned to New York, she spoke with Kathleen Minton, and they began to uh, uh, communicate with us to get ideas about what this children program could be. The program itself uh, was very much centered on our- Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. The doctor in front of your Our lives, our own personal lives. I'm a former newspaper reporter. Natalie loves doing art. So the children who came to the Gullah, Gullah Island community engaged with us singing with um, families and um, learning about the real, authentic Gullah community that I grew up in. That is amazing. And also, I'm going to add that you baked on the show and you also bake in real life. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Those big fat biscuits uh, was one of the songs from the first season. That's because when the um, the creative team came to visit us, they came uh, and they just uh, they visited our home community. They followed us around for about three days to a week, and that was one of the things they saw because I baked um, biscuits on Sunday mornings for my family. And I do indeed make pound cakes. Mr. Rob Gullalicious Pound Cakes are available on Etsy.com. I'm just over here reminiscing about the uh, Mr. Ron's Gullalicious Pound Cake that I had on New Year's. And I think I had another one in August sometime. But okay. I, I ordered two pound cakes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> they were worth it. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, like I said, both you, uh, Mr. Ron and Miss Natalie, you all are just amazing um, and true legends uh, to millennials, especially because I literally um, I get comments every day on that YouTube video that we did in my um, on audio podcast as well. But even today, uh, somebody commented they had no clue that we were going to be recording together. But they said, oh, my goodness, I'm watching this video with my son, who is a millennial, and they grew up on this show. This is amazing. And it's just right. amazing. Just just watch how you all have continued to just influence the culture. Thank you. Um, yes. That's part of one of the exhibits at the I Am, the International African American Museum, that um, the show Gullah Gullah Island raised awareness of Gullah, now known as Gullah Geechee culture, around the world. And we each, Natalie and I, received comments from many people on a regular basis saying how seeing seeing us on this program shaped their childhoods. Yes. They had not seen people 
who looked like themselves. They had not seen people who spoke like themselves before. And it raised an, a deep interest in them that uh, they pursued, that they should pursue the avenues of work that, that many of them are now engaged in. And we can thank y'all for that. Like you all are <laughs> cultural influencers. Um, and speaking of cultural influence, absolutely. Uh, I, I wanted to hop into this, the recent work that you had regarding yes. Raptors in the Rice Lands, because I have my copy. I have my yes. copy. <laughs> and so I wanted to hop into what motivated you to write this book. Well, um, this is, this will be, I believe my seventh book. I've had um, historical documentation. My very first one, Reminiscences of Sea Island Heritage, Legacy of Freedmen on St. Helena Island. Um, and there have been children's books, as well as Gullah Branch's West African Roots, where I tell, it, it, that was published 21 years after Reminiscences as a sequel, more or less, because of my two visits to Ghana and to uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa, where I saw uh, these in living, walking before me, these connections with my Gullah Geechee heritage that I had read about and heard about, but um, we come from West Africans. And in our speech ways, our beliefs, our uh, cultural practices, and our, um, and our language, those uh, connections were just in front of me um, on a regular basis. And um, with raptors in the rice lands, many of those things that I wrote about in these history, um, these documentations of Gullah Geechee heritage, mm -hmm. or that I spoke about in the children's books that I've written, all find themselves in this historical um, nonfiction novel. It, it's, it's amazing. It's based on a fictional community of Georgetown, South Carolina. Now, Georgetown uh, County is the place where half of the country's rice was produced during the 17 and 1800s. This was because the vast number of enslaved Africans who were brought here because of this specific skills and knowledge of rice production. There were over 45,000 acres of um, rice fields in Georgetown County. And uh, this book, Raptors in the Rice Lands, is conveyed in four acts and with chapter names that follow the production stages of Carolina gold rice. It's a 21st century fictional community um, and in it, a story unfolds revealing family secrets and conflicts that challenge cultural beliefs. With big hearted intention, newlyweds Florence and Chadwick Wineglass attempt to promote economic legacy, but their unconscious motives often ensnare those that they assist. The wine glasses become raptor like in their generosity at a moment when other community members' intentions also prove to be menacing. They want to be helpful, but uh, uh, you know, they find out no, something is a bit twisted. Mm -hmm. um, they find out that there are other community members who likewise have these intentions of being big hearted and generous. But when you look a bit deeper, you find, oh, there's something that perhaps should change. So I think that it's a story that readers will find interesting. Absolutely. It sounds interesting. And I'm even uh, reading some of the, the praise for the Raptors in the Rice Lands in the, the first page. Um, and it literally says, Ron, Mr. Ron Days' story offers a much needed reminder of the voices of the Gullah Geechee ancestors that propel modern intimacy and pride of the Gullah Geechee in their land, culture, heritage, and language. And, and even when thinking about that, and it's, it's just so many people just writing about your praises in this book, even thinking mm -hmm. about that, um, I'm wondering, like highlighting the importance of the heritage and the dialect of the individuals of the Gullah Geechee culture, I wonder like how important was that for you? 
Well, stories are important. Yeah. Um, memories from childhood, um, memories that make or different uh, family events and experiences that may have been passed down to you um, as a child. At some point, as you mature, you may find an interest and find what was it mm -hmm. that grandma or granddad was speaking about and you will begin to see those connections with your own personal direction, yes. uh, things that you are doing or ways that when you begin your own family, you yeah. may wish to uh, continue or try to discontinue because it wasn't beneficial um, um, for, for your family member whose story you remembered. So there are all these stories within this book. As I said, it's a fictional community. But one thing that I have heard from a number of persons who have read advanced copies is that these people are real. They know them. They know them from their personal lives or from their communities. So that speaks to me that I help to bring this truth um, to. <laughs> Yes. And, and even as I'm hearing you say this, it's causing me to reflect on some thoughts that I had over the weekend uh, about mm -hmm. the importance of especially individuals of the African diaspora, us writing right. their stories down, because that is how we pass that down to the next generation. I was yeah. recalling, um, you know, I, I always heard my grandparents talk about how they migrated from North Carolina to Delaware and like the Northeast. But it never really resonated with me like, OK, you all were a part of the Great Migration until over the weekend I saw a movie yes. about it. And I'm like, wow, this is what y'all were experiencing. And I've never kind of like really asked my, my grandparents about this until, you know, over the weekend I was motivated to watch something related to it. So I'm like, we have to write these things down so that our yes, children and do. our children. There are <laughs> numerous um, people, say, from South Carolina or Georgia. Florida, North Carolina, who moved north or elsewhere. And one of the things that uh, their, um, their, their ancestors will tell you that wherever they went, people would always wonder why they spoke the way they did or yeah. why they ate a lot of rice, more so than other African-Americans. And it's uh, becoming... Um, known to many, it's because of their Gullah Geechee heritage from their birthplaces. And that Gullah heritage or Gullah Geechee heritage um, is rooted in West African um, beliefs and practices, mm. which are shared and, with numerous yeah. people around the globe. Absolutely. And, and when we think about this, it really brings out like the interconnectedness of individuals yes. of the African diaspora overall. Yes. And it sounds like you're highlighting this in your book. Mm -hmm. It did. Uh, the main characters, of uh, um, the wine glasses, uh, take a honeymoon to Jamaica. They are native Georgetonians. They come from a community in this fictional community known as Mossaville. But while they're in Jamaica, they see scenes that are very much like their hometown of Georgetown with the people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with baskets on their heads and making um, different products. And they even the speech way of the Jamaicans, they identify with. And they see a monument of Marcus Garvey. And they are intrigued by it because the Jamaicans are honoring this important historical figure. And they want to promote economic legacy in their home community. Yeah. Wow, that that is amazing. And I love how um, you talked about how the, the chapters in the book highlight the mm -hmm. different um, processes of like the, the growth of, of rice. Yes. That was, okay. of Carolina gold rice. That's right. Yes. OK. Can you walk us through like a, another piece of that? Like the, the I'm seeing the planting, the growing, the harvesting. Um, what was that like bringing those chapters to life and, and reflecting that into 
uh, the, the well, Gullah Gitmo. Taking the different characters, yeah. making sure that activities that they engaged in mm -hmm. uh, fit within the names of those particular seasons uh, of, of, of rice growth, uh, planting, um, harvesting, growing, harvesting, and threshing and milling. I think readers will be able to point, look back and see that they fit within those time frames of rice production. Now, while I was writing this book, I was very much interested with This Is Us, the TV series, because mm -hmm. I found that so um, magical because, you know, it was not a linear story. Um, you would see, you would be here in the present and then some, you would have some segment of an episode in the future or then back in the past. And then you get to another episode and it's the future and it goes back to the past or even furthermore in the future. So that's how this book is laid out. It's not linear at all, but there are time signatures that let you know how these characters are living and how they relate from time period to time period. And, and speaking of the, the characters, I'm wondering um, which character would you say you relate to the most, Mr. Ron? Well, I, I like to say I relate to all of them because there were all these voices going through my head, okay. um, making changes. No, you can't, no, I, I, I can't say that. Someone else has to say that. Mm -hmm. This is the way that I would follow up with whatever the circumstance may be. And there, as I said, there are uh, reference, although the surnames of, um, the surnames are George Tonian, but the characters sometimes are based on people from my St. Helenian childhood, but it's not named. <laughs> they are because, and that's because one of the reasons while serving on the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor. Got the doctor there in front of your name. Scene one of three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm gonna to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. They hug you? Yeah. <laughs> they made you feel that way, bro? I probably do. Oh, man. I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. N-Y-A-M. It comes from a West African word. I don't remember which specific language, but it means to eat. Nyamam. Nyamam up. And okay. there is a, um, uh, I'm trying to look for a passage where they are eating uh, a dinner. 
uh, a family is eating a dinner, but they yam the dinner. And then because of the religious um, practices, um, there's usually it would end with a prayer. And there is a prayer that was used, and I'm not finding it as quickly as I would like, but in that way, yam, yam, yam them up. And the food of Gullah Geechee people so good, it good, good. It make your belly want for dance. It make you happy, happy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, so yam, 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 yam. Okay. Uh huh. And right. in one of, um, I think with uh, uh, Mr. Ron's Gullahlicious pound cakes, and either I had made an announcement or it was written, and I got um, comments from people in Jamaica. They were so because they use the word yam. Meaning oh. it, it's it's one of those connections wow. um, uh, within the African diaspora. Well, I, I tell you, Mr. Ron, you you make me really want to visit uh, South Carolina and you know everywhere else where the Gullah Geechee people are are there and using the dialect mm -hmm. because it's so interesting how we're all connected. It's it, like the, the African diaspora just it just makes you proud to be black, honestly. <laughs> yes. I would like to say, if anyone visits Myrtle Beach, make sure they visit Brook Green Gardens. That's where I was formerly employed. And if they would take a ride on the Creek Excursion, it's a boat ride that takes um, guests out in the rivers um, and creeks of the uh, former plantations of what is now Brook Green Gardens. And they learn about the production stages of Carolina gold rice, wow. which was grown on Brook Green Plantation. And uh, that's information that I used in outlining this book. So they will learn a lot in how the Africans, how their work made the uh, production of Carolina gold mm -hmm. so um, profitable that the wealth of the planters rival the wealth of European monarchs, kings mm -hmm. and queens. Wow, wow. And it really just makes us think about how resilient we are as a people. Like yes. just the, you know, I I definitely um, appreciated your, your time, Mr. Ryan. Um, is there anything else we should know about the book or how to buy it or if you're doing sure. anything? Well, uh, the book is being released by publishers Bell Isle Books on April 30th. April 30th is the release day, date, um, but pre-orders can be made through Amazon.com as well as BarnesandNoble.com. It's available. It will be available in um, hardback, paperback, also in um, ebook, and. Um, Soon after the um, release of the print print copies, um, an audio book will be available, and I will be narrating it. Oh, that is amazing! That is amazing. Well, I'm a huge fan of all the work that you and, and Miss Natalie do, so um, I can't wait to continue to support all of your endeavors. Um, and would you mind reminding us of where we can also buy your cakes? The cakes are at um, www.etsy.com slash shop slash Gullalicious Cakes. Just go to the Etsy shop, look up Gullalicious Cakes. <laughs> and you won't be disappointed. I promise y'all. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> Mr. Thank Ron, it's you. always a pleasure for you coming. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having me. Awesome. And to the viewers out there, make sure that you all grab your copies of Raptors in the Rice Land, which is available on April 30th, and you can pre-order them like right now. So make sure you do that. And you guys come back next week. And don't forget, you have the power to create the emotions that you want to experience. God bless.
Okay, so there is a reason why they say it pays to be the boss. On one hand, you get to create your own schedule, make executive decisions, and you have the final say on money matters. Now, the flip side, the success of your company depends on almost every choice you make. So you have to make some really good ones. Entrepreneur Drika Gates has made a lot of good choices. She even threw the music industry for a loop when she stepped in on the scene to help with her husband, rapper Kevin Gates. And now she's calling all the shots in a new wellness space. So how did a little girl from Louisiana become a big time business mogul? We're talking about the boss lady moves that put Drika Gates on the map today on Porsche. Hello and welcome to the show. In today's Boss Lady episode, we're going inside the world of Drika Gates. Drika Gates wears a lot of hats. Serial entrepreneur, mother of two, and wife of Grammy-nominated rapper Kevin Gates. Just a few of the reasons why she is our Boss Lady of the day. Please welcome to the show, Drika Gates. Hello, hello. Hello, beautiful. So <laughs> good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so many interesting stories, so many life tales but it all starts with this little girl <laughs> from Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. Born and raised. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, born and raised in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. That's where I spent most of my childhood. The um, family roots are there. Family right? roots, yes, in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So what did you want to be? What did you want to do? Oh my gosh, growing up, I always thought that I was going to grow up and be a doctor. Like that was, ah. that was the path that I was going to take. And I actually started on that path, but ended up, taking a little small detour. Yes, a, a, a couple of small detours. I like how you put that. You have, because you were in college, right? Yes, I when was. When you changed your mind and decided to do something different. Let's talk about what was going on in your life yes. when you said, okay, I'm going to scratch going to med school. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I was in school to become a doctor. I've always been like, I call myself a healer at heart. Mm -hmm. I love helping people. So I went to school. I was at LSU with a pre-med major. Um, but at the time, I was also with my husband. He was my boyfriend then, Kevin mm -hmm. Gates. Mm -hmm. And he, I just saw that he was extremely talented. He was always a writer. He used to record music in his closet at his grandmother's house. Wow. And I just thought that he should take it seriously. So I, we were talking one day and I'm like, what do you think about actually doing this? Like for real, like professionally, what did he say? He said, yes. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's do it. And from then on, I literally like dropped out of college and boots on the ground. What did your <laughs> parents say when you said you were dropping out of college? for this nice guy that I'm dating. I know, right? How does that go? <laughs> um, I actually, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a good transition. They actually, like, I literally, I was cut off. Wow. Yes. Were you expecting that? Did you know the reaction was going to be so? I knew it was going to be a little severe. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was. And, and, we, my father and I, we've actually had conversations about this. Yeah. Um, and he's like apologized and things like that. So that make it makes me feel good now because now he sees that, you know, like the decision that I made that I really like when I made that decision, it yeah. was because I really believed in what I was doing. And I feel like that's the first lesson really for our viewers and particularly the women watching trust your gut, even, oh my gosh. even if it's going to come with some very serious consequences. consequences. Yes. You have to believe in yourself, trust in yourself. How did you forge ahead then working with Kevin with no, you know, the parental support is not there. It is now, obviously. But yes. how did you keep going? Because young, <laughs> young lady at this point. I mean, at that point, I really honestly had no choice but to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to make it work. So I was really passionate. I've all, I grew up, my house was... my music was always being played okay. everything from jazz to gangster rap music, you mm -hmm. know? So I grew up with music. Um, I was really just really passionate about making it happen. So you actually ended up working in the capacity of his manager. Yes, I did. Well, what experience did you have doing I, that? <laughs> I had zero experience <laughs> as a manager, but for me, like I'm that person that if I have a vision, I see a vision, yeah. I'm going after that and I'm going to do my research. I actually picked up this book by Don Passman. It's called all you need to, all you need to know about the music industry mm. and I literally I ran across my notes that I took from that book years ago but that was like my guide and that is what I used to kind of like you yeah know, find so I my feel way. like that's the next lesson learned do your research, research do your homework yes know what you're getting into 
but people were not taking you seriously, particularly men in the industry, particularly men in rap, right? <laughs> what was that like for you? Oh my gosh. What did they say? I, How did they treat you? I was just a girlfriend. And mm. then when we went to the big, the, the label, when we uh, did our partnership with them, they actually made the suggestion to me to hire a manager. And I'm like, but I am his manager. What, what do you mean I need to hire a manager? What, did the, what was their response when you said, I am the manager? <laughs> they said that I should consider, I should still consider mm. hiring, hiring a Basically, manager. Basically, oh, that's cute. Exactly. But like, you're time. cute, but yeah. So you hired I a man did. to do, and did you just basically say, here's what I w want to go? How did you execute that? <laughs> so, and how infuriating was that? It was, but it was for me, I like a good challenge. It's like now, you know, okay, I'm going to have this, and no offense, but this puppet that, <laughs> you know, this is what you wanted. Here you go. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they started to realize, hey, this person here is always saying, I have to go back and ask Strika. I have to ask Strika. I have to ask Strika. And then mm -hmm. eventually they realize, hey, you know. How did Kevin feel about that? Uh, he didn't like, because he was in full support of me because I was in full support of him. Yeah. And I mean, to this day, like, he'll always speak highly of, like, the impact that I had on, you know, his career just in general right. and the work that we put in together as a team. And life goes on. You continue. You have children. Yes. I and mean, how did you manage uh, sort of shifting from the capacity of manager to telling the puppet manager what to do and then having these beautiful children. Oh my gosh. Um, they, oh, you're gonna make me cry. Okay. That's <laughs> they okay. Actually, Safe we, space. We brought them along on the ride. We were on tours. The kids were in, before they could walk, I had them wow. in pouches and car seats. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so they, 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 in their early days, they spent most of their lives on the road. And how us. did you manage that? Cause I know that everyone talks about how rough this industry can be, how competitive it can be and not necessarily nurturing for a family. How did you keep it nurturing for your husband and your children and still handle your business? I mean, cause at the end of the begin, end of the day, like we came in this together, you know, we built it together, like as a team. So it was like, that was, we were joined at the hip, yeah. you know? So we were going to make it happen. Like we saw the vision together. Together and that's what it was. Biggest challenge in that season of your life with little kids, famous husband, trying to still find your footing as a wife, mm -hmm. a businesswoman. Biggest problem, how did you solve it? Oh gosh, pushing through. I don't want to be so vague, but literally like just standing true in what I knew the end goal was. Mm. Good Just point. really standing on that, yes. Good, good place to pause <laughs> right now. Lots more lessons to share. You are firing them off already with the Boss Lady Move lessons. I love it. All right, up next, Drika explains why good, clean, country farm living is one of the keys to feeling and looking your best. Yeah, that's her on the farm. We're talking about that Mississippi living when we return. Hey, so you like the show? Then let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok at Porsche TV Show. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, 
I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the table. Our guest today is wife, mother, and very busy businesswoman, Drika Gates. I want to talk about that farm to table life. You are literally <laughs> on a farm, moved from Cali a few years ago, back to a farm in Mississippi. Why? Oh my gosh. I had this vision, me and my visions. Mm -hmm, I had this mm -hmm. download and it was like, go to the farm. We've already had the farm for like a couple of years. So, okay. yeah. But it also takes you back to your grandmother, your great grandmother's roots, yes, right? Yes, Being yes, Being in yes. Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of full circle moments there. So mm -hmm. I, it brought me back to uh, during my childhood, I would go and spend summers on my grandmother's uh, property in yeah. Mississippi. So moving like this was not unfamiliar. You you know how to handle a goat. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't learn that in my childhood, okay. but I know how to handle them now. Yes. <laughs> got it. Got it. So what is that like for you? I mean, this is full. I mean, we see everything out here. And yes. It's, and blueberries. Yes, yes, yes. I absolutely love it that this is where I get to ground out. This is where I get to recharge. This yeah. is where I get to really just like, this is my sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. And what is it like for your children? Oh, my gosh. They absolutely love it. They get to go outside and run around. I don't have to worry about, you know, them running off or somebody snatched them yeah, up. Yeah, who's and in the backyard? Exactly. Who's and looking at your house? None of that. Yeah. <laughs> and for Kevin, what's that like? Because I know this is this is a different lifestyle for him it's as well. It's very different. <laughs> It's very different, but he feels the same way. This is like a place for him. For him is where he gets to recharge yeah. and like kind of disconnect and After reconnect with himself. touring and busy and all that, yes. and all that movement to come and be grounded. I like yes. how you put that in Mississippi. So let's talk about sort of the business ventures that have come from that, from this lifestyle mm -hmm. that you're enjoying. Yes. So I started up uh, at the January 2021. I launched my wellness line wow. named Drika. Yes. Yes. Um, I've always been into health and wellness. For I went to school to be a doctor, but dropped out. Um, so COVID actually gave me the opportunity to get back into that. Yeah. So. And COVID was such a learning lesson for so many of oh us, right? Gosh. Having mm -hmm. to just sort of stay put. Yes. Was part of that just that time and that space? Like, oh. what am I going to do now and how? Exactly. I mean, we weren't touring. So it actually gave me the opportunity to finally, like, really get everything together because I've been working on my formulas prior to then, okay. but I was always on the road, always working and never had the time for it. So COVID was really like a a blessing for yeah. uh, for me. And I understand there was a, a really personal health experience uh -huh. that was very traumatic for you that yes. also kind of committed you to looking at um, wellness alternatives. Let's talk about that. Yes, like a holistic way of living. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was 20, I was like 135 pounds, had size 34G breast yeah. um and i actually went to have cert to have a, a breast reduction mm. and during that surgery it was supposed to be outpatient but it wasn't i ended up having to stay a couple of days in the hospital because the doctor accidentally punctured my lung the lung oh my yes. goodness we hear about that happening yes and it literally it, that changed my life i i said after that i would never step foot again in a doctor's office or a hospital oh so, wow yeah. okay so obviously that takes some work you know yes. just even in terms of our overall wellness and maintenance. Yes. What did you start doing differently? Um, more is more so preventative things. Um, mm. My daily, my everyday life is built on health and wellness. Like what mm. I put into my body, what am I putting into my, my mental, how am I, how am I, you know, just like everything, mind, body, and yeah. spirit. Yeah. Um, garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. Good stuff in, exactly. good stuff out. Exactly. The, body, the bottom line there. Yes. Uh, and for your children, what do you think they're learning from this process of having to go pick the food <laughs> and then you cooking it and we're eating it? Oh my gosh. I mean, my children have actually flourished being on the farm. Like mm -hmm. they really, truly understand uh, what clean eating is. They understand what not so clean eating is. Um, so it, it's been very, very, very good for them. And I understand your homeschooling as well, right? Yeah. With some help, right? Because that's yes, how some, some, of us, some of us, that's how we have to do <laughs> yes, that, right? Yes. Because of our schedules and our, our really our lifestyle, um, yeah. homeschooling was like the best choice for them. So wherever the kids are, the teachers there with us. Wow. Yeah. That is a great experience and it opportunity. Is. So what 
what's next? What do you hope to do? Because you've got a whole line of products yes. and a whole lot going on already. Yes. <laughs> what's next? I mean, I'm really just, my goal is to expand this line because at the end of the day, this is like my opportunity to share all of my tips and tricks and tools that I've learned on my journey. So I'm just going to keep adding add into the uh, planning to expand then it sounds like of course what else like you know we we always lay out these sort of five-year ten-year plans especially as we start to you know get some checks mm -hmm. uh, of things done right so you've got mm -hmm. the marriage you've got the kids you've got the farm yes where do you see yourself maybe even just 10 years from now? <laughs> and is it ever maybe even like going back to school? Okay, so I have done some schooling. Um, recently, uh, 2023, I received my certification as a birth doula. Oh, um, wow. Yes, so like birthing, the whole just act of birthing is something that I'm super passionate about. Have you been a part of the birthing process from, a, from an active standpoint? Are you still observing, learning? Oh no, I actually have my sister-in-law. I was actually her birth doula for her last pregnancy, and it was such a beautiful experience. Like, it was amazing. So I'm curious, when you were in college and, and you know, in your pre-med programs, did mm -hmm. you envision being an OBGYN? No, I actually wanted to work with kids, okay. a pediatrician. But, yeah. like, as I've grown and developed, it's like I love bringing in life. I love bringing life to things. Like, that mm. is, like, you know? That makes so. sense. <laughs> I see I, I see the, the thread there, bringing life from the farm. Yes. Kids and then bringing babies in. Yes. The world. My goodness. Yes. Oh, so many good lessons. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So, folks, I want you to keep it right here. We're going to have more life lessons with boss lady Drika Gates after the break. <laughs> My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Thanks for coming back to the table. Drika Gates is dishing about her life, her love, her family matters, and many business ventures. Your late, latest is a plant-based business. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell me more. So I'm opening up my uh, first solely owned and operated uh, cannabis dispensary in Mississippi. Hmm. So yes. we know that that raises some <laughs> eyebrows and makes others go, okay, good. Yes. Let's talk about what that's been like for you entering in that, especially in Mississippi. Oh, yes. It has, has had definitely had its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, like with anything, I put my blinders on. I don't care what your opinions are, and I'm going for it. What are you hoping people are, are going to learn? Because we know there is a customer mm -hmm. base, and then we know there are concerns. What yes. is your mission here? So my mission here is to educate our people and really to just 
just like destigmatize de plants in general mm -hmm. um, and just remove the taboo surrounding cannabis. So, so give me an example of a conversation you've had with, you know, with folks who were like, what are you doing? Yeah. And folks who were like, thank you for doing this. Exactly. I really. And is there more of one or the other? Um, I feel like a, everyone's like a closet consumer at some point, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That is what I'm learning, you know? Really? Yes, 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 I am. So what <laughs> happens in this space? You plan to expand as well? And of course. what have you, because with so many working women, and particularly yes. the moms, yes. we have to figure out what we're going to prioritize. And then what is going to go on the back burner? How do you prioritize in this space? Oh my gosh, I've definitely had to step back from a lot of different projects that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. And I've really have now just focused on the ones that are like really long term and really need my attention like right now in this moment, because some things can wait, you know, right. but the things that I'm putting my energy into right now, like these are the ones that, that need it. And know? how much is it uh, a part of having just a good team around you, right? So oh like you gosh. have a product line, like how do you know, okay, I don't have to stress over this <laughs> every single day because I've got a good team in place. How do you put a good team in place to execute your vision? That is beyond important. That is the probably the one of the most important things is having a good team. Um, I'm good at recognizing people and what they're good at doing. And so I've been blessed with that ability and I have people on my team who can really just like, they can take care of it all. For yeah. Yes. So I'm curious in, then in this business space, then um, the biggest thing that has surprised you about yourself mm -hmm. and your ability to manage all of these things. Oh, my gosh. It's been a lot, but I, I feel like I, I'm capable and I'm the one mm. to do it. And how important is that for other women to recognize yes. that? Yes. That on those you... nights when it's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. I don't know how I'm going to make this work. Oh, I've had all of that. This project that I'm getting into, like with the cannabis dispensary, yeah. it has literally been, it, it's been kicking my butt, but I've been doing it. And for 20, I'll be opening, but just know that you're capable. You're mm, capable. Mm. And how much of this, um, of, of your faith plays into this? Oh my God. Leaning in. <laughs> uh, all of it. <laughs> all of it. You have to know and trust in yourself and your own capability, capabilities and that vision that you saw when you first got started. Mm, I like that. Yes. I like that. <laughs> so one more bit of advice then in terms of what you do when it just gets really hard. Have you ever given up on something and realized it wasn't giving up? It was just recognizing maybe it's, some, it's time to do something different? Yes. I've How did you sure discern? Um, it's really like you just have to be honest with yourself. Like that was, that was what it was for me. Just really, truly being honest and being okay with that, yeah. you know, cause a lot of people will start feeling like they're a failure or they're, they're failing because they're stepping away from something. And it's like, no, this isn't serving my highest good right now. Like, mm, but this path I like that serving your highest, highest good. good. Exactly. That's good. Yes. That's good. Because juggling <laughs> it all doesn't mean the ball is not going to drop. It's, it's just, all right, maybe pick this back up and yeah, keep juggling. And keep going. Or, or maybe, you know, route. I don't need that ball anymore. Yes. I it's okay. It. We change. We are ever evolving and changing. Like, and it is okay. It is. Yes. And you are fabulous. <laughs> so much more than okay. You are fabulous. <laughs> Thank so you. So many wonderful lessons. Thank you for opening up and sharing your story you. here in such a meaningful and inspirational way. Thank you so much yes, for having indeed. me. It's been an honor. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Drika Gates is a great example of how to successfully turn multiple skills and talents into multiple streams of revenue. From her success as a music manager and her farming and agricultural endeavors, she is clearly on a path to creating generational wealth. So grateful to have her here sharing her boss lady moves. You can find her on Instagram at Drika Gates. Thanks for watching and be sure to be the reason why someone smiles today. Welcome to Fox Souls in the Black. I'm Derrica Abraham. Have you heard the phrase, make something out of nothing? 
Well, my guest today, Monday Blues, a fashion designer in New York, did just that. In fact, this video of her went viral. Take a look. Monday, I had to stop you. This is like early, and you said you created this? Yes, I created this, and a little backstory is I actually created this while homeless on a train in Chicago. So Watch. I made this by hand. So this is fully upcycled yes. bags of coffee beans? Yes. Do you make and sell these? Yes, I do. It's just incredible. Designing fashion became a way for Monday to release the pain she's endured from poverty. In doing so, every garment she creates has a story to tell. If you see that garment that I've created on someone's body, that's going to start a conversation. Since that clip went viral, what type of feedback have you gotten? What type of attention have you received? Honestly, everything has been a blessing. A lot of people have been reaching out to me from a lot of different walks of life. Um, I've also got a lot of feedback from people who want to actually purchase items from me, which is very, very important for me and very much needed because again, on my situation, being an unhoused fashion designer, I think it's extremely important for people, for me to be the spokesperson for people that are unhoused. Because usually when you think of a homeless person, there's this stigma that, oh, I have to be dirty. I have to be you know, um, unclean. I have to be hanging outside with a sign. I have to have holes in my clothes, you know. At the end of the day, homeless does mean, though, that I do not have a permanent address. If I would show what I'm going through right now, I would not be as far as I am in life. Monday began designing in 2015, and five years later, her signature collection was launched. So in 2020, and that's when I started the burlap, which is what I call coffee couture. I would take it around certain people, certain stores and show people, and they would let me know, wow, this is incredible, this is amazing, I haven't seen this before. A lot of things I do, I always let the public speak for it, because the public is gonna tell you <laughs> whether it's hot or not, so. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the idea coffee couture come from? Well, initially, while I was homeless on the train in Chicago, sleeping on the trains, sleeping out of my storage, I was walking down Magnificent Mall, and it has a roastery, a Starbucks roastery, which was recently built there. And apparently, I think it's the biggest Starbucks roastery in the world. But anyway, I was passing by, very downtrodden, sad, crying as I was walking. i never forget that day. And I looked over, and in a window of the roastery, I saw some coffee bags with images on it. Automatically, as soon as I saw those bags, I saw the images of clothing in my head because that's how my brain works. Again, being familiar with poverty being familiar with making something out of nothing, being familiar with um, being original and creative and making the most of what, uh, out of what you do have, I'm used to that. Even now today, I'm still, I'm in my late 20s now, but over half of my life, I've been homeless or in shelters. You mentioned in one of your posts that being an artist saved your life. Literally. Literally. And what I mean by that is um, if I wasn't creating, if I wasn't doing what I've done and what I'm currently doing with clothing, I feel as though I will be totally on the other end of the, the spectrum. I feel like I would be, I feel like I would be just completely in a different realm. You were featured in Vogue. Tell me about that. I've been featured there a few times. They've had me in their best of section as well. A few times with one of my favorite photographers that I've worked with for years. His name is Ryan. His Instagram is K-V-N-T-Y. And he's a very, very dope photographer in 
Chicago, and we've got published so many hundreds of times in different magazines all around the world. If you'd like more information on Monday's fashions, you can follow her on Instagram at P-A-N-A-C-H-E dot underscore. Thanks for watching Fox Soul. I'm Jerrica Abraham. shoots his shot at Coy LeRae doing Instagram Live, but did he score? And Keisha Cole changed her mind and found out again, found love again, actually. But is it giving Dre a Michelle? And later, we're dishing with WNBA player Haley Jones. But first, Jesse, whoa, 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 what you got? Well, <laughs> Bianca Sensory got heads turning for all the wrong reasons oh, yet Lord. again, as she and Kanye West enjoyed a date at the happiest place on earth. Disneyland. Aww. So TMZ captured the couple walking around the theme park Aww. and they raised some eyebrows thanks to Bianca's skimpy nude latex mini dress and she decided to ditch her shoes for the day because homegirl was walking around barefoot. If there's a place, Disneyland is the place for bare feet. Yeah. Absolutely wow. not. Yeah, wow. Exactly. We was just at people Disneyland. That, the people that ain't, they had to walk somewhere before okay. they got to Disneyland. So all mm -hmm. the stuff that's on their feet is now at Disneyland. Come on. Disneyland. They got Disneyland dirty. And she walking on it. Some people are just hippies, though, and they're always trying to be grounded with the earth and they walk around without shoes. Do you think at that he's Disneyland? asking her? Do you think he's asking her? Or do you think she's just like this? It, no, she this might just be like this if if it was only her barefoot and not Kanye. And I know they did their barefoot thing in like France or mm -hmm. something like that or Italy, but like that's not a place I would want to walk barefoot. Right. But you know, eh, teach his own. Like she probably got them rough Fred Flintstone feet. Yeah, I don't know if I want that rubber against my do ankles in bed. Do like to show itty bitties? Do, itty -bitties. do they show? Yeah, yeah. They, do they show their? Do, is Ooh, that something those are they far do? from itty bitties. Those, yeah. those, those, those are. <laughs> Those nice and biggies? Why would you do that at Disney World? Why would she get out kids. of her Huey and Louie? Um, a kid place. Because you know people go and talk about it. At it, a kid's yeah. place? That's so disrespectful to the if kids. If I was a kid, I'd be happy. Well, moving on. Coy LeRae blasted former world champion boxer Adrian Broner after he attempted to shoot his shot at her. Mm. And it looks like another love TKO. <laughs> uh, he recently jumped in the comment section of IG Live and wrote, I'm on your body. Oh. Be in my next fight in Miami May 31st. It's the hard rock on me. Ew. Well, Coy clapped back with this brutal response. Said we had to clean up a little bit for TV. You hear this with it? Mm -hmm. Trying to bag me on an IG Live is crazy. Like. Get the hell on, okay? I'm not interested. Like, that's corny. Mm. Now fans felt Koi reacted too harshly, and she replied back saying she wasn't trying to be harsh, and she hopes he wins his fight. So it's that. She didn't act harsh. She just responded, let him know, you ain't gonna talk to me in the kind of way on no IG. Come to me like a damn man, and I, I'm a woman. Yeah. Well, it wasn't it, just also what he said, though. It was like, I'm on that body. Like, I don't know that that's a good not opening that. line. And it's not just that. So I'm on IG Live. You come in the comments, be at my fight. Sir, flew me out. Where is the <laughs> reservation? Like, no. You know, this dude has taken a lot of shots to the say, head. He gets <laughs> hit in the head <laughs> professionally. He you know gets hit I mean? in the head professionally. That don't mean nothing, honey. But you need to go get you some therapy and then come talk to fight. me. Oh. Yeah, Treat come on like now. a black woman. No, man. <laughs> has, anybody, has anybody tried to bag y'all on IG like that? Like, be, I'm on your body? It happens, yeah. Yeah. Damn, yeah. Head, like, head crack, somebody be saying but that? But I, would, I wouldn't blow their spot and be like, yo, get the out of here. Right. Yeah. Crumb, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. just like, hey, you know, maybe this is the only way you'll ever get a chance to talk to me in real time. Right. Now, he can so flatter her it. show. It's so many things he can do. I beg to yeah. differ with you. There's so many things he can do. If he all on her IG Live like that, he can pick any one of the places nah. she's going to be. As much money he, he, can, got, he could DM no. her in a different way oh, and say, I'm on your body privately. He's not like, the master of tech. He's doing attacked. something to be noticed Seen. and publicly. It's, yeah. It's the game. It's game. He was like, come to my event. What he should have been like is, hey, when's the next time I can see you live? Ooh, that's Can I fly like, you out so I can see you yeah. at my fight? But then you'll leave when that look, up to, like, like, you know, interpretation. When's the next time I can see you live? Oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about live. pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, Keisha Cole has a new man, and she confirmed her relationship with Atlanta rapper Huncho via X a few uh, days ago, tagging his name with the caption, Man. <laughs> and she was also spotted walking hand in hand in ATL with her new boo earlier this month and had fans talking, honey, because get this, Huncho is 24 and Miss Keisha is 42. Ooh. What y'all thinking? One thing about Keisha Cole, she always gonna support the youth. Yeah. yeah. Can we be honest, though? Yeah, be can, can we be honest? I And I love Keisha Cole. 
But she doesn't make the best decision when it comes to men, though. Like, look at what happened with my baby daddy. She was 37, the baby dad was 23. Yeah. Now we Well, I don't here. remember what happened. They just not together no more. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it became a mess. It was like a mess all over socials. Oh, no. So I just hope this doesn't happen with him. He's a rapper. Like, Keisha Cole don't like, like Bankman. What you mean, a rapper? Hold on. Wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Why? he's a male rapper. Yeah. You, you bet. <laughs> He is a male but rapper. Why, why does that stereotype him? All male rappers are not the same. But why, don't, but why don't these girls be like in bank tellers? Y'all don't like it bank tellers. Because she, married she likes somebody with swag. Right. She might she want him to spit to some lyrics player, to her, right? Yeah, first off, a bank yeah. teller could have some swag. It's not about the age. It's not about what he does. At it's 23, 22, nobody's got their whole life figured out. And maybe she dates these young out. people who don't got it together on purpose because when the relationship goes bad, the music be fire. Remember that one time she was married and happy and y'all hated her? <laughs> Yo, man, being a celebrity is tough, man. I'm screaming. We need drama. Oh, no. All right, y'all. We all know Chrissy Teigen is the queen of clapbacks, oh. and it looks like she's at it again. An IG troll accused Chrissy of having kids as a way of trying to stay relevant. That's dumb. And of course she wasn't about to let that go. Good. She replied, yes, very bored and need attention. And there's no other way in the world to get it other than having a kid. I agree yeah. with them. What? She having kids for attention. I mean, yeah. she ain't been doing nothing lately. What have she done lately? She been having a, those kids. Okay, then that's what I'm Motherhood. Yeah. Being a mom. John She's Legend a mom. out there. Look, John look like he's sick of her. Performing the miracle of life. <laughs> she does she also has a very her. good show on Hulu where she uh, eats at different restaurants with friends. It's actually Oh, really wow. She's that's a taster. Sure. Okay, that's... <laughs> Yo, having that many kids is the byproduct of your husband really liking you and his reflex is getting slower. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, that don't mean he likes you, happy. honey. Yeah. It don't take long to have a baby, honey, I'll get pregnant. Just an insert, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> never, never, you it's going to take mind. multiple, never like, mind. you know, no, no. like in and out, like the it's burger. It's usually not just, first off, what's your research tell you about it? About what? Nothing, never. Mind. Inserting. Just a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honey, it's time for. What the fashion? That's right, baby. And it seems, y'all, that Crocs join forces with Pringles, honey, to give us a pair of boots with a holster to hold a can of chips. <laughs> And, honey, <laughs> if you're wondering who would wear this, me. I'll tell you who, baby. Evan Ross and his lovely wife, Miss Ashley Simpson. Uh-uh. Oh. That's like final stage boss fat Ew. level stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Not Loose chips and I shoes. I would not want the oh, ground it's dirt. It's a whole boot. Oh, it looks yeah. like a little cup holder. Like, yeah. you could also put, a like, a can of a, a soda yeah. in there. But they cute, though. And it'll shake the soda up before That's you true. drink yeah. it. Yeah. No. And then, you got, and then you got the ground dirt air hitting your soda or your oh, chip. A, what's that, a beeper? for behind it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's where your monitor goes, though. Maybe a wallet. You could use it for a wallet. No. Or you could put your flour in there. Mm. How much I money mean, is this? Paid them. Yeah. They good for diabetics. I mean, you can have <laughs> shit to eat. Honey, yeah, and hungry. you can put you can put your old Zimpic in there. Yeah. Oh, now, you know, and with Evan wearing it, I wonder what Miss Ross thinks. She probably say, "Lord, my child and lost his mind." Well, she probably likes it. She could put her blood pre pressure medicine or whatever medicine she taking. Put it. Yeah, Miss Ross wouldn't be seen with those, honey. Some Pringles chips. Everybody, Ooh. everybody got blood pressure when they seventy and up. Oh, Miss Ross doesn't have high blood pressure. Let's be clear. <laughs> Okay, now you can talk about all the mother girls. She can, put a, she can put a drink in there. <laughs> if she eats those Pringles, she might. Uh, all right, coming up. <laughs> if Emma Roberts gives you a gift, make sure you hold on to it. We'll tell you why after the break. <laughs> I do like some Pringles, though. D -D -Dish Nation. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. <laughs> TGIF. Be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter 
is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there. Dish Nation. And we're back. Hey! hey. Okay, Architectural Digest walked through Emma Roberts' home, and when they got to her book collection, she pointed out a specific book she took back from an ex. Oh. Check this out. This is a book I actually gave as a gift to my ex, but then when we broke up, I saw how much it was worth and I kept it. Period. <laughs> wow. Period. Okay, oh. after doing some research, the book she took back was Charles Portis's 1966 classic Norwood. Now, we don't know how much Emma's copy is worth. Other websites list the book for at least $3,300. Period. Wow. That's what's up. Period. Okay. What the book made out of? <laughs> I don't know. But three hundred yeah, probably paper. was like yeah. a first edition or something. It had to be, yeah. yeah. Petty was petty, petty, petty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have y'all ever taken something back from my ex? No, if I got it for them, they can have it. I don't want it no more. It wasn't for me. I used to buy my friend $25 shoes, honey. I didn't want those. $25 shoes? You dog. You couldn't fit in no way. They want your bucks? size, I'm sure. Yeah. Shout out to Payless. No, Men's shoes be $25? Dollars? At the outlet, honey, you not to wear Gucci, honey, and walk out my life in them. Here these $25 ones, <laughs> honey. <laughs> All right, y'all, moving on. It's time for... Well, y'all, first up, we have Stevie J. He posted this video with the caption, Happy Wednesday, no BBL. No Ooh. BBL? Oh. I think that's Shaden Drake. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right. Yo, he's Shaden Drake, because remember, Rick Ross accused uh. Jacob getting a BBL. Oh. He's calling him BBL Drake. No, don't start nothing. Don't no, start no, no, Drew, start. I didn't start that. Ross and his, and his lemon pepper wing said that. I ain't Ross say, say that. Could yeah. you date a guy who had chest BBLs, like he had fake muscles? At this point... <laughs> <laughs> you got a first note. At this point, guys... Oh, Jesse. <laughs> oh. All right, y'all, moving on to somebody who doesn't have a BBL, allegedly. It's a special one, y'all, because it's a man who sits on this stage with oh. me each and every day oh, and hides Lord. all of this under his clothing. I do. Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Tanner posted this picture with the caption. Uh, Gary, uh, uh, can you channel Tanner's voice and do us the honors? Oh. Yeah, use your Tanner voice. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I put in the work and I'm proud of it. Eight plus hours a week. BJJ, CrossFit lifts, cardio, reduce alcohol intake, increase protein intake. <laughs> New character unlocked. Yeah. I ain't never heard that voice come that out again. That was really good. <laughs> At first, I didn't know. You got to be careful. You can't post jack crap on Instagram without Oh, you should have saw this coming. Yeah. Now, Tanner, I should have known better. He uh, wanted to put a real picture up because his headshot the other day was a little oh. too polished. Why do we have to come back around He to wanted that? a real shot of how he looks today, so he wanted to give you some, yeah, this can, was up. Yeah, yeah. So, Tanner, what's yeah. BJJ? Because, I mean, it sounds fun, like... Brazilian junk juice? Uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Oh. Yeah, oh. that's what he does every morning. Yeah. That extra J was so clutch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah jiu-jitsu is very important. <laughs> I thought it was so booty Tana, juice juice. Yeah. Booty it. juice juice? <laughs> <laughs> juice juice? <laughs> You're so stupid, So, yeah. Tana, that's yeah. the view that the girlies get from that angle? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, he proud. Uh, <laughs> so, who won the battle, y'all? Tanner, of Tanner course. Tanner for the win. Tanner, oh, Tanner for the God. win. Oh. All right, y'all, coming up, oh, WNBA star Haley Jones is in the building. Find out what she thinks about her sports family getting the recognition it deserves, plus much more after the break. Oh, yes. all right. Do you shave? All right, no, I just don't grow it. Really? <laughs> oh. Dish Nation. 
Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home. Build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Love. Our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Nation. Welcome back! Hey. All right, it's time for us to be on our best behavior because we have company. Now, let's give a warm Dish Nation welcome to Athletes Unlimited and WNBA star of the Atlanta Dream, Haley Jones! Hey. All right, yo, Haley, you ready for some one-on-five? I'm ready. Let's get it, man. Fun time. Let's go. Okay, Haley, uh, your skills on the court garnered some major attention last season, and now you're being called a key player for the Atlanta Dream. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel to be 22 years old and living the dream? I mean, it's great. I'm loving life in the ATL right now from the Bay, so it's a bit of a switch up, but okay. I don't know about star player quite yet. I'm still making my way, but mm -hmm. I'm excited for you, too. Very okay, nice. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the WNBA draft just went down a couple days ago, and, you know, we got Andrew Reese and Camila Cardoso going to the Chicago Sky, and Caitlin Clark is going to the Indiana Field. Eva, what is your advice for ladies entering their first season of the WNBA? Yeah, I mean, entering the W's, it's a big change, just like from high school to college. But I think it's like you're this huge All-American, you're a National Player of the Year, all these different things. You get to the W, everybody's been there, done that. Now you're dealing with Olympians, you're dealing with All-Stars. It's just a different caliber. And so I think for them, like, they have the talent. They're going to be here for a reason, but it's just understanding what makes you great and sticking with that. Okay. Nice. So speaking of the new players, it's been reported Caitlin Clark is going to be making $338,000 over a period of four years. Ice Cube offered her $5 million to come play for the big three. Would you have taken that $5 million? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's hard. $5 million, that, that's hefty. Mm -hmm. But I think um, for us, like, the W's always been the dream. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't want to give up the dream just for that amount of money. And right. I think also Caitlin's doing well for herself. NIL, yeah. everything's going to carry over. And I think she just kind of adding that WNBA base salary onto it. So I'm excited for her. I'm glad she chose the W. I think most of us would have chosen the W, yeah. but that, that was a big deal for him to put out there. Yeah. So you're saying she didn't want to work with the big three? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to speak for Kaylin. She but... did not say that, Gary. Yeah, 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 she yeah, said the say W that. is the dream. That's exactly. what she said. Exactly. Well, Haley, we still speaking don't like of, you. Well, Haley, speaking of the draft, honey, Tanner here, now he's looking to get drafted into a relationship. Oh, yes, honey. So do you have any teammates that you could hook him up with? Is well, I mean, yourself? I mean, Tanner, what's your type? Talk to me. Let me know. I, I like I like athletic women <laughs> who have great free throws okay. and, uh, and go hard in the paint. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, wow, wow, yeah. you know, that's not what you said last night. Come on, Jesse. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 
Whoa. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's, <laughs> you know, he's good personalities. Like, yeah, you know, I don't know. Okay, well, I mean, I got a lot of ladies for you. Um, I don't know. I feel like the W is full of beautiful women. You saw yeah. a lot of beautiful women in the draft last night on Monday. They so. all tall, though, Tanner. Yeah. See, bro, I am trying to breed up. Okay. Like, oh. You got to think about your future. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about future generations okay. here. He can wear heels. Oh, Reach okay. up to the top shelf. He can wear heels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We can get you a step stool. You'll be just fine. Oh, You'll make listen, I will step stool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some names. I'll, I'll jetpack you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's the little thing you do, do it again? That's the jetpack. Hey. That's when, like, the person, <laughs> they're the tall person and you're the jetpack. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Haley, you are the host of the podcast, Sometimes I Hoop. So why don't you go ahead and do this tease for Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> well, everybody stay right here because we have more with me, WNBA star Haley Jones, right after the break. Hey! 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 That's what's up. Dish Nation. Scene one of the three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back! Hey. Okay, Haley, we're gonna play a game of dribble or slam dunk, all right? So uh, we're gonna ask you your opinion on a couple topics. You can either dribble around it. This is how dribbling looks, right? Yeah, you can either dribble fun. around it if you think it's a little too messy or slam dunk it if you wanna give a response. Okay. All right, well, here's the first one. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal admitted to throwing his Olympic gold medal out of the car back in 1996 because the coach didn't play him until the end of the game. I mean, I think I've got a slam dunk. Honestly, I heard it was dropped here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and so I feel like it's already been pawned. Somebody's using it as something oh, yeah. like a grill, a chain, something. <laughs> I would have kept it. I would not be throwing my Olympic medal out the window. If okay. it was like his free throws back then, it didn't go far. <laughs> right, right. Well, Haley, I noticed you have a lot of gold on right now. You got them gold earrings. Did you pawn the award? No, 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 no. That's on me. You're too young. You're too young. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Too yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. OK, so how about this one? Toronto Raptors' Jonte Porter was just banned from the league after an investigation reveal he disclosed confidential information to bettors and bet on his own NBA games. I think I got another slam dunk. Yeah. I just think, like, last year, our orientation, half of the time we talked about not betting. To be a professional athlete, part of it is doing it for the love of the game. So, like, exactly. I'm not going to sit out of games just to let bettors know the insight. So, right. yeah, like, being banned forever is, yeah. wow. Like, yeah. that's a lot. But I do think that there, there needs to be some repercussions there. Yeah. I didn't realize he was so good looking and dumb. <laughs> God. Yeah. He looks like a variant of Drake. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's from Canada. He yeah. is in oh, Canada. Okay. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, he look like Drake's cousin. They, he, yeah. They're in Toronto. Yeah. Brizzy break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, make sure you catch Haley lighting up the basketball court this upcoming season, because that is all the dish we got for you today. And we will see you next time. Can we get a swish?
Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you. It went in. <laughs> To get to know Rodney McLeod, I heard there's a red carpet out, so... Just look at a 24-hour period last December. He suffers a season-ending knee injury that could send any pro athlete into a deep depression. And you can see him grab for that knee. Hours later, he's on two feet, fulfilling a commitment, paying people's tabs as part of his foundation's 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. It was very moving for me, uh, and it, it made me realize that I didn't actually have it as bad as I thought. An overpaid, selfish crybaby pro athlete? Hey! Yeah, that's not Rodney. Football's only part of his story. Serving Philadelphia's underserved is his other passion. We're changing the narrative and how you think about an athlete, and I think that's what I love most about it. And what you can do when you're gifted uh, this platform, or a platform, utilize it and maximize it to its fullest. He and his wife, Erica, are a power couple. They don't have children of their own yet, but they have a baby. It's their organization, Change Our Future. For us, Change Our Future, the change in the future starts from the youth. We knew that there was a need and that there were opportunities that we were afforded that other children in other neighborhoods don't have. The idea behind Change Our Future is to give kids an equal playing field, no pun intended to tear down barriers that prevent black and brown kids from a quality education, proper health care, and getting civically involved, creating a path toward a healthy and hopeful future. There are many people who have a voice, but it's never being heard. And for us, you know, having the platform that we have, it's our opportunity to give light and shed light on these issues. The pandemic inspired the McLeods to take their mission to those who need it most donating food as a thank you to frontline workers and joining Phil Abundance to donate thousands of meals to the hungry. We do this, you know, out of the kindness of our heart, understanding that it, it takes more than one person to change this world and change a community. So I feel as though we're just one of many are out here who are concerned, who want to see this world um, in a better space. Then in June, as Philadelphia and the nation reached a boiling point after the murder of George Floyd, McLeod was unafraid to speak up against police brutality and systemic racism, marching in the streets amongst thousands of others. The city needed us the most during that time, and, and we know how big you know, the Eagles are and, and how loud our voice can uh, reflect. So I wanted to make sure that we were uh, understood and, and, and everybody knew you know, what our intentions were. In November, Rodney and Erica boarded a big bus, encouraging people to use their voice and show up at the polls. That was an amazing day for us all. We changed the way that people thought about voting, uh, but also we wanted to recognize uh, that community who uh, kind of uh, goes without a voice a lot of the time. When we talk about legacy and you talk about Black History Month, hoping that, you know, 20 years from now, people can recognize what we did that, that day and, and, and um, recognize everyone who was a part of it. Did we mention his cancer fundraiser, Rise Up for Research, or their Game Changers initiative that aims to introduce black history into school curriculum? My man Rodney McLeod. There's enough on McLeod's man, plate you to make your head spin. Up. And let us not forget, Rodney's still a pro football player trying to come back from a torn ACL. Playing football in the NFL is hard enough, so how do you have the time and energy to do all this other stuff? For me, it was just what I was taught as a kid, and, and I think a lot of it had to do with the church. You know, being a Christian, understanding how, you know, Jesus was a servant. I want to be that guy that you look at and say, okay, 
That's Rodney McLeod. He's awesome on the field, but he's so much more than that because it's about legacy. Fly Eagles fly. Fly McLeod's fly. Thanks for all you do in this community and, and keep up the great work. It's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea we have for you tonight. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hello, Ra uh, hello, Al. What's going on, Claudia? I was going to say your full name, Alfred. I don't even know if that's your real full name. That is not my name. Alfred. <laughs> no, Al just Al. Alfred. Just Al. No. <laughs> and please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on? How y'all feeling tonight? Very good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm actually great. I'm actually drinking tonight. So hopefully hey. you got your drink. What's in that cup? This is a street drink, though. You know, very bar. It's just, it's it's uh tequila and pineapple. Clearly, oh. I've, been, I've been sipping before the show. <laughs> oh, <God>. oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Al, are you drinking? Of course, I'm drinking my buttery Chardonnay right here with a little bit of ice cubes because I like my wine cold. Okay, well, I know I, I said earlier I would be drinking, but I went to lunch with my girl Annie at Fred Siegel, and they did not have the drink that I like, and I've been mm. running nonstop, so I'm just going to act like I've been drinking tonight. How about that? <laughs> All right, let's get into these topics so we can drink these in. All right, we have an update regarding the Wendy Williams and Kevin Hunter legal battle. We reported the story about Kevin demanding two years of back divorce payments from Wendy. However, Wendy's lawyers fired back saying that Wendy Williams overpaid Kevin more than $112,000 and they are demanding that he return it. Do you think this is a tactic to paint Kevin as greedy? And if Wendy owes him, why would the lawyers demand that he return the funds? What do you think about this, Armand? Um, this is interesting. I just, I honestly, I don't know really what to think about this because they're saying that, you know, he was only supposed to get paid up until Wendy wasn't getting the same amount of salary that she was receiving on the show. And I guess that ended in 2022. So he had ended up paying, she had ended up paying him like over $37,000 a month for three months. So he was actually getting more money than the initial agreement had discussed. So at this point, he should pay the money back. I don't think that this is a ploy to make him greedy, but because he is being greedy, honestly. Like, I personally feel like he is being greedy. And I feel like if the agreement was set to be, listen, if Wendy's making this amount of money, then that's what you're going to get paid. Once that amount stops or it falls below that amount, you don't get paid anymore. So at the end of the day, he should just he should have saved his money and moved on. Ramon Rosado said, wow, that's a lot of money. And Bettina Lester said he don't have it. Al, what do you think? Um, I think that this is weird. And I think this is a play to quiet him because lawyers, why is the lawyer requesting for the money to be returned? Why isn't the lawyer going to the courts and saying, you need to throw out his case for more money because it, she has overpaid. This is the proof of her overpayment. And if that is in case, in, in indeed the fact, the, everybody knows, especially in the state of New York, in the state of New Jersey, and a, and a couple of other states, if you overpay, you can then subtract that from the money that you are owed. So if he feels like he's owed $150,000 and she overpaid 110, the courts will subtract the 112 or the 110 and 112 from what he thinks he's owed and can prove that he's owed. So I don't understand why the lawyers, quote, the lawyers mm. are asking for him to return the money to them. That just doesn't make sense. It seems like they're trying to silence him because he's making it very public that he thinks he's owed more money. 
East Chiffon said Wendy said Wendy shouldn't pay him ish. Unique Jacob said, any other time you're overpaid like that, the state or a job, then you have to pay it back. Uh, Vanessa Hearn said, does anyone around Wendy care about Wendy? And M Town Boy Foya said, Wendy also said she had a plan. Guess this is the plan to cut him off. Mm. Oh, this is a sad story. All right, moving on, soulmates. Get into this trifling story. A mother discovered that her 10-year-old son has been having an inappropriate relationship with an adult daycare employee. Grace Sholoyo revealed that the employee's picture was her son's screensaver, mm. and she found inappropriate pictures and text messages between the two on his phone. Uh, the daycare has since fired her. Now, do you think the employee will be charged, and is the daycare liable at all? Al, thoughts? I mean, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, across the board. This is sick. This is pedophilia at its finest. I mean, he's 10 years old, for goodness sake. And I, I, you, this, this just pissed me off. This whole story just kind of pissed me off because you don't mess with people's kids. Come on, y'all, especially when they entrust you to take care of their kids and you are now physically abusing them. And she needs to be worried about the constitution of that state as it relates to the laws of rape. Because if this is constituted as rape, she could find herself doing a lot of time. And to be honest, she deserves everything she got coming to her. When you start messing with little boys or little girls, because if this was a man that was texting and having an inappropriate relationship with a little girl, we would be all in uproar. We need to exercise the same type of uproar in this case. She needs to be underneath the jail for this type of behavior. What is it? It seems like every couple of days we're doing a story about a teacher and a kid and 10 years old. Armand, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree 100% with Al, and I just think that it's sick. And if what's even more sick about the situation is she almost was trying to act like the little boy's mommy. So you were trying to come in almost like a friend or like a mother figure, but then you're like sending him sexually suggested photos of you and then buying him a chain. It was just really, really weird. And I think that, you know, we need to hold these women more accountable for these types of things. Like, this is not cute. This is not okay. Because, again, like the mother even stated, she's upset because this woman hasn't even been charged. The best thing that's happened to her is she's just been fired. But there's been no real charges brought against her. And if this was her man, this man would have been underneath the jailhouse. This woman should not be able to get away with this because this is predatory behavior amongst a little boy. So it's not okay and it's disgusting. I know there's a shortage in teachers. I know it's difficult to get these positions filled, especially with how they underpay them so badly. But are we just like, what, what is the screening process now? Like how are all these people just getting in here that have these weird feelings towards kids? It's, it seems like we're reporting on these stories weekly, at least once or twice a week. And it's more and more common. And now we're seeing a lot of black women that I, I never really saw much of that before. And this is, we gotta do better with this, the screening process here. Um, also, she was rubbing his leg inappropriately on a field trip. So there was definitely some physical touching there, and it just absolutely disgusting. You better be lucky that mom didn't take it into her own hands and kill her, because that's what some people would have done. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you can't be playing with people's kids like that. You right. know, people will spaz out over their children. So she I did like the fact lucky. that the mother was very articulate. She looks mm -hmm. like she's definitely going to get her justice. And she's <laughs> yeah. going to get it. She's going to get it from that young lady if she can. She's going to get it from that daycare if she can. She's going to get it from wherever. That that woman looks like she is definitely focused for justice. And I, I'm going to follow this story just so, just for that. Jesus Girl Behavior said, I saw one of the pics she sent that 10-year-old. I would go to jail with a smile on my face if that was my kid. Wow. And uh, Jay Callwood 25 said, if this was my child, there would be no need for a trial. I'm taking care of her myself. <laughs> and, and oh, Chrissy H, I like this. People need to protect and teach their sons just as vigorously as they protect their daughters. True. All right, moving on. Our friend, Rolling Ray. Hey, Ray. Recently spoke on the relationship between JT and Lil Uzi Vert. He tweeted to JT, you're the man in the relationship. I mean, the top. My bad. I mean, the more dominant one. Damn, I mean, the man of the house. What are your thoughts on his comments? And do you think he would roll up on Lil Uzi Vert with the same energy in person if he saw him? Armand, what do you think? I just feel like, you know, let Roland Ray roll and roll. You know, it's okay. I mean, at this point, you know, we know Roland Ray is a rolling troll. And that is just a part of his social media persona. You don't get offended by people with Roland Ray. And 
little Uzi, JT, slapping Roland Ray, kicking him out of his wheelchair. You don't get any cool points for that. So Roland Ray understands that he's handicapped and he can kind of get away with things that the average person couldn't. So for that, I would let it like roll off of my back and not even acknowledge it at this point. Now, as far as JT and Uzi, they have a very eccentric relationship. Um, I do feel like Uzi does play into his feminine side, but there's something about him that Jay-Z does like. And I do feel like behind closed doors, outside of his persona, he does give her that man that she's looking for. All right, Al, what do you think? I'm sorry, I'm not being an ableist. I'm not, I'm not also exercising ableism, but somebody needs to check Roland Ray. I mean, I understand that some people may interpret it as like harmless or what's the big deal. First of all, don't disrespect that man like that. <laughs> like, don't don't make this sexual connotation as if he's a homosexual or he's gay, and then you're gonna back backpedal and all that stuff. I don't care. I, that's just inappropriate. Somebody one day is really gonna check Roland Ray because he talks a lot of junk. And I'm not saying I'm gonna be the one, but somebody <laughs> eventually is going to check Roland Ray for that mouth. M Town Boy Foya said Roland Ray is a hot rolling mess, and Joseph Savage said he spoke some truths. I'm sure there's some pegging on some levels going on. But let me ask you this, Al. What can you possibly do to check a wheelchair bound man in a wig? I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? saying? Like, what do you like? Look at see, Roland you, Ray. I think he may come across the wrong female, and she's going to read him to the ground and embarrass him. Like, you know, a good read would do. I think, you know, he. I, I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is you can't just give a person like that a pass and say, oh, because you are disabled, you can talk crap. No, that's not how this works. I, I, I just don't feel like that, that that's how this works. If you're going to bring the heat, expect the heat back and don't hide behind the, the disability, in my opinion. I just feel like and, and especially when it's intentional and it's trolling. So you you really coming out your mouth knowing that you are hiding behind that physical disability and hoping mm. that no one comes back at, for you. I that just I don't like that. Jolene Sockley said, but why? Why should you get away with things because you're in a wheelchair? And Riel said, I agree, Al, with all the root ish. Someone should tip that damn cart over. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, or, think, or, or, if you don't want to be too, you know, park in his handicap spot. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't be petty like that. Or I would find somebody else who's like physically disabled to park in his handicap spot. You know, I don't even think it's just um, people that are handicapped. I just think everyone talks so much trash now. Like people are just extremely reckless. That's the culture now. People just say whatever. It's very, when very disrespectful times. And when I was coming up as a teenager, I remember people used to fight. They would go approach people and they would be like, oh, I heard you was talking trash. What was what's good? And they would confront people. And sometimes they would argue. Sometimes they would fight. But they would get confronted. I feel like now people are very safe and comfortable in the comfort of their homes, on their phones, talking trash, coming for people they would never have the same energy for in person. So it's like acceptable now. It's like, like it's it's people think it's cute. So, eh. All right. Coming up next, you don't you won't believe what Tony Braxton was misdiagnosed with. Not again. And later, find out why a former police officer is behind bars. We'll be back. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Hug you. Yeah. If it made you feel that way, bro, I'll probably do. Love, Love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. 
They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, how do you get arrested while on strict house arrest? Let's ask NBA young boy who was just arrested in Utah. He was charged with unlawful activity, procuring or attempting to procure drugs, identity theft, forgery, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person. All right, y'all, that's a lot. I ran out of breath reading all the charges. <laughs> I'm like, when are they going to end? All right, do you think uh, he needs jail time or rehab for the alleged drug addiction? Armand, what do you think? At first, I'm just like, how stupid could you be? You know what I mean? And then, too, I'm wondering, like, how did he, how do you get caught when you're on house arrest? Shouldn't you be at home? Like, how do, how did the police find these things out? But anyway, I personally feel like jail time is clearly not the answer. Clearly. Um, so I personally feel as though NBA young boy needs extensive rehab. OK, he needs rehabilitation bad because I fear that he may die because he really be on those drugs heavy. OK, he's made posts about being on those drugs. It's just really weird. Cryptic messages in the past. And I just feel as though, you know, we lose a lot of our entertainers to their hidden drug addiction. So hopefully he can get it together and stop playing with all these different drugs. OK, Al, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think he needs both. I mean, clearly he needs rehab. I mean, we have seen him recently with, I think, whatever the oxy, whatever the picture was where he was laying down on the ground and had it beside him. Um, I, I, I really do think that he probably needs both because we can't let him off for the gun charges, right? And once he had the gun charges and was on home arrest, the reason why they put him in Utah was because he said he has a mentor there. It's safer for him. It takes him out of his environment where he can he can focus on not doing drugs and, and doing safe stuff. But then he went there and intentionally fraudulently pretended to be a doctor, fraudulently hmm. pretended to be the people that the doctor wrote, wrote the prescription to. He did everything that he could to get those mixes of drugs to create that lean. That's criminal. That's criminal, right? So I think, A, before I send him to prison for breaking his house arrest, I would send him to rehab to clean him up, to prepare him to go to prison for breaking, quote, like something like a parole. Uh, Miss Keita Johnson said he's got as many mug shots as kids. Wu Child, just a hot mess. And they are calling this a large scale uh, prescription fraud ring. Right. And uh, Lil Leslie said, uh, yes, it's in his eyes. He has always had that look in his eyes. I hope he gets better and recovers. He needs rehab. Yeah. All right. Speaking of what police, do you do? What about his eleven kids, Claudia? What mm. about how do you have eleven kids? What, 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 no. how, what about his eleven kids? And are you making these kids while on drugs? Like I would hope he wouldn't. Like that's dangerous, you know. Okay. Mm, eleven kids. Wow. Speaking of police, former undercover St. Louis police officer Luther Hall uh, was just awarded over twenty-three million dollars while undercover at a protest that started uh, over a police officer murdering a black man. Now, Hall was attacked and brutally beaten by three white cops who were his own co-workers and didn't recognize him during the protest. All right, y'all, is it fair that he is rewarded with taxpayer dollars? And will this ever teach these departments a lesson? Al, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's absolutely fair. And I, I'm really excited to even be covering this type of story because we've been saying this for decades we've been saying this for decades that these cops these racist cops do too much and they are not only beating us up but they're setting us up and they're sending us to jail for life for stuff that we shouldn't necessarily be sent to jail in life for 
I love the fact that this judge said, listen, the only way we're going to make this police station and this district stop this inherent racism is we're going to take it out of their funds. That $23 million will come out of a fund, right? That, you know, the police and the union and the insurance fund that's taken away from their retirement. So it's not necessarily, you know, all coming out of the taxpayers dollars. It's also coming out of that police officers fund and i mean you know their insurance and i like it i think finally finally justice finally hit them where it hurts that way that's the only way that we're going to change these attitudes and, and they need to investigate all those police officers that were involved in the entire uh police station all right Armand. Give the man his money. Deposit his check, okay, all day long. I support it wholeheartedly. And, you know, to me, being a taxpayer, you know, it, it coming out of taxpayer dollars, that doesn't bother me. You know, they take my money for stupider things, for less important things. So, and, and I'm not the type of person that really goes and protests and stands out front on the picket line. So if you can take some of my money from the IRS, go ahead. Have at it. That's my way of support. Power to the people. Power, also, Angawa, black power. Also, think about it. You're going to spend more money with your tax, taxpayer dollars with a black male in prison yes. for 50 years. Okay? Think about it. Think about the cost of putting him in prison by these dirty cops. Mm. But with $25 million, when will they learn? It's like they rather just act a fool and and risk these lawsuits because they just get paid off and then life goes on right. then adjust the behavior i think it's just a matter of the recruitment process the people that they're getting their biases the uh what kind of psychological testing are you doing on these people these people are just unready all the time to gang up on a black man and beat him up and murder and kill and maim and we don't see that same energy for the others i don't i'm glad he got his check keep it going keep up the good right. work dummies dumb police officers um this is a question that was posed. Do you think the cops are still working with uh, another police department? Do you think the cops are still working within another police department? Yeah, a lot of times they don't even get sent away, yeah. really. They may get, okay, sent away, but they're picked back up. Yes. And right. that's why, you know, the this administration been trying to get the, the whole qualified immunity thing and trying to get it where they don't, they can't just pop up in other right. districts. You mess up in Cleveland, you get to go to Youngstown and re-violates, it's unbelievable. Right. And see, that's the backhanded stuff because what'll happen is they'll be like, well, we're gonna give this black man $23 million, but we're gonna let them keep their job. No, you fire him, lock them up, and give the black men the $23 million. But sometimes right. they don't wanna give us everything. You know what I mean? So if they'll give us the money, but then this person is allowed to keep their job and their freedom. And that's the part that I don't like. Let a cop, black cop do this and see what happens. Because He's I losing it all. I remember one is in prison right now, and then it was nothing. Like, they, they thought nothing of it. Off to the jailhouse you go, black man. All right, Tony Braxton recently revealed that for the past two years, doctors have misdiagnosed her and told her she had cancer or pre-cancer symptoms. As a result, she terminated her third pregnancy. Take a look. Mm -hmm. And they... <laughs> thought she had a can cancer or a pre-cancer mm -hmm. workup yeah. for like two years. Yeah. And then two years. Yeah, a long time. But how could that be in a young woman with pericarditis and all these other symptoms? Like that's the first diagnosis. Autoimmune would come to yeah, her. it it didn't happen. Didn't happen. That is a shame. That is so sad. If Tony Braxton, you know, who has access to the best doctors can be misdiagnosed what does that mean for the rest of us? Armand, what do you think? This terrifies me because I consider myself a hypochondriac because let me tell you something. If, if I'm coughing too many days, I'm at the doctor, okay? I need a full physical. I need blood work. <laughs> I need it all. That's just in my mental. And because I, I can't, I just, I don't like being sick and I love going to the doctor because I need to know what's going on because you just never know what can creep up on you. But at the end of the day, <laughs> no, seriously. But I'd be like, you know, it just, it makes me so nervous because it's like these doctors try to get you in and out and then you're fine. And they don't even want to. And if you have, I'm, I'm not going to say the, doctor, the, the hospital's name, but if you have certain, you know, doctors, 
They don't even want to do the extensive work to do the testing. You almost have to be on your deathbed for you to get an MRI, for you to get this, for them to actually look at you and do the work. So, you know, these doctors are getting lazy right now and they're just over there collecting checks and it's really, really dangerous. So this is scary because it's happening all too often. Right. Al, what do you think? I'm thinking I'm, I, it's, it's, I'm just bugging out because the, the female doctor said, how, how could this be? You want to know how it could be, lady? Because 7.4 million Americans are misdiagnosed annually. And of that 7.4 million Americans, 30% of them are from women and men of racial uh, backgrounds that like Black African Americans and Hispanics. That's how it can be because you guys clearly misdiagnose us and don't listen to us and you do it for you know a number of different reasons i did i read this study when i was researching this that one in four hospital patients who died or were transferred to intensive care was because of a diagnostic error do you want to know how many of the one in four percentage wise were african-american that's what blows my mind more than 40 percent of the one in four. Wow. So what is that telling you? You either are not taking us serious when we present, you think or you don't value us in our bodies. So you 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 don't care to run the test that you hear the problem being. Either way, it's bad and it needs to change. Well, you know, uh, racism is not just in the police department. Mm. Right. It's not just in the legal department, it's in medical. Uh, mm -hmm. Firefighters, we covered stories about people, you know, the fire, the, there was a, oh, I'm sorry, there was a video online where a, a, a white man that was up in age said, you know, he feels bad that back in the day, I may have let some black families burn. So I would think the medical field, it'd be no different. Be and no there's different, just a right? lack of caring. They're just like, mm, you'll be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. drink, drink some ginger ale and take an aspirin. They don't really dig deeper because they don't really have a regard for our lives. And it's not, again, if, if they can shoot 12 year old kids in cold blood out in the streets, those same type of attitudes are not just in the police department. And that's what's really sad in black women, especially like in this first world country, okay? We're not a third world country. Black women are continuing to die and during childbirth at an alarming rate. Like it's just happening all the time and I'm sick of it. Uh, Malia Salam said they do that because they don't want to follow results. Anything they test you, they must follow up with, they should. Sleepy mm. ZZZ said the doctors are overworked and the hospitals press them to see as many patients as possible. Mm. And Ramos family said this is just like the lady the other day that still had to pay for chemo she never needed because she never had cancer. And last and one, Holly, Holly Larry, Berry. Larry uh, Speak says, uh, truth, there's a bigger conversation about black people dealing with healthcare professionals. Racism is present in healthcare and terminating her pregnancy and so D'Angelo. She had to terminate her pregnancy. This is ridiculous. She should sue everyone, especially being of an older age like that, and you get pregnant and, uh, I don't know. That, that, is, that scares me. Coming up next, find out why a former police officer is behind bars, and later we discuss what we would do in sticky situations. We'll be back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome, Al Reynolds, and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. 
Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. All right, welcome back to the show. I don't know what's going on, but uh, okay. Former police officer Marcus Johnson is in custody for stalking and murdering his ex-boyfriend, Carlos Collins, after their breakup. 25-year-old Carlos's family alleges that he sought police help and obtained a restraining order against Marcus, but it wasn't taken seriously. What are your thoughts on this, and have you ever experienced rejection that turned dangerous? Armand, you ever been in this position? Uh, well, no, I've never been in this situation, but, um, you know, I've seen stories like this in the past, and this is just really, really sad because, you know, in our community, in the LGBTQ community, there's so much do domestic violence that happens and get, goes unseen and untalked about. And this is just unfortunate because it gets really, really crazy out there. And it, and it just goes to show that no one is safe. The fact that this man was a police officer stalking his boyfriend, didn't understand, no, the restraining orders didn't help. And he ended up in cold blood. Mind you, the whole thing was too, he had already kind of been letting everyone know that he was going to do it by his posts that he would post in his stories. Like, you could kind of already tell that he was a little off kilter in the first place, but no one really paid attention to it. Um, and I just think a lot of times when you have two men together, a lot of people feel like, you know, y'all can just fight it out as men. Y'all will figure it out. And they don't realize that it's just as dangerous being in a domestic relationship, um, domestic violence relationship as it is it, being in a straight one you know, for gay people. So I just think we need to pay more attention and really open up the conversation because I know a lot of times in my family, you know, sometimes we know you're gay, but we just won't talk about it. We know you got a boyfriend, but just don't talk about it. But maybe, just maybe, I need to be able to talk to you about my my love life so you know if I'm safe or in danger. So I would just, I would just caution people to be more open about, you know, having those conversations with your same-sex loving family members. Okay, Al, what do you think? I mean, first of all, I want to send the condolences to the young man's family that was that lost his life. I mean, I can only imagine what that family's going through. I think, you know, the statistics are rising, and you're right, Armand, it's definitely rising in the same-sex community, but 70% of all murder-suicides involve intimate partners, and, it, and it's getting worse. And I, I just feel like, what do we do? What do we do as a community? What do we do as a culture, right, to correct this? Because it's not going down, it's going up. And I, I had, and you know, especially after COVID, everyone is just so like, it, when it comes to conflict resolution, their, their resolve is to kill people, to chop them up. We talk about it on this show, and I just feel like we got to do better. We just got to do better. I don't know what the answer is, but I know that we can't keep going in the pace that we're going right now. You know, um, I, I don't know much about the statistics in the, the LBD2 community. LGBTQ plus community, but um, I say it's a problem, period. Um, mm -hmm. I had an experience years ago in LA with a ex-boyfriend that, that didn't want to let go. And he came into my apartment, threw my cats around, and he threw me into a table, glass table. I still have a scar on my knee from it, punched holes in my wall. He destroyed my apartment, right? And then I called the police and they came and they saw the disaster. I was in a fetal position when I got there. I was tore up and um, he called the house while the police was there and they spoke to him. Um, no detective ever checked up on me. And when I followed up with them, I said, why did anyone not take this seriously? And they said that, well, you're dark, so your bruises weren't that severe to us. And they also were like, wink, wink, really, they almost have to kill you for it to be really taken seriously. So you can get a restraining order and there's a record of it. But like they want to see, it's like not sexy enough, I guess, or not intri interesting enough. It's not a big enough deal for them when you just say someone's stalking me, someone's harassing. What state? Me. What state were you? California. In? It was California, wow. and it was after the OJ thing. And I'm like, you would think after that, 
trial of a century that you would be taking these things seriously when people are crying out for work, the next, they get even worse the next day. And I just wondered how many other people that had kids that were in worse, far worse positions than I was in felt really helpless, you know, that um, they were crying out for help and they just not, they don't take them seriously. Like they really are not moved unless it's like broken bones, blood everywhere, death. And it's usually when it's too late now that you want to activate. And that's what this young man has, you know, made it a point to say, I, I need help. And nothing gets done. They Again, I, they need to work on these laws. Uh, Paige said, threw Shelly around. Oh, no, no, it wasn't Shelly. It was some older cats. Uh, Carolyn Jones said, Claudia, did you press charges? I tried to press charges. Um, he went and said that I attacked him and lied. And then he sent us to mediation. It was my word against his. It made it so hard. And then he was also intimidating me. Is so, this somebody that we might know? No, he was a struggling actor. It was back in 1998. It was a long time ago. Um, he was a good looking guy, but I found out he was on steroids and he had this rage thing about him and he was very jealous. And after I broke up with him, um, Jesus Girl Behavior said mental health, especially with certain demographics, is just mm. lacking. People are losing their minds. And I do think that's sad to not take it seriously if it's just between two men. Like, why would you think that one man can't murder another man or hurt, seriously harm? But and, let me ask um, this. On the flip side, though, do you feel as though, like, maybe the justice system has got to a point where they're like, you know, we get so many of these calls, and there's obviously been abuse, but then you either have, you know, the man in the same-sex relationship, or you have the woman saying, you know, nothing happened, we're fine, you know, and it's just a fake call, you know, because maybe the neighbor called, you know, and the police knock on the door, and, you know, too many times people will be like, well, I'm not going to snitch, so I don't want nothing to happen, so we'll just lie. So these things are not being taken as serious anymore because how many people, you know, we know, they lie when the police get to the door. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that serious. You could have a whole black eye and you'll lie to the police. Yeah, and but, but you know what? That's also a symptom. That's also uh, the behavior of the abuse, right? To cover for your abuser. Mm -hmm. And I just think they, they got to recognize those things. Like, you can't just let that go. I think, I, I don't know what the answer is. Obviously, I don't. It's too big of a, a problem for me to solve. I don't know what the <laughs> answer is, you know? I never went back, but there's people that do. There's people mm -hmm. that are more desperate. There's people that need that person financially or mm. whatever, you know? And they don't really have the means to get away. And then they may end up, dead like this person mm -hmm. I, you know it's mm -hmm. awful um okay rumors are swirling around ryan garcia's mental state after his intense face-off with devin haney ahead of their boxing match ryan posted a clip of devin shoving him during the face-off and wrote devin touched me without my consent i'm suing him for putting my his hands on me and i identify as a woman so he touched me as a grown man and hit a grown woman and I'm LBGTQ+, so now it's a hate crime. Do you think people are right to be concerned about Ryan's mental health? Al, what do you think about this? Uh, yeah, and I think, he, I, I feel like he's trolling. Obviously, throwing all of that in there says trolling to me. It gives me Karen vibes. Like, now you 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 throwing in that you're a hate crime. You're throwing in that he touched me. Karen's know when to say when a black man put her hands on, oh, he touched me. I was, um, I was intimidated. I felt threatened. They know those all he put on all the buzzwords. I, I this type of stuff, he does need a mental check. They need to send an officer out not to take uh not to take a case, not to, you know, file a police report, but to do a health check on him. Absolutely. I agree. Okay. Armand, what do you think? Listen, I don't know much about Ryan Garcia, so I don't really know about the mental capacity, but I 100% agree with you, Al, and I like that you said that because to me this felt like, okay, I know everything to say, you know, to get the people going. He touched me. I'm LGBTQ. I identify as a woman. You know, all the buzzwords that get people going. You know what I mean? You got the Me Too, Karen. You got the gays involved. You got the I'm a woman involved. You know, so those are all things that trigger people into feeling some type of way. And those Karens know how to get corporate Karen on you and get you out the way, you know? And so I think that's kind of what that was. It was a play on, you know what? Let me just say all the things that, you know, get people in trouble. Right. So that's and I, I understand that, you know, you talk trash talking is a huge part of promoting a boxing match because I don't even know who these people are. So to get interest, we got to say he's LBGTQ. He's got to mm -hmm. identify as a woman. Mm -hmm. But y'all being in the community and me being a woman, are you, I'm sick of it. I'm like, can you use something else? Like, can you use something else? It's like, I don't know, uh, appropriating, appropriating <laughs> y'all's and my culture and identities for attention. 
do something else. I think it's corny as hell for him to do this. I really do. And yeah, you're giving very much weirdo. Brielle said he needs to take notes from Floyd. He's trying to sell tickets. And M Town Boy for you said, it's people going through real things and Garcia is crying. Karen, go sit down, sir and ma'am. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. And Lady <laughs> TC says he might be suffering from CTE. And Comfort Asante said he's trying to promote the fight, y'all. Yeah, yeah, but, but you do know, you do know that Karen behavior doesn't represent any of us up here because we're no. black. The Karen, the, the the woman is the white woman, is actually the Karen, and the LGBTQ, we're not really LGBTQ. That umbrella really doesn't protect us. Those are for the white gays. That's really what the LGBTQ whole thing is. And that's why I always get, you know, upset when, you know, black people be like, oh, you know, you gays, you guys, you say something against the gays, they're all going to be mad. No, that's for the white gays. That's for the white trans. Just like if somebody comes against women, that's not for black women. You guys aren't covered under that. That's for white women. So we're still black at the end of the day, gay yeah, we, or women. So we are constantly reminded of that. <laughs> yes. All right. Jada, way to clap back at critics who questioned her no makeup look. Jada was spotted tracking, taking a picture of with a fan rocking a bare face. Someone wrote, this why bad bleeps shouldn't take pics with straight men, because why would you th <clears throat> not throw a little filter on my bleep? Jada was not here for the backhanded compliment. She responded, I'm not letting no acne or hyperpigmentation stop me from taking pics and being outside fully natural. Do you think the world of social media and filters is turning people away from natural beauty, Al? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the like button and the follow button is doing mm -hmm. the same thing, too. I love the fact that this young lady, you know, is not afraid to be outside without makeup. Look how beautiful she is. Look how beautiful she is and look at her hair. I'm really rotating into a space now where when I'm hanging out, I am finding myself more attracted to the, what I call the raw dog look, like the no filter, the face natural without a whole bunch of makeup without or none at all, and the hair being natural. I'm here for it. I love it. And you're beautiful, sweetheart, with or without makeup. She's pretty. I'm like, what, what are these people right. saying? Like, what's wrong with the, the average person sitting behind their computer is trolling look like crap, okay? I'm just going to say it right now. And they, the audacity they have to, like, she looks pretty. Armand, what do you think? Yeah, I thought this was stupid because I feel like, you know, majority of the people following her look like that. So that should be relatability. Like, we all have a natural look. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we all have a regular off of work, out and about, running errands. Like, at the end of the day, I think that's also part of being the celebrity, like being the star. Like, okay, this is, I'm out running errands. I'm not on a show right now. But, you know, you kind of well, got on, me. Hold on, hold on, hold on now. Hold on now. What? What? Come on, I, I look. I look like this. I woke up like this now. I, I look <laughs> on, like you, this on a regular now. But you know, Speak but, for hey, yourself. <laughs> no, but remember, you had that day where you had to black enough to spot <laughs> yeah. right here. You know what I mean? They was the one you put the line up right there. Beijing, was, baby. You, now you you got it blackened up and stuff. <laughs> we all fall short sometimes. But I'm just saying, it all makes us human though, right? And so right. when you can see a person with 7 million followers and all that influence and all that money, and then you run into them on the street or you see a picture and you're like, oh, she got the blemish that I have. It makes you feel more confident, <laughs> right? Because we all are people with flaws at the end of the day. Right. And I like to see the flaws in us all because... You know, we can, we, a lot of us battle with body dysmorphia. And when I can see my favorite people dealing with the same thing, I'm like, okay, we're all the same people here. So I'm more confident in, you know, stepping out into my life. So shout out to her for that. The Photoshop and the filters have raised the bar so high where it's such an unrealistic expectation right. of people. Like you're, you're supposed to see like an airbrush image in person. And it's just not realistic for most people. All right. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, we discuss what we would do in sticky situations. And later, have you ever made an, assum an assumption that you regret? Oh, my God. Yes. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Stick around. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out.
Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. All right, welcome back to the show. Soulmates, have you ever thought about how you would handle yourselves if you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation? Well, we'd like for you to chime in on the fun and hashtag WWYD, what would you do? All right, y'all, Atlanta residents pulled up to the IRS office demanding answers about why their tax refunds are so delayed. Take a look. Time to tough. What would you do in this situation if you desperately needed your refund, Armand? Child, I'm be honest with you. That used to be me. That would be me. Okay. But I, I actually now I'm on the opposite side where I literally wait to the last day because I don't get no money. I always have to owe. So I'd be like, take your time, IRS. Take your time because I always owe. So I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I literally just filed my taxes last week. Cause I knew I wouldn't get my money. So, mm -hmm. but if that was me, I would be over there beating them doors down and sitting on that phone for two hours and calling back and pissed off because they not answering, going straight to voicemail, going to dial tone, sitting on the phone for hours. For and sure. when you, and you, when you really don't want to pay, you file an extension. So you have until October. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Oh, I need some more time. <laughs> yeah. I hate tax season. Same. But you know what? When you were broke, you love tax season. <laughs> Did. Right? Al, what do you think about this? Uh, I, what would I do? I would not go to the IRS office. <laughs> <laughs> the last agency that you want to upset is the IRS on so many levels. A, they will delay your check. They'll continue to hold your check. They will audit you. They'll go back through, you know, to make sure that what you said and who you said you are, you are. I think the last people that I would piss off would be the IRS. So I, I wouldn't go down to the IRS office. Sorry. I would use every other means. I would, you know, call the office. They have this new hotline now specifically for finding out where your check status is. I would call that. I would go back to the prepare that did it for you. If you did it for yourself, I, I just would not bring that type of noise to the IRS office because they can make your life H E L bad. H E L L. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if we could spell it or say it. Oh, I'm right, because you can't spell. I'm just saying clear. Right, I'm just saying right. clear. That was a good one, Al. <laughs> you can't spell. Who was it? <laughs> I just didn't want to be in violation. I'm always, right. doing, I'm always okay. doing something crazy here. Um, Why don't you have it? They probably felt like there was safety numbers going on there with a lot of them. You know what I mean? Like, they can't get all of us. But, uh, you know, the IRS, I will say this. You give them a call if you can get through the long whole line. They will mm. work with you. I've definitely been in positions where I had to, like, have a conversation with them. But I get it. I mean, a lot of people, like, for a lot of people in America, the reality is once a year at this time is when they 
finally have a little bit of extra money to do something. So right. I get the frustration. Mm. You know, a lot of people are living like this. My mom, we, we grew up living like when income tax comes, then we can get the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I get that. Like people are like really looking forward to, I get the frustration, but, um, Wow, they sure don't um be late when it's time to collect the money from you, do they? Absolutely you know not. That? They Absolutely find a way. They be like, you not. And and be be short on something, seventy two cents. <laughs> they still want their money, and they're gonna tax right. you and interest, put interest on that thing until they get their money back. Or they'll just take it out your account. Free, freeze your account, and then I they have that. taken money out of my account before. They just went in there and taking it out. I had my whole life frozen. I said, wait, 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 what happened? What, what happened? I a, but you know what I did, I did realize? They froze my accounts. I called them and I said, hey, I, this will put me in financial devastation. And they unreleased it. They did. And I just had to make a payment plan with them. And they were actually willing to work. And yeah. trust me, y'all, you can make payment plans that are ridiculously low. You can hit them with the, mm. all I can afford is $50 a month. And, you know, eventually you'll get that 72000 It's going to take you like 42 years, but you're going to get it. I'll pay it every month. So you guys know one of my 150 jobs I used to do taxes. That's what I say, Claudia, always. <laughs> if, I know it's scary because I know when I think taxes, I get extremely nervous and scared, and I do taxes. But all you have to do is communicate and document that you communicated. Send them a letter, send them an email, send them a letter or anything to communicate to show that you had good faith and they will be forced to work with you. You'd be surprised because I've been there, done that. And yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yes, we good now, though. All right. Video footage caught the exact moment. A woman caused a terrible car wreck. Watch this clip. Oh my God. If someone break checked you like this, what would you do, Armand? What, what I'm would pissed do? because clearly this is a scam. Girl, you trying to get a new car, you trying to get a come up, and you trying to act like you you mad. You trying to, you committed to the whole lot, the whole show. Now it's my fault. Girl, you got in front of me and stopped that car like that because you wanted me to hit you because you know the burden could have been on me because you have to have a certain amount of distance. Even if someone in break checks you, you know, we can split the fault. So at that point, I feel like, girl, I'm pissed off because you're trying to fraud me through insurance. Yeah, it's messed up that, like, they have it where pretty much if you hit someone from the back, it's almost it's always your fault. Yeah, uh, because yeah, people are getting very creative with their scam themselves. Al, what, 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 what do you think about this? Okay, I already told you guys, I'm not very good behind the wheel. My rage is really bad. I would have drugged her a couple, I would have drugged that car <laughs> a couple of feet. I promise you, I would have just kept going. I would have drugged her a little while, and then I would have stopped up the road and said, oh my God, did I hit somebody? I, 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 I have no time for these type of games. I don't even have time for people who break too much. I don't, I don't have time for people that go below the speed limit. All of it drives me to a frenzy that just is not healthy. So she wouldn't want to try that with me. You don't need no car in LA. She would have been plopped. I would have hit her. She would have probably fell over in that. And I would have drugged that car right down. Right yeah, I see why you don't drive out here. Because, baby, you will be over it in LA. Oh, my gosh. LA people drive me nuts. <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out here today. It's like 40 minutes going five miles. I do not miss yes. this, y'all. Y'all yeah. can have this. I, I'm going to tell you what. Road rage in Texas, it's been... You know, it's such a huge state and so spread open. There's so many freeways. It's been really good to be able to just, like, drive at a good normal speed and be able to, like, be in wide open freeway. It's not as bad there. I mean, we do have our times because a lot of people are moving there, but it's been good to be able to, like, not really have a lot of these, like, little things like that. Uh, Jay Call with 25 said she did that on purpose. See, people really be wanting to get beat up. Tanya Christopher said she crossed a solid white line. That girl should be held responsible. And Malik Taylor said a lot of people be doing this BS. And this is a good idea. S. Rain said, I need to get a dash cam. Mm. Oh, Not a bad idea. idea. All right, y'all. Uh, coming up, have you ever regretted an assumption? Keep it locked to find out what we've assumed wrongfully. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. 
Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. What'd you say? Welcome yes. back to TGF. Armand, I'm so glad that, you know, <laughs> like the eyes, you know what I'm saying? Oh! <laughs> I see you clearly, straight, right on. The camera. hills have eyes and they, they go straight. <laughs> go looking off camera. <laughs> I'm missing the joke. Ah, uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? Can you I'm see looking, me? <laughs> can you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking straight at you. <laughs> no side eye. <laughs> Don't cross me. No shades. Okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're talking about. All right, check out this tweet. It says... What is something that strangers often incorrectly assume about you, fellas? Some assumption that people have about you? Al, let's go with you first. Um, probably that I'm buttoned up and conservative as heck. Mm. Okay. Armand? I think people's misconception of me is that, you know, because they see me online, they just think I'm just this messy, loud, obnoxious, flamboyant gay man because of what they see online. And then when you see me, I'm really a vibe. How is that wrong? Because it's not who I am off. They just assume that I'm just... Because here's the thing. People, people the don't know The shade is real. No, because people... No, see, now, I now, see I, you. No, I do have her... No, I have her buttoned up if you try me. Okay. But if you're my friend and you just meet me on a cool... Al, you've hung out with me. You know I'm not. Like, you know, there's Armand the show. Then there's Armand the guy. Are you much different off camera than you are Yes, because okay. I'm, I'm... But people assume what they see on camera that that is who I am 24 seven. I couldn't be like this all day long. I, I, I can understand that. And especially if you, you know, certain things that we work on, like they take mm -hmm. a piece of your personality and you're forever judged by that one thing. I have a severe uh, resting B face and I could be happy, but I just don't be like sitting here. I'm not going to be sitting here like, like, and there's a bit <laughs> to laugh at. So I know I have a very angular, sharp face. I'd be looking mad. I'm really not. I just be like, not trying to get wrinkles. I'm 51. So I just be letting my face be slack. Okay. Reversing the question. Have you ever made an assumption about someone else without- No, you didn't answer them? the question on you. Well, that was her asking. It's yeah, the mine was, yeah, yeah, mine oh, was the my, you know, the, okay, the main- Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, assumptions about other people. Have you had them about other people when you were wrong about them? Armand, let's go with you first. Have you made an assumption about someone without getting to know them first? Yeah, I'm sure I've done it many times because I've listened to other people or yeah. I've paid attention to other things. And then I've actually seen it for myself. And I'm like, you know what? I actually pegged you to be something else and you weren't that type of person, you know? And mm -hmm. so that has definitely happened to me before. And I, I overthink a lot. Of yeah. things so i automatically because i know i'm the type of personality either you love me or you hate me so i automatically go into any situation thinking this person ain't gonna like me yeah. but then i realized oh my god no we vibe you cool you like me you get it so i'm glad i didn't judge you i'm with you on that i always think people don't like me until i'm proven <laughs> otherwise al yeah. about you assuming assumptions about other people yeah i made that i grew up in the church and i used to assume that the church girls well, good old church women. No, <laughs> they are the freakiest. Oh, so 
I mean, I just find, the you know, you think church. Is crazy. Yeah, I think What's the, the freakiest church... thing you done with a church woman? Boy. Raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, um, this is not about someone I knew, but I made an assumption and it, it taught me a valuable lesson. I just moved to Texas. I was at the Texas State Fair. I was just got announced on the radio. So it was like my coming out party there in Dallas. They're okay. welcoming me. And this girl wanted to take a picture with me. And I was like, yes. She's like, Claudia, George, I love you. I'm like, all right, cool. I hold the camera. And I put my hands on her stomach. It was obvious she was nine months pregnant i said mm. baby she said no i said sorry and it was like so i felt so bad so ever since then i don't care uh, you could be like in labor i'm not gonna assume you're pregnant and i felt really bad about that it was giving fupa it was all the way up here though. it was like it was so it looked exactly like a pregnant stomach you know that so was now, gas <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Like, but you That's really, fine. it was really given like nine months pregnant. Like, it looked just and only stomach. So, I'm sorry. Oh. I've done that. Foot and mouth. <laughs> but women can get away with doing that. Like, men cannot get away with doing that. I know. He was a really good sport about it. I will say that. And uh, yeah, sorry if you're watching. I want to thank my co-host, Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. And thanks for watching us on YouTube. I'm going to assume that y'all rewatch this tomorrow and run those numbers up. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Y'all be, hey, be good out here, okay? Leave them raw dog church girls alone. Hey, all. <laughs> come on, y'all. <laughs> see you tomorrow. It's time for today's Face Off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face Off on Fox Soul starts right now. Just this past week I saw, I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity and I was like, I don't know that that's not necessarily a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to think through it a lot. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time because then again, that puts money back in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it may not be as objectionable to some people about actually giving out dollars. Yeah. But obviously then you start dealing with the different tax brackets and things like that. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we argue the reparations make sense because so many black folk, not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things, right? That was Jasmine Crockett, the Congresswoman from Texas, the Dallas area. An incredibly vibrant personality. She gives great TV, right? She gives great clips. I don't think this was an example of it. This was her on a podcast last week wondering if it would be appropriate to eliminate taxation if you have dark enough skin. And it's absolutely insane, right? I'm all for ending the income tax. I'm all for ending the stranglehold that this Biden administration has on middle class and lower class Amer or lower uh, Americans experiencing poverty. Uh, I don't want to suggest that's low class, but lower classes. But one, uh, an African American community, you have the largest percentage of the population that is not subjected to income tax. You do not help those people by saying, oh, well, you don't have to pay something you weren't going to pay anyway, right? But two, we have to stop looking for race-based solutions that are never-ending. Like, at what point do you say, okay, well, you haven't paid taxes long enough, let's reset it. It's like reparations cash, which historically you've said you're against cash reparations. You want reparations to go to, to non-governmental organizations and charities, which I just think is you advocating for the government to give you more money. And, but the truth is that any type of cash, period, it's like, at what point do you end? Okay, well, you give all this money out, but you have another generation of people. Are they also entitled to more money? And it's not a solution. And in America, maybe instead of start, you know, pitting the races against each other and making race-based arguments, maybe we should start talking about long-term solutions for all Americans, like the Biden's stupid loan forgiveness. How about we make college and vocational training accessible for all Americans. How about we lower taxes for all Americans? How about we start trying to build a better America? And I'll tell you why, Quanell. The reason that these, the, these pandering politicians are either 
promoting reparations or condemning reparations because all it's designed to do is get white people mad at black people, black people mad at white people, and give the politicians a reason to say, well, we tried, but we couldn't fix crap. Charles, when you look at what the Congresswoman said and put it in its proper context, she has some absolute facts. What? This was first presented to the American public and to the black community by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He was the one that said black people should be exempt from paying taxes for every year that we were in slavery, all black when, people should be When were you in slavery, Cornell? Let me finish, when, when, Charles. When were you in slavery? Let me finish, Charles. What the messenger said was that every year that the black race was enslaved, they should be given one year of free taxation. So, Charles, do you realize that reparations was paid to slave owners when they gave up their slaves in the South. I love you. Lo I love do it you, that you like you to realize? talk about 200 years well, ago. Well, let me finish, Charles. Okay. Let me finish, Charles. I listen to you. We, well, the lie. United States government paid reparations to slave owners for the loss of their property. Then they did. They went a step further. That's not true. But they, go ahead. They went a step further. They guaranteed free education to the firstborn son of that slave owner who lost and gave up his property. Again. And they were You're just that making stuff up because finish, these Charles. myths give you a Charles, stupid argument finish, to Charles. make. Let me finish. Public Google was white slave masters paid reparations for losing their slaves. Brothers and sisters, and to you, Charles, do you realize that Germany gave tax benefits and the tax breaks to the survivors of the German Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust? Do you realize we did the same thing in America for Vietnam? Men and women no, we didn't. of Vietnamese who came to America? Yes. No, we those, didn't. Let me finish. Those who said they were affected by Agent Orange Spring, who became citizens from Vietnam in the United States, they were given government benefits. Well, that's a little bit different. Charles, my I mean, People concern, rendered disabled got Charles, disability listen benefits. To me. All black people coming out of slavery should have been rendered disabled. Okay. All of us coming out of slavery should have been given free you keep education. Saying us. When were you I'm, in slavery, people, Quanell? My it's people, not your my people. people. It is my people. Okay, Quanell. I am a we, member we, of this the black is, race. Well, the black race the is not a monolith, and neither is a white race. Die. And you keep talking about you being in slavery. Been given for 400 years. You've never years been in slavery, Quanell. But every year we were held so, in bondage so, and held so in slavery. So every white person that had some negative, every white person that had to flee Europe for religious persecution, the Irish people that were fleeing the potato famine and starvation, people that came over as Indian church servants, people that came over in a variety of ways for horrible things. People who lost their fathers to, to war that we should have been fighting in. We can find horrible things in history. And here, I'm not against America finding better solutions for American citizens, right? But our Constitution says it can't so be race-based. So do you believe based, right? that slave, the end of the when day, slavery ended, the American government should not have mandated free health care for all slaves? Uh, absolutely. Okay, you don't think that we should have got free education for all slaves at the end of slavery? Oh, absolutely. Because we were not allowed to read during slavery. Okay. It wasn't we. Charles, you weren't allowed. It is we. We were born it is in 1972. We. It is we. I think you my, were 71. My ancestors no. live in me, no. and I live in That's them, the Charles. Thing. That's the whole thing. That's the grandest lie Charles. of all, right? This is America does it like, for everybody else. No, it doesn't. But won't do it for us. Okay? You know who doesn't get it? Won't do it for us. Do it for black people. Why don't people. you look and look at the black population? People. If you want to reduce it to race, you look at the, the, the percentage of the population on the dole per capita. I know it's a typical, it's a difficult concept. And if you look at all the things, the people that contribute <laughs> the least, right? If you want to break it down by race, who is the biggest remover of, of income from the tax base and who and that was provides by the most income. And that was by design by your white right. liberal well, brothers. Well, I grew up poor. Your white no. liberal brothers did okay. that. When they created Look, a welfare I am not system responsible. that said take the black man out the house, I am not black woman don't get a job, we'll give you checks. That I just your white share. liberal brothers See, created that problem. You want to reduce everything and group people no, by I'm race. No, I'm giving you some no, no, no. facts. No, you want to reduce it. You want to characterize everybody by race, but also be a crybaby about racism. You can't be a racist and then cry about racism right Charles, you talk about white people like they're a model let me say this. but they're not we're individuals Look, and we we want to have a communist got the money socialist to society fight foreign wars in oh, ukraine i don't want to do that and we got hey. the money to fight in afghanistan and fight in iraq and get everybody else's business so we got money to do something for the other descendants than your of america's former slaves other than your racism 
Why don't we say, hey, let's have free health care for all Americans? I agree with hey, that. Let's have a I universal income that. benefit for all Americans. I agree with Why that. Why do we spend 60%? Well, a little 60%, bit, I agree with that. Sixty percent of welfare dollars. You know where it goes? Government employees. We pay billions to run welfare programs across this country, right? When we could take all that money and just say, here, here's a check, here's a check, here's a check, here's a check. But then all those government employees might have to find their ass as a real job. And then maybe the people that are in miserable poverty but that we Charles, both grew up in Charles, might have a better chance. Let me How tell about you we make college, in-state college, in-state vocational training for all Americans The messenger free. of Allah said that black people should not take welfare. He said, if you turn the world around, it means farewell That's to being crazy, independent. That's crazy, because you always have your hand out, Quadell. You for yourself. always have your hand Charles, out. Charles, let me explain something give me, to give you, me, man. Give me government, Bob, At the Quadell. end of the day, we have to do something to correct the direction of this nation. It's a shame that 5% of the American population controls 95% of American wealth. Charles, the founding fathers, I believe, did not set this nation up to be that. <laughs> We have to do better in this nation by all of its citizens, and we cannot ignore the call for reparations from black people. We right can. now, right now in this America, right? So should we end black people having an easier time getting into elite schools? Should we end all yes. the preference that's given yes. to black people throughout yes. America in 2024? Yes. Yes. Should we stop putting white people to the back of the line? Yes, if you give us reparations. Okay. Oh, but when does that stop? You Juan pay Allen? reparations, point, we'll give point. all that so back to you. So what about the next generation? What you about, pay how reparations, about we just build a we'll better give it America? All back you don't to want you. it because you just want because racism. Because we won't need to go to your schools if we get reparations. Oh, jeez. You come go to school with us, you'll be broke. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. turn of events, New York City has agreed to a $17.5 million settlement following a class action lawsuit. This case was sparked by the experiences of Muslim American women Jamila Clark and Arwa Aziz, who were forced by police officers to remove their hijabs for mugshot photos. The women expressed feelings of violation and exposure, likening the removal of their religious headwear to a strip search. The case has led to a significant policy change in 2020 by the NYC Police Department, now allowing individuals to be photographed with religious attire as long as faces remain visible. Charles, in what, New York City has agreed to pay $17.5 million in a settlement agreement because Muslim women filed a lawsuit against the city of New York because they felt that they were victims of religious bigotry 
and their religious rights and freedom of expression through religion was violated. They came together collectively, several of them, and filed this lawsuit. But over several thousand women were actually the victims of this. And when you are a Muslim, a woman's hijab is a part of her religious faith and belief. A mugshot taken by law enforcement is to identify your facial features, not what's on your head. There was no significant reason why they needed to remove a hijab from a woman, especially when she tells them, I am a Muslim. It is against my religion to wear my hair uncovered in the presence of men that are not my immediate family or husband. Please do not violate my faith. I agree that New York did the right thing by settling this lawsuit because it's going to make significant changes. It already has. Now the NYPD union has already came out and said, okay, let them take the pictures with the hijab on, but their face must be shown. Now in cases where a Muslim woman is arrested and she has the hijab on and she has the veil over her face, well then that's, a, that's unacceptable. She should be forced or be told she must remove the veil and allow herself to be Well, why? Why, if, if her sect of the Muslim faith requires her to be fully covered, why, why if, if this is your idiotic argument, why not require that too? Require what? The, 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 to be her be allowed to keep her, her mask on as well. It's, that's not required in Islam. Okay, how do you know? How do you know? You can't speak for every sect of the Islamic no. faith. There are women no. in, that me, are required to have you. a veiled face. Yeah, correct that's me. That's not true. Now, when you see the women in Islam wearing their faces covered, that is pre-Islamic Arab culture. That has nothing to do with the religion. In fact, Prophet Muhammad said a woman does not have to have a face covered. But if you look at pre-Islamic Arabia, okay. you will there see that they used to wear the, the faces covered. Muslim sects that require women to be full burqa covered, Like the right? Taliban. And what you're saying like the Taliban, is you that mean. somehow is not real Muslims. But you're not the decider. Charles. And at the end of the day, here's the truth. Here's the truth. Okay, 3,600 women are chopping up $17.5 million worth of taxpayer money, right? Two lead plaintiffs who are probably getting a lot more. You know who's making the most money? The damn the lawyers. lawyers. And the truth is, you know what? You go to jail, they're going to make you spread your butt cheeks to make sure you ain't got nothing stuck up there, right? Hey, you get arrested. If you've been arrested but wrongfully, a man hold is not on. Allowed to strip if you, search a if woman you, in jail. If you get arrested, and you get wrongfully arrested, then sue for your wrongful arrest. But if you get rightfully arrested, people got to identify you. And I don't give a damn if, if you're Jewish and you, you want to wear your little yarmulke, if you're, if you're Muslim and you want to have your... I don't care. As long as it is a race and religion neutral rule, a rule that's applied to everybody. So if you're a colander head spaghetti monster religion, you get to keep your colander on your head? No. To hell with that. The this is an example. Your right to do so. This is an example. No, bull crap. The Supreme Court would not put up with this. This is the Supreme the, Court uh, another example of a liberal city council jail. handing out millions of taxpayer dollars in a city that is having to rights, cancel Charles. police academy classes, cancel after school services, Almost cancel 4, public services women to give a bunch of women who got their asses arrested and they want to be crime. How are they, they violated? Be Buy a picture when they were punished for just being that. Muslims. As long as you make Christians, Jews, Muslims, Pindis, Buddhists, everybody have the same damn rule. It's content Listen, neutral. Take your damn you picture. Have had, don't get your ass you, arrested you if Christ, you don't want to take off you, your damn veil. You've had you've had gay members in jail say that it's their right for the public to pay for their own transgender surgery. Well, that's insane, too. You've had you, two you, insane results you, don't had, make you, it right. You've had Christians Maybe the liberals should stop handing out taxpayer dollars about what and sabotaging the economy Charles, and then killing the middle class and causing all this rights. crazy inflation by printing money but just to hand it out. Violate so, but they're not violating rights. rights. It's a picture. I'm Charles, sorry. The picture Don't of your get your face ass is arrested. what's mandatory. No. Your no. face. You need not to be your able to, hair. You need to be able to identify. You can get a haircut. You need you to be able to dye your hair. You need to be you able to identify. You can cut all your hair off. The purpose your of a mug shot identify you. is your to face identifies you. Your face identifies you. The suspect. To identify the defendant. And you and need some hair to do that. liberal And you need hair to do that, Charles. As long as it is race and religious and ethnically neutral. So if you went to jail, put a wig on your head then, right? But if I went to jail and I had a wig on, I'd expect them to tell me to take it the hell off. And if I Charles, said, you would no, need that wig, you go to no, jail. No, my religion 
My religion shows requires they me. did not have a right to violate those women's my, religious my rights. My religion, they didn't violate crap. This is liberal bull crap. And I think there's a bunch of conservative bull crap. I'm no fan of the Republicans. But this is a prime example of a liberal government handing out millions of taxpayer dollars. People that got off their ass and went to work are paying these women that went to jail for committing crimes because, oh, we had now, to take our veil off. I will let say me tell this. you some people in jail are getting their booty all inspected. I will say You're going to let them I will say too? this, Charles. To me, it would have been better if these Muslim women, and some of them very well may do. It weren't criminals? If they had taken their settlement money and donated to the cause and the upliftment of Islam. Okay. Because then it's about making change that benefits all Muslim women and not making change that financially benefits you. And so I would, I would love to see some of them women donate their money to mm -hmm. mosques, Islamic charities, or better yet, donate some of that money to the children in Palestine who are dying of starvation. This is just incentivizing incentivizing people to get arrested and then cry about something. This is stupid. It's not like they got beat. It's not like they got wrongfully arrested. They literally just had, you know what? You could have had a weapon in the job. You could have something hidden there. You could have all kind of, you could have distinctive tattoos that need to be photographed. But all you got to do is say, oh, I'm a Muslim. I want to keep a this woman. covered up. Uh, you don't think women have tattoos? A Muslim, a Muslim you don't woman think, you don't think women got have tattoos on top of you, her head. You don't think women are violent? Got tattoos on top of her okay. head. Here's the thing. We should have one rule, and that rule should apply to everyone, right? And that's the thing. You shouldn't violate and if you're going to let everyone beliefs. cover up, there, there were no rights violated. This was liberal bull crap. You shouldn't violate Charles. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here being unapologetically me on a platform like this. I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. yourself be happy with yourself uh i don't want to be with myself <laughs> i i don't know and people are like wait that says a lot you should be happy with yourself alone i haven't been alone like i like honestly like i still don't poop alone like bo still stands there and stares and talks to me like while i'm pooping like it's just like i don't know i haven't pooped peed alone in 18 years. All right, Quanell, that was Tori Spelling. Everybody, you know, our generation remembers her from 90210, the creator, Aaron Spelling's daughter, which is probably the only reason she got the job. She was, I think, was she on Saved by the Bell? She was on something before that. I don't know. I've always thought that's plastic surgery done bad. That's her talking about how she don't poop alone, right? And firstly, 
pooping in front of her husband. That just seems weird, right? I've been married 30 years. I don't know when my wife goes to the bathroom. She must do it when I'm out the house, right? She most certainly ain't doing it when I'm standing there having to watch her in the bathroom smelling all that nasty but she's talking about her kid. Initially, Juanel, I was sympathetic, right? Because single moms, you know, you've got little kids running around. You've got to watch them. You know, you set the baby down. You set the toddler down. She's talking about a seven-year-old male child. What on earth do you want your seven-year-old male child in the bathroom with you while you got your panties at your ankles and you dropping a deuce. It seems crazy to me, but I know you're a big blonde white girl fan, so tell me why it's okay, Quanell. Charles, let me say this to you. I don't believe it's okay at all. But what I do want to say is that for her to come out publicly and admit that she partakes in this silly, stupid, filthy practice, even in the presence of a seven-year-old child, that's a whole nother sick discussion. But to say she used to have her husband watch her while he pooped, what that says to me, she's giving subtle hits that obviously like playing in a chocolate poon tang, <laughs> whatever, playing in a mud pie. This is sick. What man want to watch his wife take a hit? Now, if she's sick and she needs his help, then a real loving man will be there to assist her, whether she's doing number one or number two. But to just sit there and smell them funky fumes while you drop a load in the toilet, what the hell is wrong with your husband? But then for you to turn around as a woman and force your child to watch it, to me, that's a form of child abuse. Now, I would like to see what is CPS, and Department of Family Services, going to do after she admitted she forced her seven-year-old son to watch so her So do you poo -poo. think her being, you know, partially undressed in front of her seven-year-old child should be a crime? With her panties down to her ankles while she Yes. So, so we hear about... With her panties down to fact, her ankles while she Yes, so last and making week, him watch it, yes. So last week, we hear about the, the woman that allegedly stole uh, Joe Biden's daughter's diary, right, that she had left under a mattress in a house that wasn't her house. The woman found it and sold it. She got a month in federal prison uh, because of a diary. And in that diary, uh, Biden's daughter talked about that she was probably molested and talked about she took showers with her dad that were inappropriate. And the mainstream media is ignoring that, right? And I would argue that if it was a Trump, if it was a Trump hit kid doing it, it'd be all Chester the molester all day instead of just ignoring it. So do you think, I personally think it's far worse for a male, right, a father to be naked like that in a shower or something with a seven, eight year old kid, right? I think it's terrifying that, that the president's daughter is suggesting that she probably was molested in her diary. I think it's terrifying that we have a situation where the federal government is going after a woman that just found some lost property and sold it, right? Now, but I'm not that worried about a woman dropping trowel and deucing it up. I think it's gross. But you jump subjects. But uh, I mean, I don't think it's a crime. You mentioned something and you want to put the president in jail for it that I had not even heard of. You had not even heard. See, that's the problem. The How media, the hell ain't you the, heard the, about the it? The mainstream media has buried that story. Right. Because if she found the diary, she, she didn't steal it. Right. And if you find something that somebody's lost, you're not duty bound to just give it or back. Or abandoned. They abandoned. It, what exactly. Is, what is the Biden girl's So house? why would she go to prison, Charles? Well, because, because it's. Because people. Because lose, it's the Gestapo. Because athletes lose material all the time. And people sell it online and sell it at auctions. It's the they don't Gestapo. put them in jail. But if this is true, that Did Joe it. Biden was taking showers with his own daughter and she was of age. Super creepy. Man, that's sick. That ain't Super creepy. Super creepy. That's creepy. sick. I'm not but saying Donald let me Trump say ain't this super to you. creepy, too. They're but, both wait, creepy. But wait a minute. Neither of them scumbags should but be candidates. But his son's diary? Oh, man, craziness. Crazy. You mean his laptop that wasn't a laptop? It's crazy. That was some it's sick all in there. But Tori, about the Tori sex needs between some counseling. She don't need CBS. Need she to take needs some STD testers. And she needs to learn to love herself. Because I think it comes down to it. I think she's it's afraid to abuse. be alone. I don't think both so. Both are child I abuse. think she's afraid to be alone. She doesn't love herself. She needs and therapy. Spoiled little rich girl. She, she needs, needs some therapy. therapy. She needs some therapy. I'll and give her that. she needs to be put so in we court. So we finally agree on something. Tori Spelling needs they put, therapy. They put women in court less than that all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's important that we in America turn away from allowing entertainment figures, 
whatever industry they may be a part of, to set cultural and parental standards that become the norm in this nation. We're allowing immoral subculture to take over the actual culture of proper parenting in America. To make your child sit there and watch you take a poop like that, that's sick. That's child abuse. And I think that she should be dealt with as such. Now, at the end of the day, we in this country, as African Americans, I believe the descendants of America's former slaves should have been paid reparations a long time ago. You can't do this for others who were the perpetrators of slavery, but yet you ignore the victims and their descendants. We were in bondage for almost 400 years in America. Then came Jim Crow legislation and segregation. That's another 65 years. We are barely up since 1968 in the Civil Rights Act. I believe America does owe that debt. She should pay that debt, not to individuals, but to institutions that will be designed for the total upliftment of our people because individual checks is not gonna help us. What will help us is collective resources toward black people. That was a little reparations curveball from Quan LX there at the end where the truth came out, right? Oh, he wants reparations, but he wants it to go to organizations like his, millions and millions of dollars, right? Because that's the only way to help people. The truth is that if we're going to do things for Americans, we most certainly should, because we're doing things for people all over the world, right? We're, we're funding wars. We're letting immigrants come to this country and get, get free everything while, while Americans are starving and, and in, in dire economic straits. We should start building a better America for all Americans. Lower our taxes. Make in-state tuition free. Make vocational training in-state free. Right, fund those to give more of a pathway to deliver the hope that Obama promised but never delivered. Now, the Republicans, they're not interested in that, right? They're just trying to suck up all the damn money they can, and they serve the post-monetary. And the saddest thing is now that's pretty much all the Democrats do, and they just pander. Jasmine Crockett knows that she could never get a bill passed that says, hey, black people won't have to pay taxes, but she says that to divide America, to get people worked up, and pander for votes. for the face-off on Fox Soul. We'll catch you next time. It's time for today's face-off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face-off on Fox Soul starts right now. The work of a public defender is not typically considered very glamorous. In the first degree, yes. But one transgender attorney in Washington is challenging stereotypes thanks to her eye-popping appearance. Lawyer Stephanie Muller has been open about her background and says it has no bearing on her ability as a public defender. And on Thursday, the septuagenarian attorney raised eyebrows after appearing before a Seattle court in a very revealing outfit. She's accused of, what is it, criminal trespass. In the first degree, yes. She's innocent, of course. She's innocent, okay. Well, she's caught on video being arrested and protesting. And the client has pled not guilty and she's not guilty. How about that? Despite her eye-catching appearance, Mueller says she has been treated with complete respect and great acceptance since her transition in 2012. She explained, Everywhere I go, people are friendly and polite. In the courtroom, the issue has never once arisen, as should be the case. I get good results because I'm a good lawyer. My gender is beside the point. This is very, very fabulous. Charles, what in the hell did we just watch? That looks like Bigfoot with lipstick and a wig. What is going on here, Charles? Whatever happened to court, proper courtroom decorum? You and I both know that a judge should have excused her out of that courtroom and said, thank you for coming to defend your client, but come back dressed appropriately to represent your client in the courtroom. Them big old fake, I mean gorilla looking breasts, man. So big, look like, like her nipples look like floodlights. That's a disgrace. Not even a woman, a real woman, should dress like that in a courtroom. That's disrespectful to the court, but that wasn't no real woman. That looked like she played linebacker for the Chicago Bears. Did you hear the voice? Did you hear the, don't play, you know what I'm saying to you. Did you hear the voice? Well, my client, what the hell? That ain't no woman, man. I will say, Cornell, that initially, I'll be honest, when I first saw the video, I thought, and this is, some younger people aren't gonna get this, I thought that was Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister. You remember Twisted Sister? Yes. We're not going to take it. You know, big crazy hair. 
with breasts, right? Which would clearly prosthetic breasts. Those that's not, that doesn't look like a boob job to me. That looks like a cartoon. Yeah, like a cartoon clown, outfit, right? And in the, the the hard nipples of the prosthetics poking through the sweater, I will agree that felt inappropriate. Okay, and I also agree that all over this country, courtroom decorum. Has, has gone to hell. You know, I, I, you see, I'm in court every day. You see guys in tennis shoes, you know, women dressed like, you know, they're going to the club. Uh, people are, men are in jeans. It does seem like we are dialing back etiquette. But you put all that aside and the obviously ridiculous appearance. I support her, her ability, you know, I want her to be able to live her life however she wants to live it. And it did sound like she was stridently advocating for her clients, which is what you want in an attorney. Do I think that would go over well in Texas? Probably not. Seattle? I would imagine in Seattle, they are more apt to look past her Man, appearance. Man, can you stop being politically correct? How about being politically you correct? You and I both know together that that woman, that man, whatever he is on that day, looks crazy as hell. Real women should be outraged, and real professional women who are lawyers should remind this new wannabe woman that this is not proper courtroom decorum. What if a transgender female into a male, decided to wear some leather pants in a courtroom with a big dildo print laying at the leg of us for everybody to see. Because that man rolled those big old <laughs> like that for everybody to see. So should a woman that, transited to, that transitions to a man be allowed to wear a dildo in her pants with tight pants on? Uh, you know, that sounds tacky and inappropriate. I think it's a little bit different. But not much. I'll give you. You know what? I'm not supposed to say you're right on stuff. We're supposed to argue on this show, but I'm going to give you right now. The, the nipples in the tight sweater, that was a bit much. But again, with lawyers, especially criminal defense, you want someone that's going to zealously advocate for your position. And it sounded as if she was, I mean, the deep voice throws me off. Sound like Bigfoot. But sounds as if. She was very well versed in the law and the circumstance of her client and I making a great argument. That. Well, that's, she's, I mean, she's probably a great lawyer, but when it comes to courtroom civility and decorum, when it comes to self respect, she seemed in incredible, incredibly that's civil. pathetic. She was very that's well crazy. spoken. Charles, I mean, what real woman wears hot leather pants in April? Okay, so I will say some thick leather, I'm sorry. And had riding boots on. She had riding boots on. She was getting ready to ride a well, horse. I mean, she Hell, probably, that looked like the horse to me. She probably riding something, Quanell. Well. But again, I support people's ability to live their lives however they want to live their lives and do what they want to do. And I look at lawyers based on the the efficacy of their advocacy. And it it seems like, and he based on her own statements that she's taken seriously, she's treated respectfully. I do and think And that's a positive thing. I do think the but nipples, that foolish that she's wearing. I think the, the fake. I assume they're fake nipples. Those felt disrespectful. Though you don't need to go to court trying to titillate other people or titillate yourself. So and why I would some argue, transgender activists come out and say, "Hey, look, that's too much. That's going too far," because well, you have some transgender some transgender women who transitioned from women to men or from men to women. Somebody from that community should say, "Wait a minute, this is over the top. Well, that's too much." Most sincerely trans people want to live their lives as the gender they feel they should be, right? They, this is clearly, Stephanie Mueller is clearly not doing that, right? It's a clear caricature of a woman, kind of an obscene caricature of a woman. Exactly. And it's probably driven by narcissism and vanity. But it's okay to be a narcissist, it's okay to be vain, although I do think that not in the courtroom. I, I do think, well, no. Uh, courtrooms are filled with narcissists, right? But I, I mean, will most give you lawyers credit. are. I will give you credit you know, on this. Present company excluded, because obviously I am a very giving, kind, generous person. But again, when I evaluate a lawyer, especially those fighting, pushing back against the state, right, oppression, it all comes down to, you know, how dedicated they are. So and it's my I've understanding been in she, she works, does indigent lately. work. I've attended for court hearings. People. I, I, Charles, lately I've attended court hearings. 
Harris County, Montgomery County, Brazoria County. And you know what shocks me the most of what I see? How some of my own African-American female sister lawyers are dressing. Black professional lawyer women never used to dress the way they dress I, now in their courthouse, man. And I see them wearing mini skirts to where you would think that they're headed to the nightclub to get involved in a party at the disco. Well, but don't. this is now what women are wearing to court. And some of these men look like they slept in their clothes all night long and bought a pair of sneakers from Payless. You know, I, I don't think it's exclusive or even overrepresented by black women. I think it's it's women generally. I think male lawyers generally. It's really the guys. Well, I don't pay attention white, to the white whatever. women like that. But, so I but really they are. You. I know. Down with Whitey. But no, of they not. are. They are. You know, I'm telling you, everyone's dressing too casual. The nipples a bit much. But as long as Stephanie is fighting for her clients, good for her. Look like Stephen to me. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome, Al Reynolds, and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. You know, Quanell, I think we're both big fans of primetime, of Deion Sanders. He didn't have quite the season at Colorado that he was hoping for, but I think it's important to have, you know, innovative black male coaches that are doing everything they can to make the college football more inclusive at the, the coaching staff levels. And I'm very excited to see how Deion's career excels because the guy's a champion. Right. I, I don't have anything bad to say about Dion, but I have to question his decision to hire Warren Sapp to expose these young, impressionable athletes to, to a, I mean, I was always a fan of Warren Sapp, I, I, but I think that the arrest that he had six, seven years ago for soliciting a prostitute, for domestic violence that included an allegation of stomping on his girlfriend's head, uh, which he is, he is, he took a plea bargain on one count of assault and I think one count of solicitation. I think it speaks to Prime making a decision about the celebrity as opposed to, and getting more attention for the program, as opposed to what's best for student athletes. I think when you when you have these kind of allegations and convictions, I think it, it you know, at, at a private, at a, at, a, at a professional team, it's one thing, but at a public university, being given free reign to interact with these student athletes, I think it's a horrible idea. Charles, to be very honest with you, I am all for second chances. You know, I'm a spiritual man, I believe in scripture. 
And Jesus did say that any man or woman that reached the depths of hell can also scale the heights of heaven. What concerns me is this case is that people are not taking something into consideration, not even yourself. I think that needs, I pray that they will soon develop technology for when a player retires from the NFL, before he can completely retire, they have some type of brain scan technology to search for CTE. A lot of these football players, man, are committing assaults against women and others because nobody wants to address the real elephant in the room from a violent collision sport as football. Some, most athletes have said playing tackle football is like being in a car wreck every time you make a tackle. These dudes, these, these brothers and these athletes of all races who play contact football have had history of violence. You remember the pro wrestler Chris Benoit? Yes. What he did? And when they finally opened up his brain, they said his brain looked like the material of an 80-year-old man from CTE. Charles Warren Sapp, if he's trying his best to redeem himself and clean himself up and do better, he should be given a second chance. I applaud Dion for doing it. We've had players to kill people and get a second chance to play football. We've had players solicit prostitutes even in college and still get a second chance to play football. Well, uh, let me be honest. So the solicitation of prostitution, I bring it up because all the news media reports talk about it. That doesn't bother me at all, right? right? Uh, well, a couple of reasons. Uh, there was no evidence or allegation that the woman was coerced or being forced into prostitution, no human trafficking allegation. Although we try nowadays, everyone, all the media want to frame the police, want to frame every prostitution arrest as human trafficking. That's simply not the case. And if there's not coercion involved, and a woman decides that she wants to, you know, monetize or commodify her vagina, or that's her business. So you're sitting here. Hold on, let me finish. The domestic violence is a whole different deal. And I know CT is a real thing. Chris Benoit, that was largely tied to rampant steroid use and drug use, right? Uh, then that's what caused most of the damage. Steroids are horrible for the brain. We don't have any evidence that Warren Sapp was using junior performance. Sayo? Yeah, and my Mike Webster. No, no, I get it, I get it, but it doesn't mean you're not responsible for your actions. You don't Depending get a Depending on the damage to the brain. But no, you're still responsible for your actions. Maybe you didn't get the appropriate help, but I don't care what's wrong with you. If you're stomping on a woman's head, you really don't have any business. And you're right. If he's done the work, if there's some evidence that he has, he has put in the effort to change his mindset so this kind of toxic male violence doesn't, you know, doesn't infect these young people that he's going to be, you know, controlling and directing and serving as a but, mentor. But him, we don't have any evidence of that. But in fact, him, it's just being ignored by Colorado, and that's what's incredibly but appropriate. Charles, him trying to purchase or buy a piece of poontang pie. I understand he might have had a sweet tooth at the moment. But Charles, I agree with you. If she wants to openly let him purchase right. some, some access. I don't care. Well, then she should have a right to sell the funky monkey if she wants to. Okay. But at the end of the day, Charles, because to me, that's not a crime. Do you realize that prostitution is the oldest profession in the book? Right. And let me tell you something. And it's a, it is Ask a crime. Ask any married man, does he pay for the coochie? Okay. Ask I, any married I, I man, gonna does he pay for the to coochie? your penchant for misogyny? I will say, Charles, you I married man. How long have you been married? I have thirty years. You take care of your wife financially, don't you? Um, well, my wife runs a business that makes a bunch uh, of money. Before that, but before that, yes, you I, pay I was, for I was, you pay well, took your wife, right? Well, hold on. In fairness, when I was a police officer, she was a social worker. We both worked until I became a lawyer. Okay. And really, after I became a lawyer, making money, she stayed home so with the kids. So every man that's paying the bills. And taking and providing and caring for his wife, for okay. his family's wife. But you know what? He's paying for it hey, too. Hey. It ain't free. Hey, most Let him women, stop paying them bills. Most women. Let him stop paying the bills. Most women. He won't get no honey if it ain't no money. And, Married and men think, paying for it too. Both of our mothers 
were in a single mother relationship paying their own bills, right? We've got to the point in America where the majority of African American children are growing up in broken homes with just mom. Well, you know what? So my I don't think we can. I don't think we can reduce my women she did to have all a side, prostitutes. My side friend, my grandmama did. Okay, people are allowed to my, have sex. My grandma, Bu- my grandma Beulah had Mr. Jimmy. And I, I mean, Mr. If, Jimmy. if your grandma hey, you wasn't know, getting it, Mr. you Jimmy wouldn't was exist. Married too. Mr. Jimmy was married, too. I saw him with his wife. Why are you, why are you, why are you putting your mom, grandma's business on these streets? Why don't you have any respect for any women? Look, she Warren Sapp. She did it. Okay, why are you still speaking ill of the dead? But have some respect for the woman that raised you. You shouldn't talk about the prostitution you. charge. Yeah, and look, I'm saying, <laughs> I don't want, have a problem with the prostitution. If he want to buy a piece of poo, if you're stomping on your girlfriend's head, if he head, wants to buy, you know, you some of that mocha gold, that you've let done him buy the it. work, then you shouldn't be around kids. He needs to establish his family life. He that bad He's an abuser. Scene one of three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yes. They made you feel that way, bro. I probably do. Oh, man. I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Sometimes joke to him that like our relationship is like that of like a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too, cause he's a good person. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that's hilarious. Charles, when you look at this comedian Mr. Jared Carmichael make these comments about him and his white husband, it saddens me that a brother, obviously, who does not know the truth of his own history and his people's own suffering through the transatlantic slave trade in America, wants to crack a joke about slavery and how he's engaging it with a white man to make a joke. I'm very ashamed that brother would take that position but he put self-hate on absolute public display in one of its worst forms. When you know, Mr. Carmichael, what our people suffered, what our people had to deal with during slavery ain't a damn thing funny, brother. So if you're in love with that white man, well then y'all find something else to talk about. But guess what? He could have still talked about it with his spouse, but don't come out and tell the whole world about this because now you're insulting all of us. He may not be insulting you, Mr. Carmichael, he may not offend you, but, he is, but that's offending all of us. The joke that you're having with your white husband, it's a disgrace. He seems like a head bowing, knee bending, butt kissing, scared to death Negro. That's what he seemed like to me. Okay, so what bothers you more? And I think it's his boyfriend, not his husband, but is it, let's assume for a second it's the husband. What would bother you more? Husband. What would bother you more? Why not? Because two men, because God said Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Okay. 
So what bothers you more? I know you're against interracial marriages. I didn't say that. You said that last no, week. that's not what I said. I said I don't promote it or advocate it, but I am not worthy to tell any man and woman who they cannot love. So why are you worthy of if telling... If it's true love, why are you if a wor- black man dates a white person or a black, black woman dates a white person and it's not lust, but it's true love, I got no problem okay, with so it. Okay, so what if Jared and his boyfriend are truly in love? Excuse me? What, what if what if these two men are truly in love? Man, this man is truly insane. He's truly a buck dancing, scratch his okay. head, laugh with nothing funny, Negro who was pandering I, I think, to a predominantly I white think, audience. I think one of the problems, you don't know what that audience was. You can't see the audience hey, in the clip. None of the coverage mentions the racial makeup me, sir, of the audience. A bunch of black folk ain't going to see some damn gay comedian. How, how do you know? We don't so, even know so, about this guy. So you're saying black how people are How many black bigots? folks know about him? He ain't popular among us. Okay. First of all, maybe not amongst old men like me and you, but the guy's got an HBO special. Obviously, he's successful. Yeah, but white folks watching that, ain't black folks really watching that. Oh, come on. Here's the deal. Look, we've got to stop being so politically correct about comedy. If he got laughs, if it was a joke, if it was made, would it be okay if a white guy made that joke? No. Absolutely not. But you got a black guy. You don't know about his understanding of the transatlantic slave trade. You don't know about his, his had, feelings on if it. If he had a real so, exquisite understanding so and light understanding, you, he wouldn't joke like do that. Do you have a problem with, you know, I don't want to say easy e because I don't want to seem like a grandpa, but do you have a problem with, with rappers rapping about murdering other black men or selling drugs to black men or doing well, violence in the I'm community and the, the culture? Record. I'm on the record Okay. that hip-hop music the poison that's associated and involved deeply in hip hop music, particularly gangster rap, has committed mental, spiritual, and psychological genocide on several generations of young black youth. So I'm on the record about that. And I absolutely disagree. I think it's bad parenting based on, but not just for black people, but white people, Latino people, whatever kind of people, if you haven't raised your kids to recognize fact from fiction. All right, I bang screw. But these rappers I ain't like talking rap about music. fact and fiction too much no more. I, 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 they rap about taking Percocets, getting high on heroin, smoking well, all kinds of illicit drugs. you don't think rock and drugs. roll music talks about drugs yes, and all kinds of craziness? but when you push this to your youth who are already, one, fighting in low-income areas, fighting in high crime areas, fighting in areas where the educational system has totally collapsed and it's not producing the product that it was being paid to produce, when you're living in a community, man, to where opportunities are very limited, not even parks. Some of these parks are even open for these kids. This was brilliant They're getting on addicted Jared's to drugs, part. and the rappers this, are promoting it. This was brilliant on Jared's part because you know what? Me and you are talking about it. TMZ is talking about it. I don't think he's and happy he about looking, this one. He is looking. He is looking. Every comedian. He made his account private no now. No press is bad press. Every comedian. It's probably because he's getting bullied online. Every comedian. Wants the attention. You want to separate yourself from the crowd. Did I think it was funny? No. Let me ask you a question. But I, it's, it's nothing wrong made, with a black person if, that did if or he, even a white person if he that made did. This, if he made this super offensive joke about gay people, would you feel the same way? If it was funny. If he made this super like, offensive joke. Like, I don't think joke, it's funny. That's my only problem with the joke. If, if you're going to make a joke, make it funny. If he made joke about members of the Jewish community in Israel, would you feel the same way? If it was funny. No, but you can't get away with that. Okay, but, but you can get away with disrespecting black folks on the stage all day, every day. What are you talking about? You in but America, you, can't disrespect you can get the gay away community the same way. With, you with can't talking disrespect the, the Jewish to community Israel the same way. And death to America. We just played what that clip on the show. But what comedian is doing it? We got all kind of comedians hating That's on doing Israel. That. All right, no, this is this that. right here is him getting attention. He got attention. My only problem with it Making is it wasn't of funny. Slavery. Hell no, hey, you know funny. what? It, made it was not funny, funny at all. If he made it, I would be. Hey, look, my problem with it is it wasn't funny. Okay, if it was funny, I wouldn't give a damn, and I wouldn't. Be, I mean, I don't give a damn. What, you know what? Well, the only thing acceptable right now in comedy is to make fun of white people. It doesn't get in my feelings. Well, if it's funny, Charles, it's funny. If it's not funny, it's Charles, not funny. I don't give a damn. That's kind make of, fun that, of me for my damn yeah, white cone ass head. Well, Charles, I don't care. But Charles, I don't talk about you for your fake LeBron hair. It's whatever. Charles, let me say this. Now I've warned you before, Bigfoot. I do have big feet, and you know why? 
Lord, I warned you the Lord God keeps the feet in relation to the other parts. You, you got like them the little size sixes I've got on. One of the best barbers in America hey, who makes sure that I'm hey, so beautiful. I don't know how he glues public. that fade on but there, I will but it looks say good, Quanell. Because you looking like ball Thunderdome don't mean I'm gonna look like that. It is hey. I got other options. You know what? I, I'll take I got other options because I bring the thunder with the big feet. You talking about when little Mister Size when you take Six Baby? Baby size. Did you Quantel. take this sweet brother Quantel. with you. Quantel, where you, you, you wear toddler shoes still. How, how small them feet? How small them little Look size at that. nines Look on? At that. No little nine. bitty. Little Not bitty. No nine. Little bitty no size nine. nine. You want to see a foot? And y'all girls know what come with that 14. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come You're on. white guy. You know what? So if you wear, if you wear a 14, Michael, you 7 it's inches. It's all a joke. If you wear a 14, you, 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 you 7 inches. You ain't getting what, If you, you're a black you, man wearing a 10 or 11, man, you you're wear 14 8 or 15. Or 9 in little baby no. feet. That is still could be a 13 inches. Jared, it make funny jokes, but you can't speak to his knowledge of slavery, his Yo, life yes, experience. This nigga should just because y'all share a skin color. This silly brother should be ashamed of himself. You are just looking for a reason to get offended. You know, I don't want to come across as someone that doesn't think Warren Sapp is deserving of a second chance. I was a huge fan of Sapp, especially at the time of the Buccaneers. I think he is a tremendous athlete. And until that arrest for domestic violence, I always struck me as this incredibly affable man with a great personality. And if he's done the work, if he's gotten the counseling, if he's done batterers prevention therapy, if he's done these things, then, then hallelujah. Thank God this wealthy man has taken the time to participate working with college athletes. But what the, what the problem is, is that Colorado isn't addressing it head on. And that's my issue. With, with Stephanie Mueller, the trans attorney from Seattle with the big hard nipples and the big, her outfit was ridiculous. But if she is doing a good job advocating for indigent people that are being uh, prosecuted by the state, many of them oppressed, right? Hey, kudos to her. And the same thing goes with Jared Carmichael. Just tell fun of your jokes, young man. No one is questioning Ms. Mueller's ability to practice law. In fact, it appears though she may very, be, may very well be a good public defender. And being a public defender is not an easy job. We're talking about her physical presentation in the courthouse and in the courtroom. That is not proper decorum. In fact, other women who work so hard to let women have the right to express themselves in a field that's predominated by men for so many generations, that's not what they fought so hard for, to have a man transition to a female and look like that and present himself like that. He was disrespecting women, in my opinion. Warren Sapp, Bill brother, let me advise you if I can, out of all due respect and out of love, out of love, brother, Make sure that you do as much as you possibly can to attend any groups supporting women's rights and domestic violence against women that'll help you in the future. You'll be more accepted. That's it for the face off on Fox Soul. We'll catch you next time. Okay, real talk now. When you're a mom, every day is a new adventure that comes with a new challenge. You know what I'm talking about, that last minute Halloween costume or that science project your son told you about on Sunday, let's do on Monday. As moms, we are constantly problem solving to make life better for our children and less stressful for us, right? But what if you could turn that problem solving gift into profits? They say necessity is the mother of invention, but today we're talking to some mothers who say, it was their children who made it necessary for them to become inventors. And now, get this, momtrepreneurs. We're talking about how they did it today on Porsche. Hello and welcome to the show. It's no secret to be a mom, you have to be resourceful. It just comes with the job description, right? I mean, if I had a dollar for everything I have improvised for my sons, I'd be retired on the seashells by now, but I'm not. My first guest, though, is well on her way. She is a mother who says resourcefulness and just a little preteen funk compelled her to invent a product in her own kitchen. Please welcome Ify Oko to the show. Hello. Hello. It is great to have you. Thank you for having me. This, I want to get to the product, but I want to start just with your journey here because there was some ingenuity in the making years before 
we had the preteen funk issue. Let's talk about your journey from West Africa in Nigeria to here in the U.S., because I think that's a pretty interesting story as well. Absolutely. I like to call myself um, a Southern girl with a foreign accent. Um, I was born in California, um, but I was raised in West Africa, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so on my journey, um, we lived there for a while. Mm -hmm. And when I turned 18, I wanted to come to America. Mm -hmm. You know, I had seen all the glitz and glamour of America on TV, and mm -hmm. I was like, I, I want to come. Go, absolutely. I go back. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, but um, your father was like, uh, uh, not so much, right? He's like, not so fast. Mm -hmm. So if you are familiar with any typical Nigerian home, mm -hmm. your first degree is actually considered your, you know, having a bachelor's degree is your first degree. Mm -hmm. And so my dad wanted me to actually have my first degree in Nigeria before I came over to the States. Mm -hmm. But then I looked around, I'm like, I'm an American. Why am I here? I want to go to the land of opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. there was just, there was a calling, you know, I didn't even know and what it was. And you answered the calling, but it was some crafty steps you took. I mean, you got right. your own passport and you got here on your own to go to college, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I did was I watched my mom in which she kept my passport. Mm -hmm. And so I pulled my passport and I borrowed some money from um, where she kept it mm -hmm. and bought my flight ticket. I see what you did that you borrowed some money from where <laughs> your mom borrowed. kept. You took something from the stash. Yes. I get it. Yes. All right. So then and fast forward, you are here and yes. always, and, and your dad's okay with it now. Yes, And mom's is. all right with yes. you taking it from the stash. Absolutely. Because you have done very well. Yes. I want to talk about um, the issues then that then came up with your daughter. And your Absolutely. daughter's cool with you talking about these issues, right? There was yes. just, there was a, an odor that you were trying to address. Explain. Right. So when my daughter turned six, you know, she started to have this funky odor. Mm -hmm. And I would just put in some powder and sometimes just mix in some baking soda with it. You mm -hmm. know, what our grandmas used to use. Right, exactly. And so I did that with her, but it just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And so one day we were coming back from a volleyball game and, um, man, my car was lit, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know. It smelled like cheese and, and, and some socks combined together. There's a lot going on. We needed to do something about it. Mm -hmm. But at the time I didn't want to, you know, use, uh, the traditional deodorant on her. What was because, your concern? Well, my concern was at that point in time, I was actually trying to tr transition to, um, more natural, natural products and mm -hmm. natural foods. Okay. And so I didn't want to put, you know, some of those chemicals that I didn't even know what they were or what they did. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of some concerns, carcinogenic chemicals and all that mm -hmm. on her. So what did and, you do? You kept, you stayed in the kitchen and kept and came up with a potion that actually worked, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I knew I needed to do something. I knew I needed to, you know, create something for her, which I did. Mm -hmm. um, it worked for her. I started using it. I gave it to her cousins. And Tried it out on the family. Family. Absolutely. And everybody said, okay, we like this. That's right. So then how did you go from this? And your daughter was pleased, right? Yes. So yes. how did you go from something that worked in the kitchen to is now working on the shelves? Absolutely. And so one of on our rides back from, um, I think the grocery store or so, and we were just talking about it, you know, and how we had done this thing and wow, you know what, you know, you no longer have this body odor mm -hmm. and I'm using it. And my daughter, and that's one of the things I preach is that we should pay attention to our kids, you know, because sometimes they'll give us ideas. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter said to me, mom, why don't we make one, you know? And at the time I was like, I mean, I don't know how to you know, create something commercially. So where did you start? Because I think that's a good uh, lesson for our viewers. Where did you start when you said, okay, let's make a business out of this? Yes. And so it started from my kitchen mm -hmm. um, and we started growing. Mm -hmm. You know, I started selling it. I remember the first day we launched online. Mm -hmm. uh, my first order was actually from England. And I was like, oh, that had to be exciting. We were international before even we started, excuse me. And so um, I made that sale. I thanked them. I actually told them that they were my first customers. Mm -hmm. The next day we got some from California and we just started growing that way. And how did you grow? Did you use social media? Like, how do you get the word out? Because it's not like everyone 
everybody is clamoring for, a, you know, deodorant, right? right? When they're going online looking for something. Right. What did you do to stand out? Because so, you're doing really well now, right? Did I yes. reach 400,000? 400,000 plus. That's yes, awesome. Absolutely. And so hopefully we're looking to make bigger numbers by the end of the year. Right. But was um, it social media? Was it, I mean, word of mouth? How was, did you get the word out? Email marketing. Okay. So for me, it was email marketing. It was word of mouth. It was going to schools and mm -hmm. talking to school counselors um, and just passing out flyers as well. And then it just spiraled, you know, into word of mouth. And so, and here we are. That must be so exciting. The biggest lesson that you've learned in this journey so far the as a businesswoman and a momtrepreneur. <laughs> absolutely. Is go with your gut. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to yourself. Um, when you have a passion and you believe in something, you go for it. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's actually, it, it actually worked mm -hmm. for me. One of many good lessons we're going to learn today. Absolutely. Stand by when we return. Yes. You are going to meet Courtney Smith. Listen to this. She turned a home remedy for her baby's scalp condition into a $2 million in sales. She's going to tell us how she did it. Stay with us. Hey, so you like the show? Then let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok at Porsche TV Show. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official mm -hmm. co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of mm -hmm. fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here being unapologetically me on a platform like this. I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. Welcome back to the table. We are talking to mom entrepreneur Ifi Oko, founder of the Grownish deodorant brand for kids. And joining us now is Courtney Smith, another entrepreneur who happens to be a mom who happened to problem solve her way into some very nice profits as well. Welcome to the show, Courtney. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. So tell us your story. What came, what about mommying turned into a profit and a whole business for you? Very successful one. Right. So my daughter, Christina, um, she was born with sensitive skin issues. Mm -hmm. She had cradle cap and eczema. And by six weeks, we had taken her to dermatologists, doctors. Oh, wow. yeah. I mean, we were trying everything as far as the ointments and nothing was working. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple of items that they did give us that worked. I wasn't comfortable with using them on, mm -hmm. on her because Chemicals she was yes. just age. Yeah. Yes. She was so little. Mm -hmm. Um, so one day I was talking to my husband, very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, you know, what are we going to do? How, how am I going to solve this? And he said, why don't you just make her something? 
Mm. He was like, why don't you just come up with something for her? Mm -hmm. And it was like a light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. Because this was my background. I'm a licensed esthetician. Right, uh -huh. right. So you know how to make some potions, yes. but because it's your baby, you're thinking, oh, I need to be careful. I want it to be just right. Yes. And I was really looking to the doctors to right. help me solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So, but I got in the kitchen. That's what I was going to say. Or if you were seeing <laughs> you in the kitchen, like it be yes. working your way through some potions. Tell yes. us more. Yes. Yeah, so I, um, I, I immediately went back to my background. Mm -hmm. um, started researching all the essential oils and creams and things that would help um, with eczema and mm -hmm. cradle cap. And I started trying them on her. And this was during COVID. So everyone was home and on mm. social media. So I would post before and after pictures. Uh, and other moms, I didn't even realize it was this big of an issue, but other moms would message me and DM me asking me, hey, can you make something for my baby? Oh, uh, yeah. And I think, too, because for folks who don't know, cradle caps, common with little babies, especially black and brown babies, and the yes. skin just gets really flaky, and it doesn't necessarily hurt, or sometimes it's itching, but it's right. just this layer after layer that you just can't seem to keep combing away, right? Yes. So that's what made moms go, how did you do that? Yes. And can you send me some? Yes, yeah. and that's exactly what it what happened. Um, so I started making, that, making it, and you know, sending it to whoever was ordering it. Mm -hmm. And our product ended up going viral on TikTok. Did you even have like the official business set up at that point? Or I were you just not. like, let me just put this in a bottle and ship what's your address? I'm going to send it to That's you. That's exactly how I was doing it. Cash apping, they were cash right, their right. payments. So no, it was not. So at what point did you realize, okay, we need to go ahead and, and LLC this and, and do some things and make this official? Well, when I realized that it was a need for it, yeah. you know, when I realized that it, there were other mothers out there that were struggling with the same issue that I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, if, if I can be a blessing to them and I can help them overcome this issue, I'm going to take it serious. Right. You know, so. and I want to point out now, this was COVID. So we're talking 2020 and here you are now, is it? Two million dollars? Yes. So in we sales? just reached three years, October 29th, and we're over two million in sales. Congratulations. Yes. That's um, to both right. of you, the success yes. that you've That's had funny. just by tapping yes. into the ingenuity. And you both sort of had it in your system. But let's talk about what it takes when you decide we're really going to have to take this to uh, the next level. For women who are watching, moms who are watching, who had some great ideas, but they're like, I really just don't know where to start. So my advice would be to find something you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and something you're good at mm -hmm. because then it won't feel like work because it's going to take time. It's going to take time away from your family. It's going to take time away from um, your nine to five if you do have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So make sure it's something you truly enjoy doing. Right. And Absolutely. Ify, for you, we talked about right. this a little bit before the break, but where else do you start in terms of even just, you know, getting some more skills and learning the business side of this, right? Because so many times Sometimes you may have an idea, but the business side, having the accountant, the assistant, right. the, the, the attorney, contracts, where right. did you go? So lots of research. You know, you, you kind of have to go back to being a student. You know, you have to learn. You have to network. You have to, you know, get yourself involved with people who are doing the same thing that you want to do and learn from them. So mentorship. Um, one of the things she said that I actually agree with is, you know, just starting out, you, you um, understand that people, their moms who share the same issues, mm -hmm. you know, and problems that you're going through. And so, you know, um, not only do you start with, you know, something that you love, but I think, you know, there are problems all around us, right. you know, and um, if you pay attention, you know, you'll be able to pick that up. Mm -hmm. and if it's something that you love, you know, and, and you enjoy doing, and you solve that problem. Yeah, cool. you know, and, in a minute that we have yes. left right here, <laughs> a problem that you have that made you go, Ugh, I am really stuck. And how you solved it? Let's see, because it's a couple of problems. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most recent the one. The most recent one would be marketing. Mm -hmm. Because, right. like I said, my thing was formulation. That's right. what I enjoy doing, you know, making the products, coming up with different formulas. So when it was time to really get serious about marketing yeah. and reaching, you know, more people, I was like, how do, how I, do I do this? this? Yeah. yeah. This what do you mean? Area. I've got to spend more time on social yes. media. Yes. yes. Understood. Understood. Yes. All right. Yes. Good advice. And we've got more advice coming up from both of you ladies. I love it. Up next, our mom entrepreneurs answer some questions from 
from viewers like you. Give us more tips on how to turn ingenuity into entrepreneurship. Stay with us. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Hello, and thank you for coming back to the table. We are talking to Ifi Oko and Courtney Smith, two brilliant mothers who are thriving after they invented and marketed products that were actually inspired by the needs of their children. Now, their stories are so incredible. We wanted to open up the floor to a couple of our viewers who had some really good questions for the ladies. Our first question is from Tatiana. Let's take a look. Hey, hey, Portia, my name is Tatiana, and I have a question for Ivy. I'm a busy working mom, and I've come up with several time-saving ideas. How do I take my ideas and get them in front of the right people? Absolutely. I would say start with the SBA. Um, you know, small business, a, small business association. That's mm -hmm. a good place to start. There are lots of resources, free resources before you start spending money. Mm -hmm. And it all depends also on the idea that she's trying to get into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So do some research, network, but I would say start with the S SBA. SBA. All right, Courtney, we've got a question for you as oh, well. Okay. Second question comes from a viewer named Shurika. Let's watch. Hi, Portia. My name is Sharika Donaldson, and I'm a mom of three. This question is for Courtney. I'm a full-time mom, and I'm looking to get into the entrepreneurial space. How can I develop my product as well as spend time with my family? Mm, it's that balance, right? Yeah, yeah, and you that. still have a, a three-year-old. The little one that you started working on is three. So yes. you've got a lot more me time that she requires, I right? I do, and it, balancing is work. It is work, yeah. but I would tell her to make a plan, to make a plan to set her goals and put deadlines by them so that you're mm. holding yourself accountable for it. Yeah. But the biggest thing is to write it down so that you can see where you want to go. Right, right. Yeah. That makes sense. I know um, you guys have talked and we have a, a few different ways to do it. One of the things you say, if you too, is just deciding what is meaningful to you, right? What does, right. what's that look like? I mean, what really setting the priorities, right? Which is what we right. have to do as moms all the time. Yes. Absolutely. But from a business standpoint, it's even more critical sometimes Absolutely. as you launch, right? That's right. So you have to decide, you know, what's meaningful so that you don't go around doing things that you don't care for anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a really good there I like go. this idea of transforming yeah. delay into action. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, 
don't waste time. Um, if you find something that you want to do, like the lady just said, you know, go ahead and do it, you know, um, but understand that it is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. You know, um, entrepreneurship is you take your time. You're a mom, you know, and um, just enjoy the journey. Right. And progress in spite of obligation. Again, getting back to those pro those priorities and how you're Ooh. going to shift. Absolutely. Yeah. I can tell you both yes. deep sign on that one. <laughs> yes. Because we're moms and we've got lots of obligations and you know people who we love and people who love us who depend on us mm -hmm. but at the same time you know despite what we have to do and that's why we first have to choose what's meaningful so that you know we can narrow our focus and have the time to do what we want to do right yeah. and the last point was a permission that is it's not required I love how it was your husband who sort of sparked this idea right but when it was all said and done you had to recognize Okay, I'm just going to have to get some ingredients and start right here. I don't need right. anybody else. I've tried the doctors, right. and that was working to an extent. But how much of this is just believing in yourself? Well, like I th once he brought it to my attention, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I can do this. And this is what moms do. We figure it out. Right. You know, when it's not working, we pivot. We figure out right. a solution. Yeah. So that's what I did. Well, you both did a marvelous yes. job. And I have to believe that there are some women out there, some moms and, and dads out there. Right. But we know the daddies are in there putting in the yes, work as well, right. <laughs> yes. who must be inspired just by seeing what started in the kitchen, because that's happened so many times. Yes. That's right to something that has turned into just to incredible success for both of you. Absolutely. I thank you both for sharing your stories. Thank you so Amazing. Thank you for having can you quickly tell folks where they can find you on um, IG or online? Well, I'm Christina's Curls underscore on IG, um, as well as Christina's Curls on TikTok and Christina's Curls on Facebook. I bet Christina's Curls are marvelous right about now. <laughs> and you would be. Absolutely. You can find me at um, grownishdo.com, um, www.grownishdo.com, or you can go on Instagram and find us grownishdo.co. Great. Excellent job, ladies. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. All right. We'll be right back. Hey there, Portia here. Listen, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for tuning in for your daily dose of positivity here on Portia. Thank you so much. We are really excited to have you here at the table. Well, as you saw today, nothing beats the ingenuity of a mother. And I want to thank Ifioko and Courtney Smith for sharing their inspiring stories. And before we go, I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts about the show. Viewer Mandy J was really touched by the resilience episode with author Tyran Jackson, who lost his beautiful wife and a part of his leg in a horrific boating accident. She said, I'm in awe of how Tyran turned his pain into a message and blessings for others. And Bakari Jumbar said, your mental strength and faith are astonishing. You're a miracle, brother. And Josh Domingo said, Tyran is one of my all-time favorites. You missed that conversation? Go check it out on PortiaShow.com and be the reason why someone smiles today. <laughs> The Brook star catcher Roy Campanella. Aimed what do you call a man whose dedication and perseverance inspired millions of Americans? Easy. You call him Campy, a tough as nails big league catcher who loved life and the game of baseball. His desire to play ball, that was his mission. The journey for Roy Campanella, the sixth black player to wear a major league uniform, began right here in Philly, and Campy was always proud of his roots. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. And going to an integrated school, I think that helped me more than anything else. Born in 1921 to a white father, John, an Italian immigrant, and a black woman, Ida, a hardworking mother. The racial divisions that happen outside didn't exist in the home. 
The Campanellas were an unprecedented mixed-race household in the 1920s and 30s. They lived in Nicetown, Tioga, on Kerbaugh Street. A plaque honoring Campanella stands at Simon Gratz High today. But when he attended this school, kids teased Campy. They called him a half-breed. I don't think my uncle really knew color that way. He lived it, he could explain it, but he could work around it. By 1937, a 15-year-old Roy Campanella dropped out of high school and was a professional baseball player, getting paid to play the game he loved and sending his paychecks back home to his family. We're so proud that Campy's story is such a prevalent part of this story of the Negro Leagues mm. as a great example mm. of what happened when an opportunity presented itself. Baseball in the Negro Leagues was the easy part, but being denied a hotel or a meal by the same people who cheered Campy on the field, that was the hard part. The baseball field was really their sanctuary. It, it really lied in the challenges that they faced getting from point A to point B. You know, not knowing where you can stop and get something to eat or have a place to stay. Campanella never stopped working at his craft behind the plate and never stopped dreaming of playing in the major leagues. His family says his hometown Phillies denied him on several occasions because he was black. But in 1946, the phone rang. It was Branch Rickey of the Brooklyn Dodgers. History was about to be made. When Jackie was coming up and my uncle, there was a, a toss up between who was going to be first. And Jackie was chosen. He had a college degree. So they kind of leaned towards Jackie, knowing that he would probably be the better fit for number one. Jackie Robinson made his iconic Dodger debut in 1947, Campy the following year in 48, and the boys of summer were born. Jackie Robinson was uh, the first adult that asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. You know, and uh, I was about four or five years old, so he gave me something to think about. As a Brooklyn Dodger, Campy was the MVP in 1951, 1953, and an MVP and World Series champ in 1955. Comparisons between Jackie Robinson and Roy Campanella always came up. Stories were written that Jackie and Campy didn't get along. Not true, says the Campanella family. They just had different approaches to dealing with racism. He was a civil rights activist. You know, my dad was uh, was with him all the way in terms of the purpose of civil rights, but he wasn't really an activist. He was through and through a, a, an athlete. He was a quintessential athlete. So was Jackie, but my dad was devoted to baseball. Campanella was also one of the first athlete entrepreneurs, opening a liquor store in Harlem during his playing days. But in January 1958, Campanella's career came to an abrupt and tragic ending. Driving home on a wintry night, his car skidded on ice, hit a telephone pole, and flipped over, trapping Campanella inside the car. He would never walk again. Suddenly, to be a quadriplegic, you know, overnight, that was, that was a very traumatic thing, both for me to go through and for my brother and sister. Despite the accident, Campanella never complained about his condition, even continued coaching, and with his wife, Roxy, worked to help other paralysis survivors. Roy Campanella, the kid from Nicetown, was elected into the Hall of Fame in 1969 and passed away in 1993. But as the saying goes, heroes are born, but legends never die. Shoots his shot at Coy LeRae doing Instagram Live, but did he score? And Keisha Cole changed her mind and found out again, found love again, actually. But is it giving Dre a Michelle? And later, we're dishing with WNBA player Haley Jones. But first, Jesse, whoa, 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 what you got? Well, <laughs> Bianca Sensory got heads turning for all the wrong reasons oh, yet Lord. again, as she and Kanye West enjoyed a date at the happiest place on earth. 
Disneyland. Aww. So TMZ captured the couple walking around the theme park Aww. and they raised some eyebrows thanks to Bianca's skimpy nude latex mini dress and she decided to ditch her shoes for the day because homegirl was walking around barefoot. If there's a place, Disneyland is the place for bare feet. Yeah. Absolutely wow. not. Yeah, wow. Exactly. We was just at the Disneyland. People that, the people that ain't, they had to walk somewhere before okay. they got to Disneyland, so all the mm -hmm. stuff that's on their feet is now at Disneyland. Come on. Disneyland. They got Disneyland dirty. And she walking on it. Some people are just hippies, though, and they're always trying to be grounded with the earth, and they walk around without shoes. Do you think at that he's Disneyland? asking her? Do you think he's asking her, or do you think she's just like this? It, no, she this might just be like this. If if it was only her barefoot and not Kanye, and I know they did their barefoot thing in like France or mm -hmm. something like that, or Italy, but like that's not a place I would want to walk barefoot. Right. But you know, eh, to each his own. Like she probably got the rough Fred Flintstone feet. Yeah. I don't know if I want that rubber against my do ankles in bed. Do like to show itty bitties? Do, itty -bitties. do they show? Yeah, yeah. They, do they show their? Do, is Ooh, that something those are they far do? from itty bitties. Those, yeah. those, those, those are. <laughs> Those nice and biggies? Why would you do that at Disney World? Why would she get out kids. of her Huey and Louie? Um, a kid place. Because you know people go and talk about it. At it, a kid's yeah. place? That's so disrespectful to the if kids. If I was a kid, I'd be happy. Well, moving on. Coy LeRae blasted former world champion boxer Adrian Broner after he attempted to shoot his shot at her. Mm. And it looks like another love TKO. <laughs> uh, he recently jumped in the comment section of IG Live and wrote, I'm on your body. Oh. Be in my next fight in Miami May 31st. It's the hard rock on me. Ew. Well, Coy clapped back with this brutal response. Said we had to clean up a little bit for TV. You hear this with it? Mm -hmm. Trying to bag me on an IG Live is crazy. Like. Get the hell on, okay? I'm not interested. Like, that's corny. Mm. Now fans felt Koi reacted too harshly, and she replied back saying she wasn't trying to be harsh, and she hopes he wins his fight. So it's that. She didn't act harsh. She just responded, let him know, you ain't gonna talk to me any kind of way on no IG. Come to me like a damn man, and I, I'm a woman. Yeah. Well, it wasn't it, just what he said, though. It was like, I'm on that body. Like, I don't know that that's a good not opening that. line. And it's not just that. So I'm on IG Live. You come in the comments, be at my fight. Sir, flew me out. Where is the <laughs> reservation? Like, no. you know, this dude has taken a lot of shots to the say, head. He gets <laughs> hit in the head professionally. At her, he gets hit in the head professionally. That don't mean nothing, honey. But you need to go get you some therapy and then come talk to fight. me. Oh. Yeah, Treat come on like now. a black woman. No, <laughs> has, anybody, has anybody tried to bag y'all on IG like that? Like, be, I'm on your body? It happens, yeah. Yeah. Damn, yeah. Head, like, head crack, somebody be saying but that? But I, would, I wouldn't blow their spot and be like, yo, get the out of here. Right. Yeah. Crumb, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. just like, hey, you know, maybe this is the only way you'll ever get a chance to talk to me in real time. Right. No, he can so fly to her it. show. It's so many things he can do. I beg to yeah. differ with you. There's so many things he can do. If he all on her IG Live like that, he can pick any one of the places nah. she's going to be. As much money he, he, can, got, he could DM no. her in a different way oh, and say, I'm on your body privately. He's, he's not like, the master of tech. He's doing attacked. something to be noticed Seen. and publicly. It, it, yeah. It's the game. It's game. He was like, come to my event. What he should have been like is, hey, when's the next time I can see you live? Ooh, that's Can I fly like, you out so I can see you yeah. at my fight? But then you'll leave that up to, the, like, you know, interpretation. When's the next time I can see you live? Oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about live. pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, Keisha Cole has a new man, and she confirmed her relationship with Atlanta rapper Huncho via X a few uh, days ago, tagging his name with the caption, Man. <laughs> and she was also spotted walking hand in hand in ATL with her new boo earlier this month and had fans talking, honey, because get this, Huncho is 24 and Miss Keisha is 42. Ooh. What y'all thinking? One thing about Keisha Cole, she always gonna support the youth. Yeah. 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 Can we be honest, though? Yeah, be can, can we be honest? I And I love Keisha Cole. But she doesn't make the best decision when it comes to men, though. Like, look at what happened with my baby daddy. She was 37, the baby daddy was 23. Yeah. Now we Well, I don't here. remember what happened. They just not together no more. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, it became a mess. It was like a mess all over socials. Oh, no. So I just hope this doesn't happen with him. He's a rapper. Like, Keisha Cole don't like, like bank man. a rapper? Hold on. Wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, Why? he's a male rapper. Yeah. You, you bet. <laughs> He is a male but rapper. Why, why does that stereotype him? All male rappers are not the same. But why, I don't, but why don't these girls be like in bank tellers? Y'all don't like... It ain't what is she married Because she likes somebody with swag. Right. She might she want him to spit to some lyrics player, to her, right? Yeah, first off, a bank yeah. teller could have some swag. It's not about the age. It's not about what he does. At it's 23, 22, nobody's got their whole life figured out. And well, maybe she, she dates these young out. people who don't got it together on purpose because when the relationship goes bad, the music be fire. Remember that one time she was married and happy and y'all hated her? <laughs> Yo, man, being a celebrity is tough, man. <laughs>
screaming. We need drama. <laughs> all right, y'all. We all know Chrissy Teigen is the queen of clapbacks, huh. and it looks like she's at it again. An IG troll accused Chrissy of having kids as a way of trying to stay relevant. That's dumb. And of course she wasn't about to let that go. Good. She replied, yes, very bored and need attention. And there's no other way in the world to get it other than having a kid. I agree yeah. with them. What? She having kids for attention. I mean, yeah. she ain't been doing nothing lately. What have she done lately? She been having those kids. Okay, then she that's what I'm talking about. Motherhood. Yeah. Being a mom. John She's Legend a mom. out there. Look, John look like he's sick of her. Performing the miracle of life. <laughs> she does she also like has a mother. very good show on Hulu where she uh, eats at different restaurants with friends. It's actually Oh, really wow, she's that's a taster. Sure. Okay, that's... <laughs> Yo, having that many kids is the byproduct of your husband really liking you and his reflex is getting slower. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, that don't mean he likes you, happy. honey. Yeah. It don't take long to have a baby, honey, I'll get pregnant, just an <laughs> insert, and that's it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> never, never, you it's going to take mind. multiple, never like, mind. you know, no. like in and out like the it's burger. It's usually not just, first off, what's your research tell you about it? About what? Nothing, never. Mind. Inserting. Just a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honey, it's time for. What the fashion? That's right, baby. And it seems, y'all, that Crocs join forces with Pringles, honey, to give us a pair of boots with a holster to hold a can of chips. <laughs> And, honey, <laughs> if you're wondering who would wear this, me. I'll tell you who, baby. Evan Ross and his lovely wife, Miss Ashley Simpson. Uh-uh. Oh. That's like final stage boss fat Ew. level stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Not Loose chips and shoes. I would not want the oh, ground it's dirt. It's a whole boot. Oh, it looks yeah. like a little cup holder. Like, yeah. you could also put, a like, a can of a, a soda yeah. in there. But they cute, though. You shake the soda up before That's you true. drink yeah. it. Yeah. No. And then, you got, and then you got the ground dirt air hitting your soda or your oh, chip. A, what's that, a beeper? Put behind it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's where like your ankle goes, though. Maybe a wallet. You could use it for a wallet. No. Or you could put your flour in there. Mm. How much I money mean, is this? Paid them. Yeah. They good for diabetics. I mean, you can have <laughs> shit to eat. Honey, yeah, and hungry. you can put you can put your old Zimpic in there. Yeah. Oh, now, you know, and with Evan wearing it, I wonder what Miss Ross thinks. She probably say, "Lord, my child and lost his mind." Well, she probably likes it. She could put her blood pre pressure medicine or whatever medicine she taking. Put it. Yeah, Miss Ross wouldn't be seen with those, honey. Some Pringles chips. Everybody, <laughs> everybody got blood pressure when they seventy and up. Oh, Miss Ross doesn't have high blood pressure. Let's be clear. <laughs> Okay, now you can talk about all the mother girls. She can, put a, she can put a drink in there. <laughs> if she eats those Pringles, she might. Uh, all right, coming up. <laughs> if Emma Roberts gives you a gift, make sure you hold on to it. We'll tell you why after the break. <laughs> I do like some Pringles, though. D -D -Dish Nation. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. <laughs> TGIF. To be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never just wanting to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. And we're back. Hey. Hey. 
Okay, Architectural Digest walked through Emma Roberts' home, and when they got to her book collection, she pointed out a specific book she took back from an ex. Ooh. Check this out. This is a book I actually gave as a gift to my ex, but then when we broke up, I saw how much it was worth, and I kept it. Period. <laughs> Wow. Period. Okay, mm -hmm. after doing some research, the book she took back was Charles Portis's 1966 classic Norwood. Now, we don't know how much Emma's copy is worth. Other websites list the book for at least $3,300. Wow. That's what's up. Period. Okay. What the book made out of? <laughs> I don't know. But 3300 yeah, Probably was yeah. like a first edition or something. It had to be, yeah. Petty yeah. was petty. Was petty. petty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have y'all ever taken something back from my ex? No, if I got it for them, they can have it. I don't want it no more. It wasn't for me. I used to buy my friend $25 shoes, honey. I didn't want those. $25 shoes? You dog. You couldn't fit them no way. They want your size, I'm sure. Shout out, what you say, Shout out to Payless. No, Men's shoes go. be $25? At the outlet, honey. You not have to wear Gucci, honey, and walk out my life in them. Here these $25 ones, honey. <laughs> All right, y'all, moving on. It's time for... Well, y'all, first up, we have Stevie J. He posted this video with the caption, Happy Wednesday, no BBL. No Ooh. BBL? Oh, I think that's Shaden Drake. <laughs> right. Yo, he's Shaden Drake, because remember, Rick Ross accused Jacob getting a BBL. Oh. He's calling him BBL Drake. No, don't start nothing. Don't no, start no, 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 I didn't start that. Ross and his and his lemon pepper wings said that. I ain't Ross say that. Yeah. Could you date a guy who had chest BBLs? Like he had fake muscles? At this point. <laughs> <laughs> you got a first note. At this point, guys. Oh, Jesse. <laughs> oh. All right, y'all. Moving on to somebody who doesn't have a BBL, allegedly. It's a special one, y'all, because it's a man who sits on this stage with oh. me each and every day oh, and hides Lord. all of this under his clothing. I do. Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Tanner posted this picture with the caption. Uh, Gary, uh, uh, can you channel Tanner's voice and do us the honors? Uh, yeah, use your Tanner voice. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I put in the work and I'm proud of it. Eight plus hours a week. BJJ, CrossFit lifts, cardio, reduce alcohol intake, increase protein intake. <laughs> New character unlocked. Yeah. I ain't never heard that voice come that out again. That was really good. <laughs> At first, I didn't know. You gotta be careful. You can't post jack crap on Instagram without Oh, you should have saw this coming. Yeah. Now, Tanner, I should have known better. He wanted to put a real picture up because his headshot the other day was a little oh. too polished. Why do we have to come back around He to wanted that? a real shot of how he looks today, so he wanted to give you some, yeah, this I was could, up. Yeah, yeah. So, Tanner, what's yeah. BJJ? Because, I mean, it sounds fun, like... Brazilian junk juice? Uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Oh. Yeah, oh. that's what he does every morning. Yeah. That extra J was so clutch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah jiu-jitsu is very important. <laughs> I thought it was so booty Tana, juice juice. Yeah. Booty it. juice juice? <laughs> <laughs> juice juice? <laughs> You're so stupid, So, Tana, yeah. that's yeah. the view that the girlies get from that angle? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, he proud. Uh, <laughs> so, who won the battle, y'all? Tanner, of Tanner course. Tanner for the win. Tanner, oh, Tanner for the win. Oh, All right, y'all, coming up, oh, WNBA gosh. star Haley Jones is in the building. Find out what she thinks about her sports family getting the recognition it deserves, plus much more after the break. Oh, yes. all right. Do you shave? All right, no, the I just don't grow it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official <laughs> co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. <laughs> TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> when I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home. Build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Love. Our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world.
My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Nation. Welcome back! Hey. All right, it's time for us to be on our best behavior because we have company. Now, let's give a warm Dish Nation welcome to Athletes Unlimited and WNBA star of the Atlanta Dream, Haley Jones! Hey. All right, yo, Haley, you ready for some one-on-five? I'm ready. Let's get it, man. <laughs> Fun time. Let's go. Okay, Haley, uh, your skills on the court garnered some major attention last season, and now you're being called a key player for the Atlanta Dream. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel to be 22 years old and living the dream? I mean, it's great. I'm loving life in the ATO right now from the Bay, so it's a bit of a switch up, but okay. I don't know about star player quite yet. I'm still making my way, but mm -hmm. I'm excited for you, too. Very okay, nice. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the WNBA draft just went down a couple days ago, and, you know, we got Andrew Reese and Camila Cardoso going to the Chicago Sky, and Caitlin Clark is going to the Indiana Fever. What is your advice for ladies entering their first season of the WNBA? Yeah, I mean, entering the Ws, it's a big change, just like from high school to college, but I think it's like you're this huge All-American, you're a National Player of the Year, all these different things. You get to the W, everybody's been there, done that. Now you're dealing with Olympians, you're dealing with All-Stars. It's just a different caliber. And so I think for them, like, they have the talent. They're going to be here for a reason, but it's just understanding what makes you great and sticking with that. Okay. Nice. So speaking of the new players, it's been reported Caitlin Clark is going to be making $338,000 over a period of four years. Ice Cube offered her $5 million to come play for the big three. Would you have taken that $5 million? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's hard. $5 million, that, that's hefty. Mm -hmm. But I think um, for us, like, the W has always been the dream. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't want to give up the dream just for that amount of money. And right. I think also Caitlin's doing well for herself. NIL, yeah. everything's going to carry over. And I think she just kind of adding that WNBA base salary onto it. So I'm excited for her. I'm glad she chose the W. I think most of us would have chosen the W, yeah. but that, that was a big deal for him to put out there. Yeah. So you're saying she didn't want to work with the big three? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to speak for Kaylin. She but... did not say that, Gary. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, said the say W that. is the dream. That's exactly. what she said. Exactly. Well, Haley, we still speaking don't like of, you. Well, Haley, speaking of the draft, honey, Tanner here, now he's looking to get drafted into a relationship. Oh, yes, honey. Know. So do you have any teammates that you could hook him up with? Is well, I mean, yourself? I mean, Tanner, what's your type? Talk to me. Let me know. I, I like I like athletic women <laughs> who have great free throws okay. and, uh, and go hard in the paint. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, wow, wow, yeah. you know, that's not what you said last night. Come on, Jesse. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's, <laughs> you know, he's good personalities. Good. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Okay, well, I mean, I got a lot of ladies for you. Um, I don't know. I feel like the W is full of beautiful women. You saw yeah. a lot of beautiful women in the draft last night on Monday. They so. all tall, though, Tanner. Yeah. See, bro, I am trying to breed up. Okay, like, oh. you got to think about your future. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about future generations okay. here. He can wear heels. Heels. Reach okay. up to the top shelf. He can wear heels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We can get you a step stool. You'll be just fine. Oh, You'll make listen, I will step stool. <laughs> I'll get you some names. I'll, I'll jetpack you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's the little thing you do, do it again? That's the jetpack. That's when, like, the person, they're the tall person and you're the jetpack. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Haley, you are the host of the podcast, Sometimes I Hoop. So why don't you go ahead and do this tease for us? Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> well, everybody stay right here because we have more with me, WNBA star Haley Jones, right after the break. Yay! Yay! That's the Dish Nation. Scene one of three, yeah. take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to. Get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. They hug you? Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too.
This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back! Hey. Okay, Haley, we're gonna play a game of dribble or slam dunk, all right? So uh, we're gonna ask you your opinion on a couple topics. You can either dribble around it. This is how dribbling looks, right? Yeah, you can either dribble fun. around it if you think it's a little too messy or slam dunk it if you wanna give a response. Okay. All right, well, here's the first one. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal admitted to throwing his Olympic gold medal out of the car back in 1996 because the coach didn't play him until the end of the game. I mean, I think I've got a slam dunk. Honestly, I heard it was dropped here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and so I feel like it's already been pawned. Somebody's using it as something oh, yeah. like a grill, a chain, something. <laughs> I would have kept it. I would not be throwing my Olympic medal out the window. If okay. it was like his free throws back then, it didn't go far. <laughs> right, right. Well, Haley, I noticed you have a lot of gold on right now. You got them gold earrings. Did you pawn the award? No, 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 no. no. That's on me. You're too young. You're too young. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Too yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how about this one? Toronto Raptors' Jonte Porter was just banned from the league after an investigation reveal. He disclosed confidential information to bettors and bet on his own NBA games. I think I got another slam dunk. Yeah. I just think, like, last year, our orientation, half of the time we talked about not betting. To be a professional athlete, part of it is doing it for the love of the game. So, like, exactly. I'm not going to sit out of games just to let bettors know the insight. So, right. yeah, like, being banned, forever is, yeah. wow, like yeah. that's a lot. But I do think that there, there needs to be some repercussions there. Yeah. I didn't realize he was so good looking and dumb. <laughs> God. Yeah. He looks like a variant of Drake. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's from Canada. He yeah. is in Canada. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 yeah, he look like Drake's cousin. They, he, yeah. They're in Toronto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brizzy break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, make sure you catch Haley lighting up the basketball court this upcoming season, because that is all the dish we got for you today. And we will see you next time. Can we get a swish? Thank you. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Thank you. It went in. <laughs> <laughs> To get to know Rodney McLeod. I heard there's a red carpet out, so. Just look at a 24 hour period last December. He suffers a season ending knee injury that could send any pro athlete into a deep depression. And you can see him grab for that knee. Hours later, he's on two feet, fulfilling a commitment, paying people's tabs as part of his foundation's 12 days of Christmas giveaway. It was very moving for me, uh, and it, it made me realize that. I didn't actually have it as bad as I thought. An overpaid, selfish crybaby pro athlete? Hey! Yeah, that's not Rodney. Football's only part of his story. Serving Philadelphia's underserved is his other passion. We're changing the narrative and how you think about an athlete, and I think that's what I love most about it. And what you can do when you're gifted uh, this platform, or a platform, utilize it and maximize it to its fullest. He and his wife, Erica, are a power couple. 
They don't have children of their own yet, but they have a baby. It's their organization, Change Our Future. For us, Change Our Future, the change in the future starts from the youth. We knew that there was a need and that there were opportunities that we were afforded that other children in other neighborhoods don't have. The idea behind Change Our Future is to give kids an equal playing field, no pun intended, to tear down barriers that prevent black and brown kids from a quality education, proper health care, and getting civically involved, creating a path toward a healthy and hopeful future. There are many people who have a voice, but it's never being heard. And for us, you know, having the platform that we have, it's our opportunity to give light and shed light on these issues. The pandemic inspired the McLeods to take their mission to those who need it most, donating food as a thank you to frontline workers and joining Phil Abundance to donate thousands of meals to the hungry. We do this, you know, out of the kindness of our heart, understanding that it, it takes more than one person to change this world and change a community. So I feel as though we're just one of many are out here who are concerned, who want to see this world um, in a better space. Then in June, as Philadelphia and the nation reached a boiling point after the murder of George Floyd, McLeod was unafraid to speak up against police brutality and systemic racism, marching in the streets amongst thousands of others. The city needed us the most during that time, and, and we know how big you know, the Eagles are and, and how loud our voice can uh, reflect. So I wanted to make sure that we were uh, understood and, and, and everybody knew, you know, what our intentions were. In November, Rodney and Erica boarded a big bus, encouraging people to use their voice and show up at the polls. That was an amazing day for us all. We changed the way that people thought about voting, uh, but also we wanted to recognize uh, that community who uh, kind of uh, goes without a voice a lot of the time. When we talk about legacy and you talk about Black History Month, hoping that, you know, 20 years from now, people can recognize what we did that, that day and, and, and um, recognize everyone who was a part of it. Did we mention his cancer fundraiser, Rise Up for Research, or their Game Changers initiative that aims to introduce black history into school curriculum? My man Rodney McLeod. There's enough on McLeod's man, plate you to make your head spin. And let us not forget, Rodney's still a pro football player trying to come back from a torn ACL. Playing football in the NFL is hard enough, so how do you have the time and energy to do all this other stuff? For me, it was just what I was taught as a kid, and, and I think a lot of it had to do with the church. You know, being a Christian, understanding how, you know, Jesus was a servant. I want to be that guy that you look at and say, okay, that's Rodney McLeod, he's awesome on the field, but he's so much more than that, because it's about legacy. Fly Eagles fly, fly McLeods fly. Thanks for all you do in this community and, and keep up the great work. Hey y'all, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea we have for you tonight. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hello, Ra uh, hello, Al. What's going on, Claudia? I was going to say your full name, Alfred. I don't even know if that's your real what? full that name. That is not my name. Alfred. <laughs> no, Al just Al. Alfred. Just Al. 
No. <laughs> and please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on? How y'all feeling tonight? Very good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm actually great. I'm actually drinking tonight. So hopefully hey. you got your drink. What's in that cup? This is a street drink, though. You know, very bar. It's just, it's it's uh tequila and pineapple. Clearly, oh. I've been I've been sipping it before the show. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay, okay. Al, are you drinking? Of course. I'm drinking my buttery Chardonnay right here with a little bit of ice cubes because I like my wine cold. Okay. Well, I know I, I said earlier I would be drinking, but I went to lunch with my girl Annie at Fred Siegel, and they did not have the drink that I like, and I've been mm. running nonstop. So I'm just going to act like I've been drinking tonight. How about that? <laughs> All right. Let's get into these topics so we can drink these in. All right. We have an update regarding the Wendy Williams and Kevin Hunter legal battle. We reported the story about Kevin demanding two years of back divorce payments from Wendy. However, Wendy's lawyers fired back saying that Wendy Williams overpaid Kevin more than $112,000 and they are demanding that he return it. Do you think this is a tactic to paint Kevin as greedy? And if Wendy owes him, why would the lawyers demand that he return the funds? What do you think about this, Armand? Um, this is interesting. I just, I honestly, I don't know really what to think about this because they're saying that, you know, he was only supposed to get paid up until Wendy wasn't getting the same amount of salary that she was receiving on the show. And I guess that ended in 2022. So he had ended up paying, she had ended up paying him like over $37,000 a month for three months. So he was actually getting more money than the initial agreement had discussed. So at this point, he should pay the money back. I don't think that this is a ploy to make him greedy, but because he is being greedy, honestly. Like, I personally feel like he is being greedy. And I feel like if the agreement was set to be, listen, if Wendy's making this amount of money, then that's what you're going to get paid. Once that amount stops or it falls below that amount, you don't get paid anymore. So at the end of the day, he should just he should have saved his money and moved on. Ramon Rosado said, wow, that's a lot of money. And Bettina Lester said he don't have it. Al, what do you think? Um, I think that this is weird. And I think this is a play to quiet him because lawyers, why is the lawyer requesting for the money to be returned? Why isn't the lawyer going to the courts and saying you need to throw out his case for more money because it, she has overpaid? This is the proof of her overpayment. And if that is in case, in, in indeed the fact the, everybody knows, especially in the state of New York, in the state of New Jersey, and a, and a couple of other states, if you overpay, you can then subtract that from the money that you are owed. So if he feels like he's owed $150,000 and she overpaid one hundred and ten, the courts will subtract the one twelve or the one ten and one twelve from what he thinks he's owed and can prove that he's owed. So I don't understand why the lawyers quote the lawyers. Mm. are asking for him to return the money to them. That just doesn't make sense. It seems like they're trying to silence him because he's making it very public that he thinks he's owed more money. E. Chiffon said Wendy, said Wendy shouldn't pay him ish. Unique Jacob said, any other time you're overpaid like that, the state or a job, then you have to pay it back. Uh, Vanessa Hearn said, does anyone around Wendy care about Wendy? And M-Town Boy Foyer said, Wendy also said she had a plan. Guess this is the plan to cut him off. Mm. Oh, this is a sad story. All right, moving on. Soulmates, get into this trifling story. A mother discovered that her 10-year-old son has been having an inappropriate relationship with an adult daycare employee. Grace Sholoyo revealed that the employee's picture was her son's screensaver, mm. and she found inappropriate pictures and text messages between the two on his phone. Uh, the daycare has since fired her. Now, do you think the employee will be charged and is a daycare liable at all, Al? Thoughts? I mean, absolutely. Oh, absolutely across the board. This is sick. This is pedophilia at its finest. I mean, he's 10 years old, for goodness sake. And I, I, you, this, this just pissed me off. This whole story just kind of pissed me off because you don't mess with people's kids. Come on, y'all, especially when they entrust you to take care of their kids and you are now physically abusing them and she needs to be worried about the constitution of that state as it relates to the laws of rape because if this is constituted as rape she could find herself doing a lot of time and to be honest she deserves everything she got coming to her when you start messing with little boys or little girls because if this was a man that was texting and having an inappropriate relationship with a little girl we would be all in uproar. 
We need to exercise the same type of uproar in this case. She needs to be underneath the jail for this type of behavior. What is it? It seems like every couple of days we're doing a story about a teacher and a kid and 10 years old. Armand, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree 100% with Al, and I just think that it's sick. And if what's even more sick about the situation is she almost was trying to act like the little boy's mommy. So you were trying to come in almost like a friend or like a mother figure, but then you're like sending him sexually suggested photos of you and then buying him a chain. It was just really, really weird. And I think that, you know, we need to hold these women more accountable for these types of things. Like, this is not cute. This is not okay. Because, again, like the mother even stated, she's upset because this woman hasn't even been charged. The best thing that's happened to her is she's just been fired. But there's been no real charges brought against her. And if this was a man, this man would have been underneath the jailhouse. This woman should not be able to get away with this because this is predatory behavior amongst a little boy. So it's not okay, and it's disgusting. I know there's a shortage in teachers. I know it's difficult to get these positions filled, especially with how they underpay them so badly. But are we just like, what, what is the screening process now? Like, how is all these people just getting in here that have these weird feelings towards kids? It's, it seems like we're reporting on these stories weekly, at least once or twice a week. And it's more and more common. And now we're seeing a lot of Black women that I, I never really saw much of that before. And this is, we got to do better with this, the screening process here. Um, also, she was rubbing his leg inappropriately on a field trip. So there was definitely some physical touching there and it just absolutely disgusting. You better be lucky that mom didn't take it into her own hands and kill her because that's what some people would have done. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you can't be playing with people's kids like that. You right. know, people will spaz out over their children. So she I did like the fact lucky. that the mother was very articulate. She looks mm -hmm. like she's definitely going to get her justice. And she's <laughs> yeah. going to get it. She's going to get it from that young lady if she can. She's going to get it from that daycare if she can. She's going to get it from wherever. That, that woman looks like she is definitely focused for justice. And I, I'm going to follow this story just so, just for that. Jesus Girl Behavior said, I saw one of the pics she sent that 10-year-old. I would go to jail with a smile on my face if that was my kid. Wow. And uh, Jay Callwood 25 said, if this was my child, there would be no need for a trial. I'm taking care of her myself. <laughs> and and oh, Chrissy H., I like this. People need to protect and teach their sons just as vigorously as they protect their daughters. True. All right, moving on. Our friend, Rolling Ray, hey, Ray, recently spoke on the relationship between JT and Lil Uzi Vert. He tweeted to JT, you're the man in the relationship. I mean, the top. My bad. I mean, the more dominant one. Damn, I mean, the man of the house. What are your thoughts on his comments? And do you think he would roll up on Lil Uzi Vert with the same energy in person if he saw him? Armand, what do you think? I just feel like, you know, let Roland Ray roll and roll. You know, it's okay. I mean, at this point, you know, we know Roland Ray is a rolling troll. And that is just a part of his social media persona. You don't get offended by people with Roland Ray. And little Uzi, JT, slapping Roland Ray, kicking him out of his wheelchair. You don't get any cool points for that. So Roland Ray understands that he's handicapped and he can kind of get away with things that the average person couldn't. So for that, I would let it like roll off of my back and not even acknowledge it at this point. Now, as far as JT and Uzi, they have a very eccentric relationship. Um, I do feel like Uzi does play into his feminine side, but there's something about him that Jay-Z does like. And I do feel like behind closed doors, outside of his persona, he does give her that man that she's looking for. All right, Al, what do you think? I'm sorry, I'm not being an ableist. I'm not, I'm not also exercising ableism, but somebody needs to check Roland Ray. I mean, I understand that some people may interpret it as like harmless or what's the big deal. First of all, don't disrespect that man like that. <laughs> like, don't don't make this sexual connotation as if he's a homosexual or he's gay, and then you're gonna back backpedal and all that stuff. I don't care. I, that's just inappropriate. Somebody one day is really gonna check Roland Ray because he talks a lot of junk. And I'm not saying I'm gonna be the one, but somebody <laughs> eventually is going to check Roland Ray for that mouth. M Town Boy for you said Roland Ray is a hot rolling mess, and Joseph Savage said he spoke some truths. I'm sure there's some pegging on some levels going on. But let me ask you this, Al. What can you possibly do to check a wheelchair bound man in a wig? I don't, I don't know. You know I'm what I'm saying? saying? Like, what do you like? Look at see, Roland Ray. 
I think he may come across the wrong female and she going to read him to the ground and embarrass him like, you know, a good read would do. I think, you know, he. I, I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is you can't just give a person like that a pass and say, oh, because you are disabled, you can talk crap. No, that's not how this works. I, I, I just don't feel like that, that that's how this works. If you're going to bring the heat, expect the heat back and don't hide behind the, the disability, in my opinion. I just feel like and, and especially when it's intentional and it's trolling. So you you really coming out your mouth knowing that you are hiding behind that physical disability and hoping mm. that no one comes back at, for you. I that just I don't like that. Jolene Sockley said, but why? Why should you get away with things because you're in a wheelchair? And Riel said, I agree, Al, with all the root ish. Someone should tip that damn cart over. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, or, think, or, or if you don't want to be too, you know, park in his handicap spot. I don't, <laughs> I'll be petty like that. Or I would find somebody else who's like physically disabled to park in his handicap spot. You know, I don't even think it's just um, people that are handicapped. I just think everyone talks so much trash now. Like people are just extremely reckless. That's the culture now. People just say whatever. It's very, when very disrespectful times. And when I was coming up as a teenager, I remember people used to fight. They would go approach people and they would be like, oh, I heard you was talking trash. What was what's good? And they would confront people. And sometimes they would argue. Sometimes they would fight. But they would get confronted. I feel like now people are very safe and comfortable in the comfort of their homes, on their phones, talking trash, coming for people they would never have the same energy for in person. So it's like acceptable now. It's like like it's it's people think it's cute. So, eh. All right. Coming up next, you don't you won't believe what Tony Braxton was misdiagnosed with. Not again. And later, find out why a former police officer is behind bars. We'll be back. Scene one of three, yeah. take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'll probably do. I love you. I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, how do you get arrested while on strict house arrest? Let's ask NBA young boy who was just arrested in Utah. He was charged with unlawful activity, procuring or attempting to procure drugs, identity theft, forgery, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person. All right, y'all, that's a lot. I ran out of breath reading all the charges. <laughs> my, when are they going to end? All right, do you think uh, he needs jail time or rehab for the alleged drug addiction? Armand, what do you think? At first, I'm just like, how stupid could you be? You know what I mean? And then, too, I'm wondering, like, how did he, how do you get caught when you're on house arrest? Shouldn't you be at home? Like, 
How do how do the police find these things out? But anyway, I personally feel like jail time is clearly not the answer. Clearly. Um, so I personally feel as though NBA young boy needs extensive rehab. Okay. He needs rehabilitation bad because I fear that he may die because he really be on those drugs heavy. Okay, he's made posts about being on those drugs. It's just really weird. Cryptic messages in the past. And I just feel as though, you know, we lose a lot of our entertainers to their hidden drug addiction. So hopefully he can get it together and stop playing with all these different drugs. Okay, Al, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think he needs both. I mean, clearly he needs rehab. I mean, we have seen him recently with, I think, whatever the oxy, whatever the picture was where he was laying down on the ground and had it beside him. Um, I, I, I really do think that he probably needs both because we can't let him off for the gun charges, right? And once he had the gun charges and was on home arrest, the reason why they put him in Utah was because he said he has a mentor there. It's safer for him. It takes him out of his environment where he can, he can focus on not doing drugs and, and doing safe stuff. But then he went there and intentionally fraudulently pretended to be a doctor, fraudulently hmm. pretended to be the people that the doctor wrote, wrote the prescription to. He did everything that he could to get those mixes of drugs to create that lean. That's criminal. That's criminal, right? So I think, A, before I send him to prison for breaking his house arrest, I would send him to rehab to clean him up, to prepare him to go to prison for breaking, quote, like something like a parole. Uh, Miss Keita Johnson said he's got as many mug shots as kids. Woo child, just a hot mess. And they are calling this a large scale uh, prescription fraud ring. Right. And uh, Lil Lexi said, uh, yes, it's in his eyes. He has always had that look in his eyes. I hope he gets better and recovers. He needs rehab. Yeah. All right. Speaking of what police, do you do? What about his 11 kids, Claudia? What mm. about how, how do you have 11 kids? What, 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 how, <laughs> what about his 11 kids? And are you making these kids while on drugs? Like, I would hope he wouldn't. Like, that's dangerous, you know? Okay. Mm, 11 kids. Wow. Speaking of police, former undercover St. Louis police officer Luther Hall uh, was just awarded over $23 million while undercover at a protest that started uh, over a police officer murdering a black man. Now, Hall was attacked and brutally beaten by three white cops who were his own co-workers and didn't recognize him during the protests. All right, y'all, is it fair that he is rewarded with taxpayer dollars? And will this ever teach these departments a lesson? Al, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's absolutely fair. And I, I'm really excited to even be covering this type of story because we've been saying this for decades. We've been saying it's for decades that these cops, these racist cops, do too much. And they are not only beating us up, but they're setting us up and they're sending us to jail for life for stuff that we shouldn't necessarily be sent to jail in life for. I love the fact that this judge said, listen, the only way we're going to make this police station and this district stop this inherent racism is we're going to take it out of their funds. That $23 million will come out of a fund, right? That, you know, the police and the union and the insurance fund that's taken away from their retirement. So it's not necessarily, you know, all coming out of the taxpayers dollars. It's also coming out of that police officers fund and I mean, you know, their insurance. And I like it. I think finally, finally justice, finally hit them where it hurts. That way, that's the only way that we're going to change these attitudes. And, and they need to investigate all those police officers that were involved in the entire uh, police station. All right, Armand. Give the man his money, deposit his check, okay, all day long. I support it wholeheartedly. And, you know, to me, being a taxpayer, you know, it, it coming out of taxpayer dollars, that doesn't bother me. You know, they take my money for stupider things, for less important things. So, and, and I'm not the type of person that really goes and protests and stands out front on the picket line. So if you can take some of my money from the IRS, go ahead, have at it. That's my way of support. Power to the people. Power also, Angawa, black power. Also, think about it. You're going to spend more money with your tax, taxpayer dollars with a black male in prison yes. for 50 years. Okay? Think about it. Think about the cost of putting him in prison by these dirty cops. Mm. But well, $25 million, when will they learn? It's like they rather just act a fool and and risk these lawsuits because they just get paid off and then life goes on 
right. then adjust the behavior. I think it's just a matter of the recruitment process, the people that they're getting, their biases, the uh, what kind of psychological testing are you doing on these people? These people are just unready all the time to gang up on a black man and beat him up and murder and kill and maim. And we don't see that same energy for the others. I don't. I'm glad he got his check. Keep it going. Keep up the good right. work, dummies, dumb police officers. Um. This is a question that was posed. Do you think the cops are still working with uh, another police department? Do you think the cops are still working within another police department? Yeah, a lot of times they don't even get sent away, yeah. really. They may get, okay, sent away, but they're picked back up. Yes. Yeah. And that's why, you know, the this administration been trying to get the, the whole qualified immunity thing and trying to get it where they don't, they can't just pop up in other right. districts. You mess up in Cleveland, you get to go to Youngstown and re-violate, it's unbelievable. Right. And see, that's the backhanded stuff, because what'll happen is they'll be like, well, we're gonna give this black man $23 million, but we're gonna let them keep their job. No, you fire him, lock them up, and give the black man the $23 million. But sometimes right. they don't wanna give us everything, you know what I mean? So if they'll give us the money, but then this person is allowed to keep their job and their freedom. And that's the part that I don't like. Let a cop, black cop do this and see what happens. Because He's I losing remember, it all. I remember one is in prison right now, and then it was nothing. Like, they, they thought nothing of it. Off to the jailhouse you go, black man. All right, Tony Braxton recently revealed that for the past two years, doctors have misdiagnosed her and told us she had cancer or pre-cancer symptoms. As a result, she terminated her third pregnancy. Take a look. Mm -hmm. And they... <laughs> thought she had a can cancer or a pre-cancer mm -hmm. workup yeah. for like two years. Yeah. And then- Two years. Yeah, a long time. But how could that be in a young woman with pericarditis and all these other symptoms? Like that's the first diagnosis autoimmune would come to yeah, her. It, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Yeah. That is a shame. That is so sad. If Tony Braxton, you know, who has access to the best doctors can be misdiagnosed, what does that mean for the rest of us? Armand, what do you think? This terrifies me because I consider myself a hypochondriac because let me tell you something. If, if I'm coughing too many days, I'm at the doctor, okay? I need a full physical. I need blood work. <laughs> I need it all. That's just in my mental. And I, cause I can't, I just, I don't like being sick and I love going to the doctor cause I need to know what's going on because you just never know what can creep up on you. But at the end of the day, <laughs> no, seriously. But I'd be like, you know, it just, it makes me so nervous because it's like these doctors try to get you in and out and then you're fine. And they don't even want to, and if you have, I'm, I'm not going to say the, doctor, the, the hospital's name, but if you have certain, you know, doctors, they don't even want to do the extensive work to do the testing. You almost have to be on your deathbed for you to get an MRI, for you to get this, for them to actually look at you and do the work. So, you know, these doctors are getting lazy right now and they're just over there collecting checks and it's really, really dangerous. So this is scary because it's happening all too often. Right. Al, what do you think? I'm thinking I'm, I, it's, it's, I'm just bugging out because the, the female doctor said, how? How could this be? You want to know how it could be, lady? Because 7.4 million Americans are misdiagnosed annually. And of that 7.4 million Americans, 30% of them are from women and men of racial uh, backgrounds that like Black African Americans and Hispanics. That's how it can be because you guys clearly misdiagnose us and don't listen to us. And you do it for you know a number of different reasons. I did. I read this study when I was researching this that one in four hospital patients who died or were transferred to intensive care was because of a diagnostic error. Do you want to know how many of the one in four percentage wise were African American? That's what blows my mind. More than 40% of the one in four. Wow. So what is that telling you? You either not taking us serious when we present, you think or you don't value us in our bodies. So you, you, you don't care to run the test that you hear the problem being. Either way, it's bad and it needs to change. Well, you know, uh, racism is not just in the police department. Mm. Right. It's not just in the legal department, it's in medical. Uh, mm -hmm. Firefighters, we covered stories about people, you know, the fire, the, there was a, oh, I'm sorry, there was a video online where a, a, 
a white man that was up in age said, you know, he feels bad that back in the day I may have let some black families burn. So I would think the medical field, it'd be no different. And no there's different, just a right? lack of caring. They're just like, mm, you'll be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. drink, drink some ginger ale and take an aspirin. They don't really dig deeper because they don't really have a regard for our lives. And it's not, again, if, if they can shoot 12 year old kids in cold blood out in the streets, those same type of attitudes are not just in the police department. And that's what's really sad. And black women, especially like in this first world country, okay? We're not a third world country. Black women are continuing to die and during childbirth at an alarming rate. Like it's just happening all the time. And I'm sick of it. Uh, Malia Salam said they do that because they don't want to follow results. Anything they test you, they must follow up with. They should. Mm. Sleepy ZZZ said the doctors are overworked and the hospitals press them to see as many patients as possible. Mm. And Ramos family said this is just like the lady the other day that still had to pay for chemo she never needed because she never had cancer. And last and one, Holly, Holly Larry, Barry. Larry uh, Speak says, uh, truth, there's a bigger conversation about black people dealing with healthcare professionals. Racism is present in healthcare and terminating her pregnancy and so D'Angelo she had to terminate her pregnancy. This is ridiculous. She should sue everyone, especially being of an older age like that. And you get pregnant and uh, I don't know. That, that is that scares me. Coming up next, find out why a former police officer is behind bars. And later we discuss what we would do in sticky situations. We'll be back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You gonna get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. All right, welcome back to the show. I don't know what's going on, but uh, okay. Former police officer Marcus Johnson is in custody for stalking and murdering his ex-boyfriend, Carlos Collins, after their breakup. 25-year-old Carlos's family alleges that he sought police help and obtained a restraining order against Marcus, but it wasn't taken seriously. What are your thoughts on this, and have you ever experienced rejection that turned dangerous? Armand, you ever been in this position? Uh, well, no, I've never been in this situation, but, um, you know, I've seen stories like this in the past, and this is just really, really sad because, you know, in our community, in the LGBTQ community, there's so much do domestic violence that happens and get, goes unseen and untalked about, and this is just unfortunate because it gets really, really crazy out there, and it, and it just goes to show that no one is safe. The fact that this man was a police officer stalking his boyfriend, didn't understand no, the restraining orders didn't help, and he ended up in cold blood. Mind you, the whole thing was, too, 
he had already kind of been letting everyone know that he was going to do it by his posts that he would post in his stories. Like you could kind of already tell that he was a little off kilter in the first place, but no one really paid attention to it. Um, and I just think a lot of times when you have two men together, a lot of people feel like, you know, y'all can just fight it out as men. Y'all will figure it out. And they don't realize that it's just as dangerous being in a domestic relationship, um, domestic violence relationship as it is it, it, being in a straight one you know, for gay people. So I just think we need to pay more attention and really open up the conversation because I know a lot of times in my family, you know, sometimes we know you're gay, but we just won't talk about it. We know you got a boyfriend, but just don't talk about it. But maybe, just maybe, I need to be able to talk to you about my my love life so you know if I'm safe or in danger. So I would just, I would just caution people to be more open about, you know, having those conversations with your same-sex loving family members. Okay, Al, what do you think? I mean, first of all, I want to send the condolences to the young man's family that was that lost his life. I mean, I can only imagine what that family's going through. I think, you know, the statistics are rising, and you're right, Armand, it's definitely rising in the same-sex community, but 70% of all murder-suicides involve intimate partners, and, it, and it's getting worse. And I, I just feel like, what do we do? What do we do as a community? What do we do as a culture, right, to correct this? Because it's not going down, it's going up. And I, I had, and you know, especially after COVID, everyone is just so like, it, when it comes to conflict resolution, their, their resolve is to kill people, to chop them up. We talk about it on this show, and I just feel like we got to do better. We just got to do better. I don't know what the answer is, but I know that we can't keep going in the pace that we're going right now. You know, um, I, I don't know much about the statistics in the, the LBG2 community. LGBTQ plus community, but um, I say it's a problem, period. Um, mm -hmm. I had an experience years ago in LA with a ex-boyfriend that, that didn't want to let go. And he came into my apartment, threw my cats around, and he threw me into a table, glass table. I still have a scar on my knee from it, punched holes in my wall. He destroyed my apartment, right? And then I called the police and they came and they saw the disaster. I was in a fetal position when they got there. I was tore up and um, he called the house while the police was there and they spoke to him. Um, no detective ever checked up on me. And when I followed up with them, I said, why did anyone not take this seriously? And they said that, well, you're dark, so your bruises weren't that severe to us. And they also were like, wink, wink, really, they almost have to kill you for it to be really taken seriously. So you can get a restraining order and there's a record of it. But like they want to see, it's like not sexy enough, I guess, or not intri interesting enough. It's not a big enough deal for them when you just say someone's stalking me, someone's harassing. What state? Me. What state were you? California. In? It was California, wow. and it was after the OJ thing. And I'm like, you would think after that trial of a century that you would be taking these things seriously when people are crying out for help. And mm. um, yeah, like uh, they saw all the damage, and they said my bruises weren't dark enough because my skin was brown. And I said, well, the way bruises work, the neck, they get even worse the next day. And I just wondered how many other people that had kids that were in worse, far worse positions than I was in felt really helpless, you know, that um, they're crying out for help and they just not, they don't take them seriously. Like they really are not moved unless it's like broken bones, blood everywhere, death. And it's usually when it's too late now that you want to activate. And that's what this young man has, you know, made it a point to say, I, I need help. And nothing gets done. They again. I, they need to work on these laws. Uh, Paige said threw Shelly around. Oh no, no, it wasn't Shelly. It was some older cats. Uh, Carolyn Jones said, Claudia, did you press charges? I tried to press charges. Um, he went and said that I attacked him and lied. And then he sent us to mediation. It was my word against his. It made it so hard. And then he was also intimidating me. Is so, this somebody that we might know? No, he was a struggling actor. It was back in 1998. It was a long time ago. Um, he was a good looking guy, but I found out he was on steroids and he had this rage thing about him. And he was very jealous. And after I broke up with them, um, Jesus Girl Behavior said mental health, especially with certain demographics, is just mm. lacking. People are losing their minds. And I do think that's sad to not take it seriously if it's just between two men. Like, why would you think that one man can't murder another man or hurt, seriously harm? But and, let me ask uh, this. On the flip side, though, do you feel as though, like, maybe the justice system has got to a point where they're like, you know, we get so many of these calls and there's obviously been abuse, but then you either have, you know, the man in the same-sex relationship or you have the woman saying, you know, nothing happened. We're fine. 
you know, and it's just a fake call, you know, because maybe the neighbor called, you know, and the police knock on the door. And, you know, too many times people will be like, well, I'm not going to snitch. So I don't want nothing to happen. So we'll just lie. So these things are not being taken as serious anymore because how many people, you know, we know they lie when the police get to the door. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that serious. You could have a whole black eye and you'll lie to the police. Yeah, and but, but you know what? That's also a symptom. That's also uh, the behavior of the abuse, right? To cover for your abuser. Mm -hmm. And I just think they, they got to recognize those things. Like, you can't just let that go. I think, I, I don't know what the answer is. Obviously, I don't. It's too big of a, a problem for me to solve. I don't know what the answer <laughs> is, you know? I never went back, but there's people that do. There's people mm -hmm. that are more desperate. There's people that need that person financially or mm. whatever, you know? And they don't really have the means to get away. And then they may end up dead like this person. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's mm -hmm. awful. Um, okay. Rumors are swirling around Ryan Garcia's mental state after his intense face-off with Devin Haney ahead of their boxing match. Ryan posted a clip of Devin shoving him during the face-off and wrote, Devin touched me without my consent. I'm suing him for putting my, his hands on me, and I identify as a woman, so he touched me as a grown man and hit a grown woman. And I'm LBGTQ+, so now it's a hate crime. Do you think people are right to be concerned about Ryan's mental health? Al, what do you think about this? Uh, yeah, and I think, he, I, I feel like he's trolling. Obviously, throwing all of that in there is trolling to me. It gives me Karen vibes. Like now, you 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 throwing in that you're a hate crime. You're throwing in that he touched me. Karen's know when to say when a black man put her hands on Oh, he touched me. I was, um, I was intimidated. I felt threatened. They know those all he put on all the buzzwords. I, I this type of stuff, he does need a mental check. They need to send an officer out not to take uh not to take a case, not to, you know, file a police report, but to do a health check on him. Absolutely. I agree. Okay. Armand, what do you think? Listen, I don't know much about Ryan Garcia, so I don't really know about the mental capacity, but I 100% agree with you, Al, and I like that you said that because to me this felt like, okay, I know everything to say, you know, to get the people going. He touched me. I'm LGBTQ. I identify as a woman. You know, all the buzzwords that get people going. You know what I mean? You got the Me Too, Karen. You got the gays involved. You got the I'm a woman involved. You know, so those are all things that trigger people into feeling some type of way. And those Karens know how to get corporate Karen on you and get you out the way, you know? And so I think that's kind of what that was. It was a play on, you know what? Let me just say all the things that, you know, get people in trouble. Right. So that's and I, I understand that, you know, you talk trash talking is a huge part of promoting a boxing match because I don't even know who these people are. So to get interest, we got to say he's LBGTQ. He's got to mm -hmm. identify as a woman. Mm -hmm. But y'all being in the community and me being a woman, are you, I'm sick of it. I'm like, can you use something else? Like, can you use something else? It's like, I don't know, uh, appropriating appropriating <laughs> y'all's and my culture and identities for attention. Do something else. I think it's corny as hell for him to do this. I really do. And yeah, you're giving very much weirdo. Brielle said he needs to take notes from Floyd. He's trying to sell tickets. And M-Town Boy for you said, is people going through real things and Garcia is crying, Karen, go sit down, sir and ma'am. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. <laughs> and Lady T C says he might be suffering from CTE and Comfort Asante said he's trying to promote the fight, y'all. Yeah, yeah, but, but you I do know, you do know that Karen behavior doesn't represent any of us up here because we're no. black. The Karen, the, the the woman is the white woman is actually the Karen, and the LGBTQ, we're not really LGBTQ. That umbrella really doesn't protect us. Those are for the white gays. That's really what the LGBTQ whole thing is. And that's why I always get, you know, upset when, you know, black people be like, oh, you know, you gays, you guys, you say something against the gays, they're all gonna be mad. No, that's for the white gays. That's for the white trans. Just like if somebody comes against women, that's not for black women. You guys aren't covered under that. That's for white women. So we're still black at the end of the day, gay yeah, we, or women. So we are constantly reminded of that. <laughs> yes. All right. Jada Wade clapped back at critics who questioned her no makeup look. Jada was spotted tracking, taking a picture of with the fan rocking a bare face. Someone wrote, this why bad bleeps shouldn't take pics with straight men, because why would you th <coughs> not throw a little filter on my bleep? Jada was not here for the backhanded compliment. She responded, I'm not letting no acne or hyperpigmentation stop me from taking pics and being outside fully natural. 
Do you think the world of social media and filters is turning people away from natural beauty, Al? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the like button and the follow button is doing mm -hmm. the same thing, too. I love the fact that this young lady, you know, is not afraid to be outside without makeup. Look how beautiful she is. Look how beautiful she is and look at her hair. I'm really rotating into a space now where when I'm hanging out, I am finding myself more attracted to the, what I call the raw dog look, like the no filter, the face natural without a whole bunch of makeup without or none at all, and the hair being natural. I'm here for it. I love it. And you're beautiful, sweetheart, with or without makeup. She's pretty. I'm like, what, what are these people right. saying? Like, what's wrong with it? The average person sitting behind their computer is trolling look like crap, okay? I'm just going to say it right now. And they, the audacity they have to, like, she looks pretty. Armand, what do you think? Yeah, I thought this was stupid because I feel like, you know, majority of the people following her look like that. So that should be relatability. Like, we all have a natural look. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we all have a regular off of work, out and about, running errands. Like, at the end of the day, I think that's also part of being the celebrity, like being the star. Like, okay, this is, I'm out running errands. I'm not on a show right now. But, you know, you kind of well, got on, me. Hold on, hold on, hold on now. Hold on now. What? What? Come on, I, I look. I look like this. I woke up like this now. I, I look <laughs> on, like you, this on a regular now. But you know, Speak but for hey, yourself. <laughs> no, but remember, you had that day where you had to blacken up the spot <laughs> yeah. right here. You know what I mean? They was the one who put the line up right there. Beijing, was, baby. You, now you you got it blackened up and stuff. <laughs> we all fall short sometimes. But I'm just saying, it all makes us human though, right? And so right. when you can see a person with 7 million followers and all that influence and all that money, and then you run into them on the street or you see a picture and you're like, oh, she got the blemish that I have. It makes you feel more confident, <laughs> right? Because we all are people with flaws at the end of the day. Right. And I like to see the flaws in us all because... You know, we can, we, a lot of us battle with body dysmorphia. And when I can see my favorite people dealing with the same thing, I'm like, okay, we're all the same people here. So I'm more confident in, you know, stepping out into my life. So shout out to her for that. The Photoshop and the filters have raised the bar so high where it's such an unrealistic expectation right. of people. Like you're, you're supposed to see like an airbrush image in person. And it's just not realistic for most people. All right. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, we discuss what we would do in sticky situations. And later, have you ever made an, assum an assumption that you regret, oh my God, yes. We'll be right back, stay tuned, stick around. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. All right, welcome back to the show. Soulmates, have you ever thought about how you would handle yourselves if you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation well, we'd like for you to chime in on the fun. 
and hashtag WWYD, what would you do? All right, y'all, Atlanta residents pulled up to the IRS office demanding answers about why their tax refunds are so delayed. Take a look. Time to tough. What would you do in this situation if you desperately needed your refund, Armand? Child, I'll be honest with you. That used to be me. That would be me. Okay. But I, I actually now I'm on the opposite side where I literally wait to the last day because I don't get no money. I always have to owe. So I'd be like, take your time, IRS. Take your time because I always owe. So I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what? I literally just filed my taxes last week because I knew I wouldn't get my money. So, mm -hmm. but if that was me, I would be over there beating them doors down and sitting on that phone for two hours and calling back and pissed off because they're not answering going straight to voicemail, going to dial tone, sitting on the phone for hours. For and sure. when you and you when you really don't want to pay, you file an extension so you have until October. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need some more time. <laughs> yeah. I hate tax season. Same. But you know what? When you were broke, you love tax season. <laughs> Did. Right? Al, what do you think about this? Uh I, what would I do? I would not go to the IRS office. <laughs> <laughs> the last agency that you want to upset is the IRS on so many levels. A, they will delay your check. They'll continue to hold your check. They will audit you. They'll go back through, you know, to make sure that what you said and who you said you are, you are. I think the last people that I would piss off would be the IRS. So I, I wouldn't go down to the IRS office. Sorry. I would use every other means. I would, you know, call the office. They have this new hotline now specifically for finding out where your check status is. I would call that. I would go back to the preparer that did it for you. If you did it for yourself, I, I just would not bring that type of noise to the IRS office because they can make your life H E L bad. H E L L. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if we could spell it or say it. Oh, I'm right, because you can't I'm spell. I'm just saying clear. Right, I'm just saying right. clear. That was a good one, Al. <laughs> you can't spell it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I just didn't want to be in violation. I'm always, right. doing, I'm always okay. doing something crazy here. Um, we'll let you have it. They probably felt like there was safety and numbers going on there with a lot of them. You know what I mean? Like, they can't get all of us. But, uh, you know, the IRS, I will say this. You give them a call if you can get through the long whole line. They will mm. work with you. I've definitely been in positions where I had to, like, have a conversation with them. But I get it. I mean, a lot of people, like, for a lot of people in America, the reality is once a year at this time is when they finally have a little bit of extra money to do something. So right. I get the frustration. Mm. You know, a lot of people are living like this. My mom, we, we grew up living, like, when income tax comes, then we can get the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I get that. Like, people are, like, really looking forward to it. So I get the frustration. But, um, wow, they sure don't um be late when it's time to collect the money from you, do they? Absolutely you know not. That? They Absolutely find a way to be like, you not. And, and be, be short on something, 72 cents. <laughs> they still want their money, and they're going to tax right. you and interest, put interest on that thing until they get their money back. Or they'll just take it out your account. Free, freeze your account and then I they had have that. taken like, money out of my account before they just went in there and taking it out i had my whole life frozen i said wait, 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 what happened what what happened I a, but you know what i did i didn't realize they froze my accounts i called them and i said hey I, this will put me in financial devastation and they unreleased it they did and i just had to make a payment plan with them and they were actually willing to work and yeah. trust me, y'all, you can make payment plans that are ridiculously low. You can hit them with the, mm. all I can afford is $50 a month. And, you know, eventually you'll get that $72,000. It's going to take you like 42 years, but you're going to get it. I'll pay it every month. So you guys know one of my 150 jobs I used to do taxes. That's what I say, Claudia, always. <laughs> if, I know it's scary because I know when I think taxes, I get extremely nervous and scared. And I do taxes. But all you have to do is communicate and document that you communicated, send them a letter, send them an email, send them a letter or anything to communicate to show that you had good faith and they will be forced to work with you. You'd be surprised because I've been there, done that. And yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yes, we good now, though. All right. Video footage caught the exact moment. A woman caused a terrible car wreck. Watch this clip. Wow. 
oh my God. If someone break checked you like this, what would you do? Our mom would. I'm pissed because clearly this is a scam, girl. You trying to get a new car? You trying to get a come up? And you trying to act like you you mad? You trying to you committed to the whole lot, the whole show? Now it's my fault, girl. You got in front of me and stopped that car like that because you wanted me to hit you because you know the burden could have been on me because you have to have a certain amount of distance. Even if someone break checks you, you know, we can split the fault. So at that point, I feel like, girl, I'm pissed off because you're trying to fraud me through insurance. Yeah, it's messed up that, like, they have it where pretty much if you hit someone from the back, it's almost it's your always fault. your fault. Yeah, because uh, yeah, people are getting very creative with this scam themselves. Al, what, 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 what do you think about this? Okay, I already told you guys, I'm not very good behind the wheel. My rage is really bad. I would have drugged her a couple, I would have drugged that car <laughs> a couple of feet. I promise you, I would have just kept going. I would have drugged her a little while. And then I would have stopped up the road and said, oh my God, did I hit somebody? I, 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 I have no time for these type of games. I don't even have time for people who break too much. I don't, I don't have time for people that go below the speed limit. All of it drives me to a frenzy that just is not healthy. So she wouldn't want to try that with me. You don't she need no car in LA. She would have been plopped. I would have hit her. She would have probably fell over in that. And I would have drugged that car. Right down. Yeah, I see why you don't drive out here. Because, baby, you will be over it in LA. Oh, my gosh. LA people drive me nuts. <laughs> I'm, out, oh. I'm out here today. It's like 40 minutes going five miles. I do not miss yes. this, y'all. Y'all yeah. can have this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. Road rage in Texas, it's been... You know, it's such a huge state and so spread open. There's so many freeways. It's been really good to be able to just, like, drive at a good, normal speed and be able to, like, be in wide open freeway. It's not as bad there. We, I mean, we do have our times because a lot of people are moving there, but it's been good to be able to, like, not really have a lot of these, like, little things like that. Uh, Jay Call with 25 said she did that on purpose. See, people really be wanting to get beat up. Tanya Christopher said she crossed a solid white line. That girl should be held responsible. And Malik Taylor said a lot of people be doing this BS. And this is a good idea. S. Rain said, I need to get a dash cam. Mm. Oh, Not a bad idea. Is. All right, y'all. Uh, coming up, have you ever regretted an assumption? Keep it locked to find out what we've assumed wrongfully. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Sorry. Welcome That's back cool. to TGF. Armand, I'm so glad that, you know, <laughs> like the eyes, you know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> I see you clearly straight right on. The over. hills have eyes and they, they go straight. <laughs> <laughs> no looking off camera. <laughs> I'm missing the joke. Ah. 
<laughs> Who are we talking about? Can you I'm see me? <laughs> can you? <laughs> I'm looking straight at you. <laughs> no side eye. <laughs> Don't cross me. No shades. Okay, come on. Go <laughs> you know what we're talking about. All right, check out this tweet. It says, what is something that strangers often incorrectly assume about you? Fellas, some assumption that people have about you? Al, let's go with you first. Um, probably that I'm buttoned up and conservative as heck. Mm. Okay. Armand? I think people's misconception of me is that, you know, because they see me online, they just think I'm just this messy, loud, obnoxious, flamboyant gay man because of what they see online. And then when you see me, I'm really a vibe. How is that wrong? Because it's not who I am. Off, they just assume that I'm just. Because here's the thing, people. People the don't know me. is real. No, because people, no. See, now, I now, see I, you. No, I do have her. No, I have her buttoned up. If you try me, okay. But if you're my friend and you just meet me on a cool out, you've hung out with me. You know I'm not like you know. There's Armand the show. Then there's Armand the guy. Are you much different off camera than you are? Yes, because okay. I'm, I'm. But people assume what they see on camera that that is who I am 24 seven. I couldn't be like this all day long. I, I, I can understand that. And especially if you, you know, certain things that we work on, like they take mm -hmm. a piece of your personality and you're forever judged by that one thing. I have a severe resting B face and I could be happy, but I just don't be like sitting here. I'm not going to be sitting here like, like, and there's a bit <laughs> to laugh at. So I know I have a very angular, sharp face. I'd be looking mad. I'm really not. I just be like not trying to get wrinkles. I'm 51. So I just be letting my face be slack. Okay. Reversing the question. Have you ever made an assumption about someone else without? No, you didn't them? answer the question on you. Well, that was her asking. It, yeah, mine was, yeah, yeah, mine oh, was my, you know, the, okay, the main. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, assumptions about other people. Have you had them about other people when you were wrong about them? Armand, let's go with you first. Have you made an assumption about someone without getting to know them first? Yeah, I'm sure I've done it many times because I've listened to other people or yeah. I've paid attention to other things. And then I've actually seen it for myself. And I'm like, you know what? I actually pegged you to be something else and you weren't that type of person, you know? And mm -hmm. so that has definitely happened to me before. And I, I overthink a lot. Yeah. things so i automatically because i know i'm the type of personality either you love me or you hate me so i automatically go into any situation thinking this person ain't gonna like me yeah. but then i realized oh my god no we vibe you cool you like me you get it so i'm glad i didn't judge you i'm with you on that i always think people don't like me until i'm proven <laughs> otherwise al yeah. about you assuming assumptions about other people yeah i made that i grew up in the church and i used to assume that the church girls well, good old church women. No, <laughs> they are the freakiest. Oh, guys, so, so I mean, I just find the you know you think church. Is crazy. Yeah, I think what's the, the freakiest church... thing you done with a church woman? Boy, raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, hey, um, this is not about someone I knew, but I made an assumption and it, it taught me a valuable lesson. I just moved to Texas. I was at the Texas State Fair. I was just got announced on the radio. So it was like my coming out party there in Dallas. Okay. They're welcoming me. And this girl wanted to take a picture with me. And I was like, yes. Yeah. She's like, Claudia Jordan, I love you. I'm like, all right, cool. I hold the camera. And I put my hand on her stomach. It was obvious she was nine months pregnant. I said, mm. baby? She said, no. I said, sorry. And it was like, so, I felt so bad. So ever since then, I don't care. Uh, you could be like in labor. I'm not going to assume you're pregnant. And I felt really bad about that. It was giving fupa. It was all the way up here. Though. It was like, it was so, it looked exactly like a pregnant stomach, you know? That so was now, gas. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching. I'm so sorry. Like, but you That's really, fine. it was really given like nine months pregnant. Like it looked just, and only stomach, so. I'm sorry. Oh. I've done Foot and mouth. <laughs> but women uh, can get away with doing that. Like, men cannot get away with doing that. I know. He was a really good sport about it, I will say that. And uh, yeah, sorry if you're watching. I want to thank my co host, Al Reynolds, and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. And thanks for watching us on YouTube. I'm going to assume that y'all rewatch this tomorrow and run those numbers up. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Y'all be, hey, be good out here, okay? Lead them raw dog church girls along. Hey, all. <laughs> come on, y'all. <laughs> see you tomorrow.
Coming your way tonight, a crazy, crazy, crazy ass criminal. In Brazil, a woman is arrested after she rolled in a dead man's body trying to withdraw money from his bank account. Plus the latest fashion trend for men that involves flashing your bare back through your suit. It doesn't make sense, but we'll show it to you. The Factor starts now. The Isaiah Factor Uncensored starts right now. And we want to thank you all for staying up late with us. We have a great program, and let's kick it off tonight with our great guest. Welcome to The Factor Uncensored, where we guarantee to give you the weird and unusual. And tonight, we won't disappoint, thanks to photographer John Starling, who came up with this idea. We take you to Rio de Janeiro. Look at the video. Pay attention now. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, for the foolishness. Police say a 42-year-old woman named Erica de Souza walked into a bank pushing the body of a dead man. It was in a wheelchair. Souza could be seen using the lifeless body like a puppet. She attempted to nod the guy's head and make it appear as if he were signing approval for a $3,200 bank withdrawal. The man is dead. Employees didn't fall for the antics. They got suspicious when the man wasn't breathing and he happens to be pale. Sousa was arrested and now she's added to our batch of crazy ass criminals. Joining us to talk about it tonight, comedian Ashley Henderson, Waller County Constable Herschel Smith, along with defense attorney and former Harris County prosecutor, Bayoji Akimbola. Glad to have you all here on The Factor on Census. How quick would you arrest her ass? <laughs> real fast, real fast. <laughs> Seeing was... some fooling, this is just mind blowing. Yeah. Mind blowing. Your thoughts when you saw this video? Oh, this, I, you know, the song hit me, The Love of Money. <laughs> the Love of Money, man. It's, it, it, it was just, you know, just watching, I said, man, she got to be real crazy. Got to uh -huh. be real crazy to do something like that. Had some guts and, you know, it, it just a lot of things hit my mind when I saw that. I said, well, did she, was she taking money from me, man, be trying to get her last little hit? Before, before and, that, and that's what I want to know. What happened? Did they know each other before he died? Did she realize he had money in his bank account? And she said, well, his ass is dead now. Let me go get it. Right. right. Sound like the caretakers. The way the caretakers mm -hmm. taking advantage of some of the seniors that they work for. You know. And so that over a period of time, you know, they continually do this stuff. And then, you know, they'd be addicted to it. And so this seemed like a lady that They've done it before. Mm -hmm. All right. But OG, looking at this, your, your right. thoughts about this? Well, you know, I'm a criminal defense attorney, so I never like to assume someone's guilt. As, <laughs> as obvious Even as though you've seen a roll, roll his ass in there, <laughs> like, you want this money out, right? Yes. Well, you know. Sign this note, right? <laughs> well, doing some research, it, it appears that uh, she was actually related to this decedent. Uh -huh. um, she claims that that was his uncle, right? And so, the, so many questions. But that, does that make it right? No, absolutely not. <laughs> but there's a lot of questions that come to mind. You know, for instance, at what time did this person die? Uh, she claims that he was alive uh, having come into the bank and at some point died, right? Oh, and we got to look into that. We can't just assume <laughs> that she's guilty. Getting yeah. this guy a great criminal that defense was a great attorney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, look, at the end of the day, right, if, if you can't litigate, mitigate, you know, <laughs> you because, at the, you know, the fallen nature of man, we all fall short, right? Mm -hmm. But for the grace of God, if we're pushed at our limits, we may do something inhumane. And so it begs the question, was she, uh, you know, shocked at her, his death? Did she have mental health issues? Is she indigent? So at the end of the day, as a defense attorney, I would like to, you know, try to appeal to people's sense of humanity and say, you know, this might be a difference maker between going to prison and maybe getting probation mm -hmm. if there's some mitigating issues as to why she may have done something like this. All right. Ashley, I just I Are need him for my toll fees. Mitigating fees. issues <laughs> that she may have done something like that. Man, I honestly just feel like you know what she she was smart about it. She's like he can't use it no way. <laughs> I might as well just you. Know, I've been taking care of him all this time. This is the diary of a mad black woman, part two. Like instead of the tub, it's the bank. You know what I'm saying? That's how. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like you know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying it's okay. You know what, what right. I'm saying? My my condolences to him and his family. However, at the same time, you know. What are you going to do with it? Right. <laughs> Were any of you shocked at the way she was trying to motion his body and make him sign the paperwork and he was dead? I thought that was huge. Yeah, I was that, like, was, that was just too crazy. Just, just to look at someone yeah. attempting to see, 
make a dead man sign, you know. Yeah, I don't even want to pick up a dead fly again, without tissue. <laughs> plain Let devil's alone. advocate. If that's, if that's Here comes really, the defense attorney again. <laughs> if that's really her uncle, you know, perhaps there's some shock there. She doesn't want to believe that he's dead. Uh, they had main plans from the beginning to go to withdraw some money from the bank. And now that this is happening, she just can't accept the reality of his death. Boy, you are That's, good. That is good. You are that good. is good. <laughs> That's good. I'm not. I'll be honest. When my when my grandma passed, you know, I thought about putting some stuff in her name. I thought about. I didn't do it. I didn't have her yeah. sign anything. <laughs> but I thought about it. So yeah. I understand. You might, you might need me. I need, <laughs> I need but you. in America, guys, what kind of charges, criminal charges, would you face if you did something like this? And as Ashley said, put someone in someone else's name. Put. Uh, accounts in someone else's name if they've passed. Well, she was actually charged with two uh, crimes, one being fraud and, and the other being abuse of corpse. Cool. Uh -huh. And so fraud is wow. if you use any kind of deceit to obtain possession of money. Right? Would we mirror the same criminal charges here in America? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then abuse of corpse is if you use a dead body, transport it, uh, fool around with it without the legal authority to do so. So that's what she's facing, and uh, it'll likely be the same charges here in Texas as well. And of course, I think the only thing that could give her uh, some grace if there are actual mental we issues all need going grace. on. Praise and God. or if there's proof, I mean, if they have any type of proof that he may have passed away in the bank, like she said, would right. that help her? Would that help her? My with? question is, did she have? Did he have rigor mortis? Because mm -hmm. if he didn't have rigor yeah, mortis, he was, he was still that would very indicate that he recently died, right? Yeah. So right. Meaning, the question: rigor mortis meaning he was stiff. Exactly, right. yeah, and he exactly. wasn't very stiff. Exactly. So yeah. I mean, from that door. So not. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it's, that's a wild story, but it's possible. Anything is possible. You see, I got, I got one jury. I'm. I'm, oh, see. Like, I'm trying to hire you through relationship. Right. right. <laughs> So, Constable, your thoughts, when, when you see something like this, same mirrored criminal charges in Brazil right. same, would be same here. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's a crazy scene. It's a mm -hmm. crazy scene, you know. Uh, anybody who had to work that, you know, they got to make sure that maybe going back to what she was saying, he probably died before that, possible, but only th they can tell, you know, by the autopsy how long he's been dead. All right, so they need to hire you, right? Hey, I need to get my license. <laughs> you, you need first. to fly to Brazil <laughs> and handle this case. Thank you all for joining yeah, us here on The you. Factor on Censored. Still ahead tonight, we talk the popular weight loss drug, Ozempic. It ain't cheap, but there could be a loophole to get the medication for less, but you might pay for it in the long run. We'll explain at 11 o'clock. Plus, seemingly small things that can be very aggravating for some people in relationships. All of that PDA, how much is too much affection? Get your pants off me. Dr. Angela Jones shares her expert opinion at 1045. Stop touching me. And finally, we're celebrating my favorite damn food of all time, crawfish. You're watching The Factor Uncensored. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day 
is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around, and I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself, and me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike, and you did it. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves, and all I had to do was be there. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. An annual event honoring black women diagnosed with breast cancer is coming back to Houston this weekend. The Sisters Network is hosting its 14th annual Stop the Sil Silence 5K Walk. The event was created in hopes of bringing awareness to National Minority Health Awareness Month. And it's the first and only National Breast Cancer Walk hosted by a black-led organization for black women. Registration is open. To Taking place this weekend at the University of Houston. Joining us to talk about it, the Vice President of Sisters Network Incorporated, Colleen Allen. Glad to have you here on the Factor Uncensored. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So how excited are you about this event? Oh, I'm beyond excited. We are ready to host our 14th annual Stop the Silence Walk. As you mentioned at University of Houston, Sisters Network has been hosting this walk for many, many years, raising mm -hmm. funds for our Karen E. Jackson Breast Cancer Assistance Program, which provides uh, financial assistance to survivors, paying mm -hmm. utilities, rent, mortgage, as well as the early, tech, early detection side of the program pays for mammograms and ultrasounds for women. <laughs> and are black women doing those mammograms as they should or as needed to your liking, the organization's liking, or right. should there be more done? Definitely needs to be more done. Uh, we need to stay up on our mammograms every year, know our family history. Um, you know, statistically, black women, there is a crisis with black women in breast cancer. We're 42% more likely to die of breast cancer. If you're under 35, you're um, two times and, and more likely. And you need likely. to say that statistic one more time. 42% more likely to die of breast cancer. Absolutely, 42% more likely to die of breast cancer as compared to white women and other ethnic groups. And if you're under 35, you're two times more likely to uh, be diagnosed with breast cancer and three times more likely to, um, to, to die. Mm -hmm. so. And are we seeing the research we need around the country or is that <laughs> why you guys are doing what you're doing to detect it early before it becomes a, a life-ending crisis. Right, so, you know, early detection is not a slogan. It can truly save your life. And so while we talk about 42% of, of the, the women are dying of breast cancer, we need to also recognize that 58% are living. Mm -hmm. And so early detection is something that saves your life. And so we've got to stay up on our mammograms. We've got to normalize talking about breast cancer in the black community and also know our family history. One of our slogans is stop the silence so our sisters can stop be start beating the odds. And when you say know the history, are we talking about getting detailed about DNA and, and your family's history or we're talking about just knowing what grandma had, what mom had? Both. Definitely knowing just the traditional, what your grandmother, your, you know, your aunt, uh, you know, your cousins, etc. cetera. Um, you want to know that family history. Mm -hmm. um, but you also want to do some genetic testing, especially if you do have the family history. You want to find out um, how, more, how much more likely you could be diagnosed and decide what actions you want to take. Um, and staying up on your mammograms, getting ultrasounds if your breasts are very dense, uh, being your own advocate. If you feel something and the doctor is not hearing you or, or, or um, you know, getting you to the next level to get the care that you need, it is your responsibility and it's okay to get a second opinion. Got it. And how difficult is it, because I know you have dealt with many survivors and those who are dealing with breast cancer. Absolutely. How difficult is it to look in their eyes when they are suffering and they feel like there is no hope until they have a conversation with you guys yeah. or other entities out there giving them hope? You know, um, Isaiah, we get over 3,000 calls a year at Sisters Network from women, you know, who've been diagnosed or family members calling on behalf of a loved one. And, um, you know, we are so proud that we're able to help not only here in Houston where we're headquartered, but we are a national organization with 30 chapters mm -hmm. around the country. And so we're able to help navigate those women to the best care that we know in their community, um, link them up with another sister who may have had a similar diagnosis so that they can learn 
some things that they that they um, learned through their survivorship journey. Our founder and CEO is a four-time, 31-year breast cancer survivor. Four times, wow. Four times. So she knows her body. Mm -hmm. She's advocated for herself, but she, you know, she's been diagnosed four times. And really quick, tell us about the event again, yes. the details before we wrap up here. Absolutely. So we want everybody to come out to the University of Houston this weekend. This is Stop the Silence Walk. Uh, it's our 14th annual at the University of Houston. Registration is open until Friday at 6 p.m. On-site registration on Saturday morning. The walk kicks off at 9 a.m. It's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of line dancing to warm you up, and then you know raising funds for a very good cause. And on-site registration, so you have no excuse. None. Colleen, <laughs> thank you for joining us here on The Factor. Still ahead, we have much more coming your way here on The Factor, including a brand new Angela After Dark. Can you be too lovey-dovey, too touchy? feeling. Plus, showing skin isn't just for the ladies. Some men <laughs> are into it. Would you transform your suit jacket into something a little more skimpy? Head over to our Instagram page at Isaiah Factor and vote now. We'll share the results at 1110. Keep it here on The Factor. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official mm -hmm. co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of mm -hmm. fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the T-G-I family. <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. It's time for Angela After Dark. And tonight we're talking physical boundaries in a relationship. It's unclear if this couple is on the same page. Let's take a look at it now. The man is happy in his own world with a grip on his lady. You see what he's doing right there. While she looks a little less enthused. <laughs> like, why well, are you pawn me? Maybe a little aggravated as well. Let's keep looking, and then she's gonna take a look at the camera like, why is his hand all over me even though they're a couple, they're together? <laughs> so that's what we assume, unless, you know, they're, they're fooling us all and it's a skit, you never know. But it's a good example because it's real world, it happens in the real yeah. world. When some, or a member of the, a person who's in the relationship is not into that touchy-feely type thing mm -hmm. and they don't want to be touched. So what does that mean if you're bothered by being touched by your significant other? People like love in different ways. Mm -hmm. So some people like physical touch. So if your partner says, I, if she said, I'm a physical touch person, so therefore he touches her, 
then they're fine. But mm -hmm. it's different if she says, I really am not into like physical touch, especially in public places, but you continuously insist on doing that, then you're crossing boundaries and you're mm -hmm. actually being disrespectful. So it just really depends on what your partner's needs are. If you have a partner that says, you know, I, I don't really like doing that, then you're gonna have to respect their boundaries. What are you gonna do, force yourself on them? I, I, it's just, it's teetering a boundary. And, and, and that's important because you have to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, what if you, you know, in that relationship, you say, I am not into this touchy feely thing, mm -hmm. but then the other person feels hurt. Yeah. And they feel like, well, maybe they're not into me. Yeah, and I, I mean, that can happen. a couple of ways. I mean, they, they may get offended by it, but if they really want to invest in a relationship or really want to get to know you, they will ask you why. They will ask you, well, if you don't like touch, what else do you like? Mm -hmm. Maybe they like other things. They now, may real quick, this uh -huh. is in the beginning of a relationship because if you know somebody, mm -hmm. you know they don't want you just Correct. touching. If you've been together, I mean, you, you sleep together and all of that, but you just don't want to be all touched in the public. They already know that. Yeah, but if it's a new relationship yeah. and they tell you like, get off me, it also, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on yeah, how they're this. saying get it. You know, me. like, put move, you know. <laughs> I don't like to sit close to people when I'm eating. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need my elbow room right. so I can eat properly. If you get offended by that, we could talk about it, but I'm not gonna really like waver on my boundaries in regards to that. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the relationship, if you're butt hurt because I'm telling you like, I don't really like PDA or you all over my body in certain spaces, and you can't handle that, that actually lets me know like, mm, red flag, I don't need to be with you. I need someone who's gonna respect my boundaries. You know, as long as I'm respectful to you, mm -hmm. I'm not embarrassing you. I'm not saying like, get your hands off me, like in public, <laughs> then okay. You know, I could just tell you gently like, Bay, let, let, let's not do that right now <laughs> and then move on. And then if he is offended or if she is offended, we'll talk about it. But you know, it, it, people's ego kind of gets in the way. Just because I want to touch you doesn't mean that you want to be touched. Right. And there were several people in the comments of this video. And once again, we're going to say we don't know if this com this video is actually real. It could right. be a skit or something else, but it's a good conversation mm -hmm. piece. And so many people are saying, well, you should be lucky to have a man touch you like that. Uh, what do you say to those people who say, and they were females, like, I've been sure. looking for a man like this to just touch me well, like that. Well, that's good for you, but you don't know what happened before that. It's, so say that video was a real video. Mm -hmm. They could have got into an argument right before that, and he mm -hmm. so she's probably annoyed with him. She looked kind of annoyed with him. Her friend was recording it, so she's probably just showing out for her friend. Mm -hmm. We really don't know the context of that video. Right. So at the end of the day, for them to say, oh, you should appreciate that, what if he, like, you know, was disrespecting her in the car, and they got into a huge fight, and now he has his hand... I would feel pretty annoyed by that too. Like, okay, you're you're touching me and you know I'm not really messing with you right mm -hmm. now. So the it, context really matters. So I know that since it's blowing up, hopefully they'll have a response video to it and we'll know a little bit more. <laughs> All right, Dr. Angela Jones, always good to see you here on The Factor Uncensored. Still ahead tonight, an attack on a teacher. Oh, I couldn't watch this one. It was caught on camera. Hmm. Oh, oh, <laughs> We have new details behind the video. Keep it here. Just shocking and sad. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this. I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. 
My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. And welcome back to the Factor Uncensored, a high school student in North Carolina now facing criminal charges after slapping a teacher twice. That attack was caught on camera and it is very disturbing. Let me hit you again. Let me hit you again. I don't want it. Let me hit you again. I don't want it. Let me hit you again. Oh my God. Oh. Stop playing with me. Just horrible. And he said, do you want me to hit you again? That was a second hit. There's a second, a first hit that was also caught on tape. Just shameful. One of the blows knocked the glasses right off the teacher's face. It's unclear what happened before the video was filmed. Doesn't matter. The school's principal says the student involved will face disciplinary action along with criminal charges. More developing news, Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small and his wife Lakita Small both facing charges for allegedly physically and emotionally abusing their 16-year-old daughter. A criminal complaint shows several alleged incidents, including in December of last year, where the daughter says during an argument with her mother, Lakita allegedly put all her weight on her daughter and smacked her multiple times in the face. And on January 13th, the affidavit accuses Mayor Small of throwing the teen into the shower during an argument, slamming her and choking her. Mayor Small, also allegedly hit her on the head with a broom, leading to her passing out and collapsing on the floor. Now, earlier this month, he spoke about parenting during a press conference. Though she has a doctorate and I have a <clears throat> master's degree, there's no book and no course that we took in college to show you how to be a parent. And more importantly, how to deal with the struggles of raising teenagers. <laughs> Prosecutors say they have video evidence of the abuse. Mayor Small is also charged with terroristic threatening, aggravated assault, and simple assault. His attorney says it's a family matter. Still ahead tonight, the potential fi financial workaround for those who want to jump on the Ozempic train. But there's a cost to pay. We have an attorney here to talk about it. Stay with us here on The Factor Uncensored. Take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're watching.
watching the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. Welcome and thank you for joining us for our second half hour. The Factor Uncensored, we're deep into the popularity wave of the latest weight loss drug, Ozempic. We know about it. The monthly cost of the shot can add up quickly. It's listed at $935.77 a month. It could even be higher. We're going to talk to our expert about that. And that's without insurance. We're also learning how the drug can also negatively impact your insurance. Joining us to talk about it, attorney Dr. Simone Redwine. Glad to have you here on the Factor on Sensor. First, first, let's talk about the popularity of this drug. Did you ever, did anyone ever expect it to take off? Because at its core, it's for a medical condition. Tell us about that first. Absolutely. At its core, it's for diabetics. Mm -hmm. This is a diabetic drug that's supposed to help with insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. But one of the side effects that we found is that it also helps manage your appetite. So you still get hungry, but you're able to become full after simply 200, 300 calories. So you're able to drop weight astronomically as well as um, your body is able to process insulin and sugars much more efficiently. And as a result of that, people are using it all around the country. Yeah. I think Oprah's using it. I'm using it. I dropped, <laughs> I dropped about 15 pounds in a I month. I don't say that, but I'm like, she thin, thin, <laughs> thin, thin, thin. Yeah, in a month. It was over to, it was about seven pounds in a week, but over the course of a month, Seven 15. pounds in a week? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was real fine last summer. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get back to it, too. But and what I like about it is I, uh, when I started it, I took it once a week. Now I might take it once a month. Mm -hmm. But it's continuing to work. It's like my body has weaned itself off. And it makes me crave healthy things. Mm -hmm. I crave salads, fresh fruits, etc. Because one of the side effects is that um, your tummy hurts if you eat fried food, if you eat too much alcohol, mm -hmm. because of all of the sugars and the carbs and those things. Mm -hmm. And so... Do you also take what many consider the holistic approach, meaning not only do I take this drug, I also exercise, I also eat right. I heard the eat right as well. Right, so initially I wasn't. I dropped that without even changing my weight, but I wanted to be able to wean my body off of it. So yes, I incorporated walking and exercise, and that's what helped me to maintain it and also keep that weight off. Now, we've heard horror stories about it also recently saying there are some, um, what do you call it? Longer term effects. Yeah, long term um, effects liver, like stomach. Uh, when you can't get off the toilet. What oh, is yeah, that? That part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's when you're eating things you had no business in the first right, place, right? right? Fried foods will do that. Too much alcohol. Actually, for me, too much alcohol will also give me the hiccups mm -hmm. and give you like an acid indigestion. That's feeling. like the old cartoon. Right? But if it's you like. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had no business doing it in the first place, right? So it's, it is it is conditioning your body to do those things. But for some people, they can't seem to get past that initial side effect phase. Now, let's talk about what you're here for. Mm -hmm. If you get Ozempic on your insurance saying, I need Ozempic, doctor. I need Ozempic insurance company. What does that mean? So what that means is that it's going to become in your medical history, in your medical information bureau. That's like the car facts of your body. It's mm -hmm. like the credit report. So that means that later down the line, if you need to get life insurance, e you're either going to get denied or it's going to be astronomically more expensive because the only way insurance can cover it is if the doctor diagnoses you as diabetic. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, life insurance is extremely difficult to get. So when you're thinking about, hmm, do I want to save today by getting it covered on my insurance or do I want to pay out of pocket, you really need to think long term, especially if you have kids and those that you're going to leave and that you need to leave with life insurance. And are doctors willing to say you have diabetes and you don't just to get you a weight loss drug or do you have to wink, wink, nod, nod to the doc, yeah, I've been going through this, and then they'll say, yes, you're diabetic, so get Ozempic. So a lot of people who are overweight are pre-diabetic, so mm -hmm. they can also get a diagnosis of the pre-diabetic. Either way, it's problematic. The second way that you can obtain Ozempic or Wigovi, which is the alternative, which is a similar one, is if you're obese. Either way, if you're diagnosed obese, in your medical uh, information bureau history, you're gonna have difficulty getting life insurance because they feel like, hey, you can go any day now. Mm -hmm. And so are doctors, do first of all, do doctors know to explain this to their patients? Do they care to explain this to their patients? 
And do patients know that this patients could... Patients don't. I think patients don't. I've heard so many women have the conversation of, oh, um, Zabik is so expensive, I'm just gonna get my doctor to write the prescription mm -hmm. for me so that they can save. In my case, I went to a doctor that was at a medical spa, it was a weight loss and fatigue center. And, he, and I specifically asked, well, hey, can we put this on my insurance? He said, if you do, you won't get life insurance. He explained it to me. So very few do, mm -hmm. and it's primarily the ones who are cash pay who prefer to receive cash anyway because they don't want to have to deal with the medical billing. Got it. So mm -hmm. your advice, if you don't want to ruin your like credit history but your medical report history, mm -hmm. pay for it cash. Pay for Find it cash. Find a way or get your ass in that damn gym. Get it, or either, <laughs> yes, and there's also, there's an alternative, semi-glutide is a, is a great option. That's one that I take, it's approximately $500 a month. So it's a lot more manageable than this thousand bucks a month. Go on into that med spa. All right, Jamone Redwine, Dr. Jamone Redwine. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for joining us here on The Factor. <laughs> and it's always good to see you. Still ahead tonight, a new fashion trend for the fella showing off that bare back. No big bang. No big bang <laughs> allowed in this community uh, when it comes to uh, outbacks of suits. <laughs> How about that? When I hear Outbacks, Devo J has the advice. Go ahead and head over to our Instagram page at Isaiah Factor to vote on the look. Do you want your back out? Is your back in shape to be out? Or will you have a big ass back like me? You may not want it out. We'll talk about it next. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official mm -hmm. co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of mm -hmm. fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. And welcome back to the Factor on Center. Summer will be here soon before we know it. And that means many ladies will be breaking out those sundresses, shorts, basically any clothes that shows more skin. But that kind of fashion isn't restricted to just them now. Some men are pushing the fashion envelope by rocking suit jackets with a peekaboo back cut out that shows off that bare back. Bad Body had a lot of folks talking with this look at the 2023 Met Gala and trickling down to the regular folk. We asked the guys at home watching if they would wear this on our Instagram page. 20% say yes. 80% said they'll pass. Hell no. My next guest shared his thoughts on the trend. Devo J. When I saw this damn suit, I said, let's get our fashion expert on this. Have people lost their damn minds or is it something uh, cutting edge, something uh, new? Would you well, recommend you wear this or any of your clients wear this? Well, let me tell you this, Isaiah. I think that a lot of times the Met Gala presents a lot of looks that people are just not familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we are in a state or in a city where 
people don't make fashion their priority, of course. But I do think that we do take trends and we run with them. Those type of trends are being actually used in tuxedos for marriages, weddings, uh, uh, galas, things of that nature. And they're huge on the East and the West Coast. They just ain't made it down here to the damn South, right? They just ain't made it down here to the damn South. You know, a lot of times it's about being fashion forward. Uh, and of course, we are we tend to be a little bit lackadaisical when it comes to that. But we don't have things uh, like other cities where we have award ceremonies and different things that happen in this season where those suits are re re even required. It reminds me of when Prince had his ass out. Remember that? Okay. okay. <laughs> but this you know, is not know. low. This is on your back. So your back is right. out. So would you, you give know, it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I would give it a thumbs up if it is fit for the body. Prince could not have pulled the things that he would have pulled off had he been a plus size prince. Thankfully, <laughs> he was a five foot five, 103 pound prince that was able to deal with this stuff and kind of make trends really, really catchy. Uh, again, at the time that he was doing it, Prince was looked at kind of funny and strange. A lot uh -huh. of guys these days would not take the trends that Prince was wearing then and wear them now. Right, right. So you you wouldn't suggest I put that on my big ass back, right? I would hey, for that Isaiah. On big back, no big bags. No big bags <laughs> allowed in this community uh, when it comes to uh, outbacks of suits. <laughs> How about that? He said it's not allowed in this community. Also trending tonight, a showdown between what appears to be a call center employee and a customer. The employee says he hung up on a caller after a disrespectful initial encounter. Here's what happened when the customer called back. Senior generation has no respect for anyone. Well, I don't need to be lectured by someone born in 1930, sir. You can earn respect when you learn to respect others. I don't right? need to be lectured by someone working in customer service. You need to rethink your career choice or job choice. Because you, you need to rethink the way you speak to people working in customer service and people in general. Mm -hmm. If people weren't so rude all the time, maybe we could actually help one another out. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Exhibit A. All your generation does is complain. Exhibit B. All your generation does is complain too. Unlike you, old timer, I can go all day. I don't clock out until 6. Oh, you want to get smart, huh? You, sir, make me wish I had more middle fingers. You think you're all big and bad, don't uh -huh. you? Uh-huh. Keep it coming. Keep it I coming. I if I was here face-to-face -face with you right now, things would have been a whole lot different. Yeah, you'd be in handcuffs, taken out on a stretcher on your way to the hospital, and then headed to jail after that. So I'm going to do us both a favor and go ahead and hang up. Goodbye. <laughs> I want to root for the old guy, but the young guy had some good comebacks. The video has blown up on social media. Video nearly viewed 20 million times. Is it too late to have crawfish at this hour here on The Factor? It's past 11. We say absolutely not. We're digging in and celebrating Crawfish Day next. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and 
kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. And welcome back. It's a big celebration for seafood lovers everywhere. Tonight we're celebrating National Crawfish Day. And to invite a certified expert and a New Orleans native in to talk about crawfish prepared the right way. Joining us here on The Factor on Sensit, we have Chef Nurika, who's a regular on The Factor, Selena Chapman, and the owner of Seafood Trap Kitchen, Clay Vaughn. Clay, is this your work? Yes, Are you sir. willing to stand by it tonight? I'm stamping it, man. Stamping. <laughs> Without any wavering. No, no, ain't no wavering. Ain't no wavering. Ain't no wavering. I won't be disappointed at all. So crawfish is big in Louisiana and big here in Texas yes, as well. Yes, sir. And so where did you learn your skills to cook I, crawfish? I actually been boiling since I was 13. Uh -huh. And uh, I enhanced my skills when I moved to Houston in 2003. I opened my own business in 2016 with all this daiquiri water, and then I just took off with the seafood. Uh -huh. So after just going through the, the different phases of business or whatever, I just try to find something that I love doing and can make money at doing it. And it's boiling seafood because Houston don't have traditional New Orleans ball seafood or Louisiana ball If I seafood. have to look at one more damn garlic bag right. in, in, <laughs> right. in this city. Right. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, it's okay. Yeah. But you know, a good sign or signature of good crawfish, you don't need it in a bag full of seasoning. No. Exactly. You've Season already put it in the boil. It's on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and Chef Narika, you know, we know you're the expert at Cajun Creole cooking, but you decided to call this guy in to handle your crawfish. Why? Well, number one, the pot is too big for me. It's, <laughs> I feel like it's a man's job. You know, I got the recipe, but I don't have the manpower. Uh -huh. You know, and plus what he does, it tastes well. Mm -hmm. And I put my stamp on it. We're starting to do crawfish at Gumbo to go this Saturday, but he'll be the person boiling it. Now, there's a limited time, a window of opportunity for Gumbo. You should, I'm sorry, for, for crawfish. crawfish. When should you, you, you know, wrap it up for crawfish? Um, I would say maybe in another month because mm -hmm. the, the, the longer it gets, it gets smaller. Smaller, yeah. yeah. You start at the and beginning too longer. early, it's small. Yeah. In the middle, it's just right. Right now, it's... I'm yeah, looking the, at some good sized crawfish. The, the season was just kind of started off to a rocky start. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, they didn't get enough feed to, uh, you know, uh, generate more crawfish or whatever based on like a November, December situation. Cause the, the season normally start like in February. Mm -hmm. So by being late, we are gonna have a late crawfish season. Mm. Maybe rolling into like August or September. Oh, wow. And I was just reading, it says crawfish will mature in a few months. Right. But they're like old at two or three years old. Yeah. So you, you've got to get them out because they're, they're healthy size right. in a few months. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're real healthy right now, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it just depends on Mother Nature and the rain and the weather or whatever based on, you know, the reproduction of crawfish. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're looking good so far right now. Um, normally, like right after Mother's Day, that's, the, that's really the end of crawfish. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're about to have crawfish for Father's Day this year, uh -huh. you know, and then rolling over into August or September. And so when your customers come in and, and they're looking for crawfish, what, what kind of crawfish do they want? You know, I've talked about those garlic bags. Oh, yeah. Well, so, in Houston, I mean, you go, the typical places you go, they're gonna ask you what flavor crawfish right. you want. So you gotta get with that whole thing. But at, <laughs> Gumbo, <laughs> at Gumbo yeah. to go, they're asking for uh, crawfish etouffee. Uh -huh. um, what you see here is, these are things that I have available for Kato. I don't do it on an everyday basis. But I have people that ask for crawfish etouffee, mm -hmm. crawfish jambalaya. In my cookbook, I have crawfish nachos. Um, so that's a variety. And of I things. found out you have crawfish bisque. Look at God. <laughs> yeah. I did not know you had I got you. The original. I couldn't find that something. anywhere. The here original Houston. crawfish bisque. You so should have one. called me. <laughs> there right. you go. So where can they find you really quick? www.gumbo2gohtx.com. We're on Instagram at gumbo 2 go with two X's. And we're at 7615 West Montgomery Road inside of Valero and Acres Home. All right, Clay, and where can they find you? Seafood Trap Kitchen. Seafood Trap Kitchen, HTX on Instagram. Um, 22559 Aldine Westfield. At, uh, I'm in front of the Orange Container, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. Selena, well, we just see you here. All right, good night. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Don't go anywhere. Hip hop heavyweight heads to Houston's third ward for a live performance this weekend. 420. Stay with us. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. You just heard some of the classic songs by Mr. Cheeks, Lights, Camera, Action. The rapper will be in our neck of the woods this weekend, performing live at Bar 5015 on Almeda in Houston's Third Ward. I caught up with Mr. Cheeks today. And joining us on The Factor Uncensored tonight, we have the legendary rapper himself, Mr. Cheeks. How you doing, sir? Hell, everything's good, man. I'm just chilling out. Appreciate the love. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, and I'm sure your fans are excited. You will be in Houston for 420 Day on Saturday, April 20th at uh, Bar 5015. What can they expect from you? Oh, uh, man, you know, uh, first of all, thanks for having me out in Houston, Bar 5015 and all that. But it's going down, man. Mad energy, good music, and a good time. That's all I'm bringing. I'm bringing my flavor, that LB flavor. That's it, baby. Let's go. And of course, you're going to bring the lights, camera, action, right? Woo, indeed, brother. No question about it. And for your fans who are expecting to see you, how important is it to get in front of them and perform in front of them and give them that energy, that love back after so many years of support? Oh, man, it's going to be crazy, man, to rock my joints in front of the people that may, you know what I'm saying, that help my career go where it's at and be where I am. No question about it. It's only right to, you know what I'm saying, share that love with them that they gave to me all through the years, man. I'm coming to Houston to hold it down. Man, big shout out to H Town. Let's get it popping. No question, man. Thanks for the love and support through all the years. You already know. And have you been to uh, H Town before? And what is it like every time you come here? Oh, yeah. Every time, I mean, you know, I'll come down there. But I got some friends down there. So you already know when I come down, we just be vibing. But uh, this is one of those nights where they, I put the show on. I grab the mic and I hit them with a few one twos and we get it popping, baby. Let's go. Absolutely. Uh, are you working on any new releases, any new material that your fans can expect from you down the road? Oh, no question about it. Uh, we got this new, um, well, you can check out the new Lost Boy album on your YouTube right now. It's called um, uh, Grand Scheme, you know what I'm saying, the Lost Boys. But right now, my man, DJ Spick Nice, just came home and we're working on a new project. And uh, yeah, it's called Standing Tall. And we got a new record out right now called uh, Get the Money. And the video's dropping and uh, we're just putting in the work. We're still continuing on the LB Ventures, no question. 
Absolutely. And once again, for your fans here in H-Town, he will be performing this Saturday night, April 20th at Bar 5015 for 420 Day. Mr. Cheeks, we appreciate you stopping by and dropping by here on The Factor Uncensored. And we look live. We look forward to that live performance. Oh, uh, no question. Shout out to Houston. Shout out to The Factor. Hey, yo, let me let you know there's a scam page out there. My real page is Mr. Cheeks 76 LB Family. Not Mr. Cheeks Lost Boys. I just want everybody to know that because there's a scam artist out there. And it's the grand key letting it go. I'm like, yo, we'll still deal with that. But I want everybody to understand the real deal is Mr. Cheeks TV 76 LB family. Let's go. All right. We appreciate it. And we will note that, sir. Thank you for joining us tonight here on the Factor Uncensored. Factor Uncensored. All right. You can catch him at Club Bar 5015 on Almeda this weekend. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you follow us on Fox Soul, and of course, social media. You can catch us there on Instagram, X, and Facebook. That'll do it for us. Have a great night. They're eating crawfish in the back. No one invited me. All my life I had to fight. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out.
Okay, so there is a reason why they say it pays to be the boss. On one hand, you get to create your own schedule, make executive decisions, and you have the final say on money matters. Now, the flip side, the success of your company depends on almost every choice you make. So you have to make some really good ones. Entrepreneur Drika Gates has made a lot of good choices. She even threw the music industry for a loop when she stepped in on the scene to help with her husband, rapper Kevin Gates. And now she's calling all the shots in a new wellness space. So how did a little girl from Louisiana become a big time business mogul? We're talking about the boss lady moves that put Drika Gates on the map. Today, I'm Portia. Hello and welcome to the show. In today's Boss Lady episode, we're going inside the world of Drika Gates. Drika Gates wears a lot of hats. Serial entrepreneur, mother of two, and wife of Grammy-nominated rapper Kevin Gates. Just a few of the reasons why she is our Boss Lady of the day. Please welcome to the show, Drika Gates. Hello, hello. Hello, beautiful. So <laughs> good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. So many interesting stories, so many life tales but it all starts with this little girl <laughs> from Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. Born and raised. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, born and raised in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. That's where I spent most of my childhood. The um, family roots are there. Family right? roots, so yes, in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So what did you want to be? What did you want to do? Oh my gosh, growing up, I always thought that I was going to grow up and be a doctor. Like that was, ah. that was the path that I was going to take. And I actually started on that path, but ended up, Taking a little small detour. Yes, a, a, a couple of small detours. I like how you put that. You have, because you were in college, right? Yes, I when was. When you changed your mind and decided to do something different. Let's talk about what was going on in your life. Yes. When you said, okay, I'm going to scratch going to med school. Right. <laughs> okay. So I was in school to become a doctor. I've always been like, I call myself a healer at heart. Mm -hmm. I love helping people. So I went to school. I was at LSU with a pre-med major. Um, but at the time I was also with my husband. He was my boyfriend then, Kevin mm -hmm. Gates. Mm -hmm. And he, I just saw that he was extremely talented. He was always a writer. He used to record music in his closet at his grandmother's house. Wow. And I just thought that he should take it seriously. So I, we were talking one day and I'm like, what do you think about actually doing this? Like for real, like professionally, what did he say? He said, yes. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's do it. And from then on, I literally like dropped out of college and boots on the ground. What did your <laughs> parents say when you said you were dropping out of college? for this nice guy that I'm dating. I know, right? How does that go? <laughs> um, I actually, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a good transition. They actually, like, I literally, I was cut off. Wow. Yes. Because Were you expecting that? Did you know the reaction was going to be so? I knew it was going to be a little severe. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was. And, and, we, my father and I, we've actually had conversations about this. Yeah. Um, and he's like apologized and things like that. So that make it makes me feel good now because now he sees that, you know, like the decision that I made that I really like when I made that decision, it yeah. was because I really believed in what I was doing. And I feel like that's the first lesson really for our viewers and particularly the women watching trust your gut, even, oh my gosh. even if it's going to come with some very serious consequences. consequences. Yes. You have to believe in yourself, trust in yourself. How did you forge ahead then working with Kevin with no, you know, the parental support is not there. It is now, obviously. But yes. how did you keep going? Because young, <laughs> young lady at this point. I mean, at that point, I really honestly had no choice but to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to make it work. So I was really passionate. I've all, I grew up, my house was... my. Music was always being played, everything okay. from jazz to gangster rap music, you mm -hmm. know? So I grew up with music. Um, I was really just really passionate about making it happen. So you actually ended up working in the capacity of his manager. Yes, I did. Well, what experience did you have doing I, that? <laughs> I had zero experience as a manager. <laughs> but for me, like, I'm that person that if I have a vision, I see a vision, yeah. I'm going after that. And I'm going to do my research. I actually picked up this book by Don Passman. It's called All You Need to, All you Need to Know About the music industry mm. and I literally I ran across my notes that I took from that book years ago but that was like my guide and that is what I used to kind of like you yeah. Know, so I feel way. like that's the next lesson learned do your research, research do your homework yes know what you're getting into 
But people were not taking you seriously, particularly men in the industry, particularly men in rap, right? <laughs> what was that like for you? Oh, my gosh. What did they say? I, How did they treat you? I was just a girlfriend. And mm. then when we went to the big, the, the label, when we uh, did our partnership with them, they actually made the suggestion to me to hire a manager. And I'm like, but I am his manager. What, what do you mean I need to hire a manager? What, did the, what was their response when you said, I am the manager? <laughs> they said that I should consider, I should still consider mm. hiring, hiring a Basically, manager. Basically, oh, that's cute. Exactly. But like, you're time. cute. But yeah. So you hired a I man did. to do, and did you just basically say, here's what I want to go? How did you execute that? <laughs> so, and how infuriating was that? It was, but it was for me, I like a good challenge. It's like now, you know, okay, I'm going to have this, and no offense, but this puppet that, <laughs> you know, this is what you wanted. Here you go. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they started to realize, hey, this person here is always saying, I have to go back and ask Trika. I have to ask I have to ask Drake. And then mm -hmm. eventually they realize, hey, you know. How did Kevin feel about that? Uh, he didn't like, because he was in full support of me because I was in full support of him. Yeah. And I mean, to this day, like, he'll always speak highly of, like, the impact that I had on, you know, his career just in general right. and the work that we put in together as a team. And life goes on. You continue. You have children. Yes. I and mean, how did you manage uh, sort of shifting from the capacity of manager to telling the puppet manager what to do and then having these beautiful children. Oh my gosh. Um, they, oh, you're gonna make me cry. Okay. That's <laughs> they okay. Actually, Safe we, space. We brought them along on the ride. We were on tours. The kids were in, before they could walk, I had them wow. in pouches and car seats. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so they, 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 in their early days, they spent most of their lives on the road. And how us. did you manage that? Because I know that everyone talks about how rough this industry can be, how competitive can be, and not necessarily nurturing for a family. How did you keep it nurturing for your husband and your children and still handle your business? I mean, because at the end of the begin, end of the day, like we came in this together, you know, we built it together, like as a team. So it was like, that was we were joined at the hip, yeah. you know? So we were gonna make it happen. Like we saw the vision together and that's what it was. Biggest challenge in that season of your life with little kids, famous husband, trying to still find your footing as a wife, mm -hmm. a businesswoman. Biggest problem, how did you solve it? Oh gosh, pushing through. I don't wanna be so vague, but literally like just standing true in what I knew the end goal was. Mm. Good Just point. really standing on that, yes. Good, good place to pause right now. Lots more lessons to share. You are firing them off already with the Boss Lady Move lessons. I love it. All right, up next, Drika explains why good, clean, country farm living is one of the keys to feeling and looking your best. Yeah, that's her on the farm. We're talking about that Mississippi living when we return. Hey, so you like the show? Then let's connect on social media. Check us out on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok at Porsche TV Show. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole 
world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the table. Our guest today is wife, mother, and very busy businesswoman, Drika Gates. I want to talk about that farm to table life. You are literally <laughs> on a farm, moved from Cali a few years ago, back to a farm in Mississippi. Why? Oh my gosh. I had this vision, me and my visions. Mm -hmm, I had mm -hmm. this download and it was like, go to the farm. We've already had the farm for like a couple of years. So, okay. Yeah. But it also takes you back to your grandmother, your great grandmother's roots, yes, right? Yes. Being yes. Being in yes. Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of full circle moments there. So mm -hmm. I, it brought me back to uh, during my childhood, I would go and spend summers on my grandmother's uh, property in yeah. Mississippi. So moving like this was not unfamiliar. You you know how to handle a goat. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't learn that in my childhood, okay. <laughs> but I know how to handle them now. Yes. <laughs> got it. Got it. So what is that like for you? I mean, this is full. I mean, we see everything out here and, yes. it's, and blueberries. Yes, yes, yes. I absolutely love it that this is where I get to ground out. This is where I get to recharge. This yeah. is where I get to really just like this is my sanctuary. Yeah. 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 And what is it like for your children? Oh my gosh, they absolutely love it. They get to go outside and run around. I don't have to worry about, you know, them running off or somebody snatched them yeah, up. Yeah, who's and in the backyard? Exactly. Who's and looking at your house? None of that. Yeah. <laughs> and for Kevin, what's that like? Because I know this is this is a different lifestyle for him. It's as well. very different. <laughs> It's very different, but he feels the same way. This is like a place for him. For him is where he gets to recharge yeah. and like kind of disconnect and After reconnect with himself. and busy and all that, yes. and all that movement to come and be grounded. I like yes. how you put that in Mississippi. So let's talk about sort of the business ventures that have come from that, from this lifestyle mm -hmm. that you're enjoying. Yes. So I started up uh, at the January, 2021, I launched my wellness line wow. named Drika. Yes. Yes. Um, I've always been into health and wellness for, I went to school to be a doctor, but dropped out. Um, so COVID actually gave me the opportunity to get back into that. Yeah. So. And COVID was such a learning lesson for so many of oh us, right? Mm -hmm. Having to just sort of stay put. Yes. Was part of that, just that time and that space, like, oh. what am I going to do now and how? Exactly. I mean, we weren't touring, so it actually gave me the opportunity to finally, like, really get everything together because I've been working on my formulas prior to then, okay. but I was always on the road, always working and never had the time for it. So COVID was really like, a blessing for yeah. uh, for me. And I understand there was a, a really personal health experience uh -huh. that was very traumatic for you that yes. also kind of committed you to looking at um, wellness alternatives. Let's talk about that. Yes, like a holistic way of living. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was 20, I was like 135 pounds, had size 34G breast yeah. um and i actually went to have cert to have a, a breast reduction mm -hmm. and during that surgery it was supposed to be outpatient but it wasn't i ended up having to stay a couple of days in the hospital because the doctor accidentally punctured my lung the lung oh my yes. goodness we hear about that happening yes and it literally it, that changed my life i i said after that i would never step foot again in a doctor's office or a hospital oh so, wow yeah. okay so obviously that takes some work you know yes. just even in terms of of our overall wellness and maintenance. Yes. What did you start doing differently? Um, more is more so preventative things. Um, mm. My daily, my everyday life is built on health and wellness. Like mm. what I put into my body, what am I putting into my my mental? How am I? How am I? You know, just like everything, mind, body, and yeah. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. Good stuff in, exactly. good stuff out. Exactly. The, body, the bottom line there. Yes. Uh, and for your children, what do you think they're learning from this process of having to go pick the food <laughs> and then you cooking it? And we're eating it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, my children have actually flourished being on the farm. Like, mm -hmm. they really, truly understand uh, what clean eating is. They understand what not so clean eating is. Um, so it, it's been very, very, very good for them. And I understand your homeschooling as well, right? Yes. With some help, right? Because that's yes, how some, some, of help. Us, some of us, that's how we have to do <laughs> yes, that, right? Yes. Because of our schedules and our, our really our lifestyle, um, yeah. homeschooling was like the best choice for them. So wherever the kids are, the teachers there with us. Wow. Yeah. That is a great experience and it opportunity. Is. So what
what's next? What do you hope to do? Because you've got a whole line of products yes. and a whole lot going on already. Yes. <laughs> what's next? I mean, I'm really just, my goal is to expand this line because at the end of the day, this is like my opportunity to share all of my tips and tricks and tools that I've learned on my journey. So I'm just going to keep adding Add into the uh, planning to expand. Then it sounds like, of course. What else? Like you know, we we always lay out these sort of five year, ten year plans, especially as we start to you know get some checks uh, mm -hmm. of things done, right? So you've got mm -hmm. the marriage, you've got the kids, you've got the farm. Yes. Where do you see yourself maybe even just 10 years from now? <laughs> and is it ever maybe even like going back to school? Okay, so I have done some schooling. Um, recently, uh, 2023, I received my certification as a birth doula. Oh, um, wow. Yes, yeah, so like birthing, the whole just act of birthing is something that I'm super passionate about. Have you been a part of the birthing process from, a, from an active standpoint? Are you still observing, learning? Oh, no, I actually have my sister-in-law. I was actually her birth doula for her last pregnancy, and it was such a beautiful experience. Like, it was amazing. So I'm curious, when you were in college and, and you know, in your pre-med programs, did mm -hmm. you envision being an OBGYN? No, I actually wanted to work with kids, okay. a pediatrician. But, yeah. like, as I've grown and developed, it's like I love bringing in life. I love bringing life to things. Like, that mm. is, like, you know? That makes so. sense. <laughs> I see I, I see the, the thread there, bringing life from the farm. Yes. Kids and then bringing babies into yes. the world. My goodness. Yes. Whew, so many good <laughs> lessons. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So, folks, I want you to keep it right here. We're going to have more life lessons with boss lady Drika Gates after the break. <laughs> My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Thanks for coming back to the table. Drika Gates is dishing about her life, her love, her family matters, and many business ventures. Your late, latest is a plant-based business. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell me more. So I'm opening up my uh, first solely owned and operated uh, cannabis dispensary in Mississippi. Hmm. So yes. we know that that raises some <laughs> eyebrows and makes others go, okay, good. Yes. Let's talk about what that's been like for you entering in that, especially in Mississippi. Oh, yes. It has, has had definitely had its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, like with anything, I put my blinders on. I don't care what your opinions are, and I'm going for it. What are you hoping people are, are going to learn? Because we know there is a customer mm -hmm. base, and then we know there are concerns. What yes. is your mission here? So my mission here is to educate our people and really to just 
just like de destigmatize plants in general mm -hmm. um, and just remove the taboo surrounding cannabis. So, so give me an example of a conversation you've had with, you know, with folks who were like, what are you doing? Yeah. And folks who were like, thank you for doing this. Exactly. I really. And is there more of one or the other? Um, I feel like uh, everyone's like a closet consumer at some point, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is what I'm learning, you know? Really? Yes, 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 I am. So what <laughs> happens in this space? You plan to expand as well? And of course. what have you, because with so many working women, and particularly yes. the moms, yes. we have to figure out what we're going to prioritize. And then what is going to go on the back burner? How do you prioritize in this space? Oh my gosh, I've definitely had to step back from a lot of different projects that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. And I've really have now just focused on the ones that are like really long-term and really need my attention like right now in this moment, because some things can wait, you know? Right. But the things that I'm putting my energy into right now, like these are the ones that, that need it. And know? how much is it uh, a part Part of having just a good team around you, right? So oh like you have gosh. a product line, like how do you know, okay, I don't have to stress over this <laughs> every single day because I've got a good team in place. How do you put a good team in place to execute your vision? That is beyond important. That is the probably the one of the most important things is having a good team. Um, I'm good at recognizing people and what they're good at doing. And so I've been blessed with that ability and I have people on my team who can really just like they can take care of it all. For yeah. Me. Yes. So I'm curious in, then in this business space, then um, the biggest thing that has surprised you about yourself mm -hmm. and your ability to manage all of these things. Oh my gosh. It's been a lot, but I, I feel like I, I'm capable and I'm the one mm. to do it. And how important is that for other women to recognize yes. that? Yes. On that those you... nights when it's like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. I don't know how I'm going to make this work. Oh, I've had all of that. This project that I'm getting into, like with the cannabis dispensary, yeah. it has literally been, it, it's been kicking my butt, but I've been doing it and for 20 I'll be opening but just know that you're capable you're mm, capable mm. and how much of this um of, of your faith plays into this oh my god leaning in <laughs> uh, all of it <laughs> all of it you have to know and trust in yourself and your own capability capabilities and that vision that you saw when you first got started mm. I like that. Yes. I like that. <laughs> so one more bit of advice then in terms of what you do when it just gets really hard. Have you ever given up on something and realized it wasn't giving up? It was just recognizing maybe it's, some, it's time to do something different? Yes. I've How did you sure discern that? Um, it's really like you just have to be honest with yourself. Like that was, that was what it was for me. Just really, truly being honest and being okay with that, yeah. you know, because a lot of people will start feeling like they're a failure or they're they're failing because they're stepping away from something. And it's like, no, this isn't serving my highest good right now. Like, mm, but this path, I like that serving your highest, highest good. good. Exactly. That's good. Yes. That's good. Because <laughs> juggling it all doesn't mean the ball is not going to drop. It's, it's just, all right, maybe pick this back up and yeah, keep juggling. And keep going. Or, or maybe, you know, route. I don't need that ball anymore. Yes. I it's okay. It. We change. We are ever evolving and changing. Like, and it is okay. It is. Yes. And you are fabulous. <laughs> so much more than okay. You are fabulous. <laughs> Thank so you. So many wonderful lessons. Thank you for opening up and sharing your story you. here in such a meaningful and inspirational way. Thank you so much yes, for having indeed. me. It's been an honor. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Drika Gates is a great example of how to successfully turn multiple skills and talents into multiple streams of revenue. From her success as a music manager and her farming and agricultural endeavors, she is clearly on a path to creating generational wealth. So grateful to have her here sharing her boss lady moves. You can find her on Instagram at Drika Gates. Thanks for watching and be sure to be the reason why someone smiles today. Welcome to Fox Souls in the Black. I'm Derrica Abraham. Have you heard the phrase, make something out of nothing? 
Well, my guest today, Monday Blues, a fashion designer in New York, did just that. In fact, this video of her went viral. Take a look. Monday, I had to stop you. This is like early and you said you created this yes i created this and a little backstory is i actually created this while homeless on a train in chicago so what? i made this by hand so this is fully upcycled yes. bags of coffee beans yes do you make and sell these yes i do just incredible designing fashion became a way for monday to release the pain she's endured from poverty in doing so every garment she creates has a story to tell if you see that garment that I've created on someone's body, that's gonna start a conversation. Since that clip went viral, what type of feedback have you gotten? What type of attention have you received? Honestly, everything has been a blessing. A lot of people have been reaching out to me from a lot of different walks of life. Um, I've also got a lot of feedback from people who wanna actually purchase items from me, which is very, very important for me and very much needed because again on my situation being an unhoused fashion designer I think it's, it's extremely important for people for me to be the spokesperson for people that are unhoused because usually when you think of a homeless person there's this stigma that oh I have to be dirty I have to be you know um, unclean I have to be hanging outside with a sign. I have to have holes in my clothes, you know. At the end of the day, homeless does mean, though, that I do not have a permanent address. If I would show what I'm going through right now, I would not be as far as I am in life. Monday began designing in 2015, and five years later, her signature collection was launched. So in 2020, and that's when I started the burlap, which is what I call coffee couture. I would take it around certain people, certain stores and show people, and they would let me know, wow, this is incredible, this is amazing, I haven't seen this before. A lot of things I do, I always let the public speak for it, because the public is gonna tell you <laughs> whether it's hot or not, so. <laughs> Where did the idea coffee couture come from? Well, initially, while I was homeless on the train in Chicago, sleeping on the trains, sleeping out of my storage, I was walking down Magnificent Mall, and it has a roastery, a Starbucks roastery, which was recently built there. And apparently, I think it's the biggest Starbucks roastery in the world. But anyway, I was passing by, very downtrodden, sad, crying as I was walking. i never forget that day. And I looked over and in a window of the roastery, I saw some coffee bags with images on it. Automatically, as soon as I saw those bags, I saw the images of clothing in my head because that's how my brain works. Again, being familiar with poverty, being familiar with making something out of nothing, being familiar with... um being original and creative and making the most of what, uh, out of what you do have, I'm used to that. Even now today, I'm still, I'm in my late 20s now, but over half of my life, I've been homeless or in shelters. You mentioned in one of your posts that being an artist saved your life. Literally. Literally, and what I mean by that is um, if I wasn't creating, if I wasn't doing what I've done and what I'm currently doing with clothing, I feel as though I will be totally on the other end of the the spectrum. I feel like I will be, I feel like I will be just completely in a different realm. You were featured in... Vogue. Tell me about that. I've been featured there a few times. They've had me in their best of section as well. A few times with one of my favorite photographers that I've worked with for years. His name is Ryan. His Instagram is KVNTY. And he's a very, very dope photographer. And 
Chicago, and we've got published so many hundreds of times in different magazines all around the world. If you'd like more information on Monday's fashions, you can follow her on Instagram at P-A-N-A-C-H-E dot underscore. Thanks for watching Fox Soul. I'm Derica Abraham. Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and it's good. Yeah. We got the ladies in the building, and we have the cobbler queen herself. Yes. To feed us. Ooh. Yes. So we have some Crown Royal Peach Cobbler. We have Pecan and Praline. We have Honey Bun Peach Cobbler and my favorite, Cookie Butter. Ooh, Ooh. I cannot wait to dig in and I know you can't wait to dig in. Ladies, nice. all right, but we got to <laughs> dig into some topics because we're going to talk about people charging for dinner parties they invite you to without you expecting it. Like, what? what? Really? Who does that? Absolutely like, not. Mm -mm. And a woman saying that she's too hot and men are intimidated by her. I mean, it well, happens. Mm, yeah. mm, mm. <laughs> and of course, we gotta talk about girl dinner, because listen, mm. this might be this might my be girl dinner. Okay. Okay. Yes. Are y'all ready? Yes. Let's, Let's right. get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. Mm. I'm telling you, this peach cobbler baby is unlike any other you've had. And I know the girls on the couch are ready to start talking because otherwise they're going to finish this peach You're cobbler, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here for the very first time, we've got Sydney Mack in the building. Woo! Ready to join in on this girl chat. <laughs> and of course, my host, when I ain't here, we got Cindy Burbano, <laughs> morning show radio personality and TV Aww. host. And the girl behind the Adultish Wine podcast, we got Woo! Paige Crutcher. All right, I want to dive into the being too hot for potential mm. partners. Let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> 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 Cindy, you come are. On. You are. Yes. But you I can't can talk because you have a partner. But see, when I was single, mm -hmm. no one was approaching me. I don't know if it was the resting bitch face or just like I'm just too intimidating. I it just happened. had. Phil on my podcast episode that's coming out this week, and he told me that I'm too intimidating, and he said it's a it's a blessing and a curse to be beautiful, which I yeah. took for a compliment. Thank you. Yes, but I don't believe I don't I don't see myself that way. Well, you're successful. You're you tall. You're beautiful. That's gonna intimidate anybody. You got thighs. Yep. <laughs> I do got some legs for days. <laughs> legs for days. But I want somebody who's gonna. Not be intimidated by that. I was about to say, if you have a RBF, like, and they can't handle that, then they don't need you at all. I know. <laughs> RBF. Yeah. Maybe I do. Have you ever had a partner tell you, like, you know, I wasn't going to talk to you because you were intimidating. You're so beautiful. No, because I would never let it get that far if they can't handle <laughs> just my arresting like face, then them. they can't handle anything else. <laughs> yeah. So th the reason we're talking about this is uh, New York Post had this article of a woman who's very voluptuous. She's got the huge titties. She's got the big ass. I mean, she is an hourglass. I think for her, like, yeah, it must be very intimidating. But I feel like everyday women like us, but fabulous, obviously. Um, there might be people who just won't ever talk to us because they think we're too much. I think the what I usually get from men and women is, um, oh, I thought you were so different. Like once they start talking to me, mm. oh, I didn't know you were gonna be like super nice, or you were gonna, I thought you were gonna be rude, or I, or maybe like stuck up, or whatever it is. Maybe just from my profession, or maybe the way I look. I don't know what gives that impression. But then once they get to know me, they're like, you're so different. I thought of you so different. I'm yeah. Like, People are judging books by too many covers. Yep. It's got to stop. Yeah. I think it's more of their internal battle as well. Like, I don't think it has anything to do with the mm -hmm. person that they're looking at. I think it's all within themselves. They need to figure, <laughs> figure it out. Yeah, they're like, should I, should I, should yeah. I, should I. I mean, have you guys ever experienced that where you were intimidated to talk to someone, whether it's a romantic partner or, ooh, ooh, Okay, Paige, what do you like? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm putting myself in the opposite position. Yeah, I do see a lot of really, really, really good looking guys, and I'm like, uh, I shouldn't. And is this in real life? Is this on my Yeah, no, okay. real life. <laughs> is this in your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> Not on the apps, you know? Like, I see, and I'm like, yeah, they're probably like, a player. But they're... see, they're judging I the book. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I know! I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> 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 Cindy, what about you? 
Um, I, I don't, I would never approach a, a guy. Just, I'm Period. just so right. old school like that. The guy I feel needs to court me. They need to give me the attention. And no, I'm not intimidated by anybody. I, I think I've been around enough very successful uh, or even just in the entertainment business, athletes, et cetera, that I'm, it's part of our business. So for me, it's just like anybody I can talk to pretty much. But I wouldn't approach a man. No. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That ain't you. No. Ah. He needs to show the interest first, and then I'll choose if I want to talk to you. Mm. <laughs> Sydney, have you ever been intimidated by approaching someone? I'm the same way. I would never go approach someone. Um, I'm an introvert, so I, I don't really, <laughs> like, like, we I have to be friends want. first and then go there. So I would, I would never probably approach someone. <laughs> okay. I mean, I know, Paige, you're still in the dating world. Yes, ma'am. You're hearing <laughs> that they would never approach anyone. Are you on that path? I don't like, want to. That's not ideal. That's you don't not want what, to. No, I want someone to approach me. Yeah. I'm an independent, intimidating, boss ass woman, yes. woman, yes. air quotes. Uh -huh. <laughs> that I want somebody who sees me and is like, I want that. Yeah. Mm. Come get me. Yeah. So and you then try three more times. <laughs> I'm, I'm not actively, but I mean, people are telling me to do all sorts of different things. People are trying to help me. I'm struggling out here on the streets, on the <laughs> sidewalk. Is it, is it, <laughs> on the sidewalk? <laughs> is I got one time on the, the street. Sidewalk. What's happening it's these tough. days? It's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's just terrible. Have some cobbler. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, I've already gained a few pounds of muscle. It was a few more. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk about uh, friendships or what we think are friendships and uh, how dinner parties can go wrong. You stay right there. We'll be right back. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. Nightcap, we're having a girls' night with my ladies. We've got Sydney, Cindy, and Paige. <laughs> <laughs> and we got an audience, honey. Okay, so there's this story. I saw it on Reddit. This guy went to a mutual friend's house for a dinner party. They were like, don't even bring anything. Like, don't even stress about it. They have dinner ready. And he brought chocolates because he was like, you know, I yeah. can't show up empty-handed. Like, let me show, show up with some chocolates. The next day, he received a bill for the dinner party. No. That's ridiculous. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's actually happened to me before. Now, what? Now Stop. that you think about okay, it. Okay, what do you mean? So what? it was like a crawfish boil, and then later I got a text like, okay, if you want to contribute to the crawfish boil, like, you can send a memo. It wasn't mandatory, but... Yeah, that but has happened afterwards. to me before. But no. it kind of afterwards, yeah. I, I don't agree. Like, if you're going to yeah. do that, do it prior. Like, hey, we're going to have a birthday, and we're going to go to this uh, restaurant. It's, you know, 50 bucks a head if you want to, you know, RSVP, whatever. Yes. I get that. But if you invite me to somebody's house, or I go, you know, and I'm, 
eating, you're invite, you're hosting. Mm -hmm. It isn't a what do you call that where people a bring buffet pot, or pot, potluck? Potluck. Pot yeah. yeah, I'm okay with crazy. paying, but just tell me beforehand. Exactly. Don't I'm, tell me after I already ate everything that I yeah. wanted to eat. <laughs> and then you feel guilty. Like I assume you paid something. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like okay, well, how do I not? They've already seen that I read it. Like now I, I've got. I give just you, never. Yeah. I'll never go back. Like I'll pay Facts. for it. Okay, that's cool. Here you go. Well, we're not friends. I just think it's very <laughs> tacky. Mm. It is. Classic. Yeah. If you're going to host something, yeah. host it. Yeah. Um, or again, say it's a potluck. I'm doing the crawfish. Someone bring the sausage. Someone bring right. the corn. Someone bring the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Like my family always says, you know, traigan lo que van a tomar. So bring whatever you're going to drink. But yeah. the yeah, food is absolutely. provided and that's sure. it. And the person brought a hosting gift. You got to bring a hosting gift. They should, okay, they so should is send that the receipt. Is that something you should always do? I do. Yeah, I yes. do not like yeah. to show up empty handed. And what do you show up with? A bottle wine. of wine. Typically yeah. wine, sometimes flowers, depending. Mm -hmm. too. If it's or like ask a, if beforehand, like what they need. What they need. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Oh, that's nice, yeah. So yeah. if someone were to be coming to your dinner party that you're hosting, and they show up empty-handed, do you look at them differently? No. 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 I don't. Well, look at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you like, don't. I take note. But then the next time you go to their house, you don't take anything. No, I yeah. still do. You still do? <laughs> I still do. Okay. I don't care. No. Nah. Yeah, me neither. Sometimes it's cultural. Like for Latinos, for us, it's very much the, um, we bring stuff to the house and we celebrate. It's, I think it's uh, part of the culture. Maybe they're, uh, the way they were educated or they were brought up in whatever country or culture. It's not a normal thing to do, so mm -hmm. you can't, I wouldn't judge, but I would personally take something. Yeah. I think wine is like the universal, mm -hmm. easy, like even if you're last minute, like, F I forgot to get something, stop oh. by the liquor store <laughs> <laughs> or even a grocery store and pick up a bottle of wine. Yeah. It's, it's or so even easy. like what you have in your pantry, like, I'll just bring an un unopened bottle and <laughs> that'll be yeah. the gift. <laughs> okay. Dinner party. We're hosting it. What exactly needs to be? at a dinner party for it to be successful. I feel like there's a lot of stress when you host friends over and you're gonna As hopefully. the host, what needs to be yeah. there? I think that when you get to a certain age, like cut the shit and hire the bartender. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you know what I mean? Like take that chef. pressure off yourself. Mm. Um, I, I think it's classy, like guests don't have to go you know, pour themselves. I think it's like a special touch that you can do. Well, She's I like, hired a chef once because I just don't know how to cook. And, and then, of course, my fiance offered that we were going to do the Shabbat dinner at my house the, on Fridays. And I, I'm like, really, thank you. So all these, you know, his friends who are also Jewish are coming. And I have no idea. I don't even know how to cook a normal, you know, dinner. <laughs> Forget a Shabbat dinner. So then I hired a, a chef. So and they were super impressed, and I, so was I. I was like, wow. <laughs> we were like, ah, I did a great job. I know, this is great. Okay. And you did. You organized yeah. that. But never again. Oh. Just one time. It's a one-time thing. Okay, so yeah. outsourcing drinks or food yeah. would be a good recipe for a dinner party. I'm like the host assistant. My girlfriend is the one that hosts, and I just do whatever she tells me. So I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like I am never gonna host, but yeah. I will assist. Yes. Okay. When it comes to cleanup, <laughs> mm. do you stay around and help a friend? Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you were invited to their yes. house, yeah. Okay. So Always. you make sure you're the last one. No, not the last one, but I will <laughs> start cleaning up and then like, okay, guys, I'm hey, not doing saw everything. Y'all clean up. Y'all yeah. saw me put some things away, the yeah. dishes in the dishwasher, but I'm out because I'm not doing all the cleanup. Right. Okay. Smart, smart, smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the biggest issue with dinner parties is the cleanup afterwards, yeah. but that's something you should also outsource. <laughs> all right, well, you stay right there because Girl Chat continues after the break. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. 
Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Back to the nightcap, we're having a girls' night with these wonderful looking women. <laughs> we got Sydney, Woo. Cindy, and Paige. All right, let me ask you all this How are you on your self love journey right now? Great, amazing. <laughs> okay, great, <laughs> amazing. Yes, that, that was a deep question. It, threw me, it definitely threw yeah, me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta ask, I gotta ask because of this next story I'm about to bring up. So everybody's in a great place. Yes. yes. Y'all love yourselves. You guys are fabulous. Yes. You know you are yes. the goddesses. Mm. Manifest. That you are. Okay. <laughs> this woman mm -hmm. decided that she was gonna pay $3,000 and marry herself. Well, okay, what? What's the benefit though? Elaborate, please. Okay, <laughs> can you do that? <laughs> so, How does that happen? Bad luck in the uh, romantic world decided, you know, I'm going to go to therapy, do the self-love work, and she stopped drinking, stopped smoking. She stopped all the things. And she was like, you know what? I'm bad all by myself. I'm going to marry myself because I'm amazing. Now, people are saying to her that uh, she did that because she can't get a mate. Oh. So, would you ever go as far as marrying yourself? I don't think so. No. Girl, with my luck, I'm going on my third marriage. I'd probably divorce myself. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> no, I don't trust me with marriage. Uh, no. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm not one to marry myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I feel her, you know, go to therapy. She's stopping the smoking and the non healthy habits. And I just, I don't think I would go as far as to marry myself. Just live together. Just, <laughs> I just am all with my myself all the time anyway. Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, maybe it was like a spirit. I don't know. Good for her. Not for me. Yeah, I don't get the official marrying yourself thing. You can just, I mean, it's okay if you don't want a partner anymore. You don't have to yeah. <laughs> go out of your way to make it all official to marry yourself. Make it so official. Yeah. It is odd. I, I don't know that. And it's like, what if you meet someone? And you're married. And then <laughs> you're like, so Sorry, I have to go divorce myself, myself. <laughs> real quick. Like, who are you married? Who's your ex? Like, who's your uh, myself? Me. <laughs> and then it's like, are it's like, you do you unwell? not love yourself anymore? Because right. now you're divorcing yourself. Yeah, now it turns into like a just bigger deep problem. a yeah. spiral. We're gonna spiral. I yeah. think she needs help for other things, not just the self love situation. And she went to therapy. Yeah, I, now it I'm questioning <laughs> the therapist. Like, <laughs> the therapist say, like, yeah, go with your bad self. Yes, <laughs> Take yourself yeah. to the yeah. altar. That's odd. No. <laughs> okay, yeah. As a saint, speaking this all out loud, I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, no. Absolutely not. All right, so the ideal partner, the ideal person you would marry, what factors do you have for them? Your ah, fiance. Your fiance. Well, let me okay, what camera, because he's looking. <laughs> See? Wait, three. Oh, right here, here, baby. I love you. This? Okay, <laughs> what, what, what factors does your fiance have? Oh, my gosh. Apart from the physical. Okay. Physical is amazing. And then, uh, no, he's he's loyal, he's kind, he loves my daughter like it's, you know, his own. Um, he is very hardworking, mm -hmm. and he supports me. He's my biggest fan, so I love that. Oh, that's amazing. He's kind. All right, what are you heart. looking for, Paige? I'm looking for someone open-minded, mm -hmm. good communicator, 
loyal. Mm. Where am I looking? Over there, because you're, <laughs> you're, you're looking for him. You're looking for him. Please uh, talk to him. <laughs> um, funny. I need a sense of humor. Oh, I yes. want to laugh. Like, life is hard. I want to be able to grow old with somebody and, and be able to laugh. I want someone hardworking. If you yeah. lose your job, like, go work at a fast food restaurant. Like, it doesn't that's matter. what you got to do. Let's yeah. do it. Um, yeah. So it's, not, it's not a lot. Yeah, I'm not asking for a lot. Like, it's sexual. Well, you have to have you. sexual chemistry, too. Like that oh, we're talking about physical things? We, we know about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's requirement a requirement again? Well, it's dwind you know, it's just fuzzy these yeah, it's days. Fuzzy but these days. I'm <laughs> probably 6'2 right now, so in these heels. Yeah. So nice. tall, Someone handsome. Who can handle that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Sydney, I know you're in a relationship, but what do you, yes. what do you love about her? I love that she listens to me. I don't mm. have to repeat myself a million times. No. So the problem is solved then and there. Um, we motivate each other. That's really important to me because I can't be with a bum. So, um, and um, she's just beautiful. Obviously, you have to have that physical attraction as well. Mm. Okay, physical attraction is is key. All right, listen. <laughs> I know you, you gonna get married at some point to this magnificent <laughs> man that we keep hearing about. Mm, mm, mm. And you on your search, babe. <laughs> you on your search. Listen, don't marry yourself. <laughs> All right? I'm not there yet. <laughs> no, I haven't lost it yet. <laughs> now, you ain't lost. You ain't lost, <laughs> girl. You a badass bitch. Yes. Okay? All right, girls. Um, I need to go find out about a, a cobbler, OK? I'm just so. going to eat my feelings. <laughs> 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 Don't eat your feelings. Don't eat your feelings. All right, Sydney, I hope you had a blast with us here on Girls yes. Night. Cheers. We're going to headline the Cheers, ladies. Because uh, I got to find out uh, the different topics you can have on this delicious peach cobbler. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here. Being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. the bar now because I've got China Watts, the cobbler queen in the building. Yes. And you brought the midnight munchies. Mm -hmm. ew, ew, ew. Mm -hmm. Listen, um, the girls and I were downing. I saw that cobbler. I saw. And I did not know that I didn't even get a complete one. Okay. So I'm here to get every <laughs> single flavor. Well, you are going to enjoy this. This one is my honey bun peach cobbler, okay? All right, so go. what was the genesis for this right here? So I wanted something fun, creative, something that the kids would like too, because mm. all kids like honey buns and cinnamon rolls, so I actually do both. But this one is a fan favorite. You'll love it. Okay. <laughs> I told you guys. 
girl. Mm -hmm. What do we got up next? So this one is the Crown Royal mixed in with my famous signature sauce. So we're just gonna, just a little drizzle. We don't want you to, we don't want you too lit. Enjoy Ooh. on that one. So, China, what led you to become the cob cobbler queen? So actually I started out about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, family, friends wanted some peach cobbler one night. So I came over and I just brought a pan, not thinking too much into it. From there, they went crazy over it. So that's kind of the start of my business. Oh, so you were good at something and you capitalized on it. Right, okay. right, right. And so I got my recipe from my grandmother, Virice Winslow. She was one of the key starters to my business. And then I just added my own flair to it. Oh, good. <laughs> so that's so much fun for a friend's girls night, just like today, right? right? Yeah, it's perfect. So All right, what we this got one is from my Southern gals, okay? This is called the Pecan Praline. So we're gonna actually add the sauce to it. And everyone in New Orleans or New Orleans, depending on where you're from, okay. they're gonna they're gonna agree on this one was a hit. All right, so I'm gonna get some more junk in my truck. <laughs> this, right? Be hauling. <laughs> I'm just saying. No! <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> oh shit. That's good. <laughs> okay, last one before I, I go. Oh, 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 they're ready. Okay. Uh oh. Mm -mm. All right, girls. <laughs> this one is like my number oh my one so seller, okay? Oh this one is called the cookie butter. So let's drizzle oh this goodness oh. on top. Oh, wow. Not That's so what I was much. missing. I mean, just a little, all right? Oh. Okay, so we're going to have to try this. Oh, so right. we're going to have All right, baby, where do they get your cobbler from? So follow me on Facebook, Instagram, The Peach Cobbler Queen. Make oh, sure wow. it says queen. queen. Okay, this is my logo over here. There we go. Um, and call me, Facebook me, and we can get your party started. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. All right, yeah. for your next girls' night. All right, cheers, ladies. Ooh, cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 Cheers to you. We'll cheers. see you guys <laughs> next time. We've got every episode of the Nightcap and we can go for hours. Download the Fox Local app on any of the following smart TV platforms and get in on the fun. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this and we're not. How do I know the way I'm gonna respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'll probably do. Oh, man. I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter.
relationship when one partner makes a drastic change, be it physical or emotional, having their partner's support can make all the difference. On today's case, Ms. Edwards says she expected Mr. Gibson's support when she embarked on her successful weight loss journey. Unfortunately, she says that instead of being supportive, Mr. Gibson has been mean-spirited and triggered by the attention she's received after her transformation. Now she says she's had enough and she's here in my courtroom to end this relationship. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Edwards versus Gibson. Thank you very much, Ms. Edwards and Mr. Gibson. Ms. Edwards, you are here, you say, to end your relationship with Mr. Gibson. You say he has made you feel less than for far too long, and today you want your confidence back. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Gibson, you say all of Ms. Edwards' accusations are baseless, and you are not willing to leave this courtroom a single man. Yes, Your Honor. So it sounds like, Mr. Gibson, you plan on fighting for your relationship. Let me see from Ms. Edwards if there's anything there to fight for. Ms. Edwards, why are we in court today, ma'am? Your Honor, I'm here in divorce courts today because I'm just tired of Cortez. It's too much insecurities, it's too much lying, it's too much cheating. Um, I just feel like he's just very insecure. I mean, I got my body done, it looks great. You look good. Thank you. And ever since then, it's just been a mess. And I just, I'm just ready for it to be over. I'm tired of it. You look great. You look absolutely great. Were you um, a bigger girl before? Um, I wasn't as big, but yes, I had three kids, so I was very insecure about how I looked. Ah, so a little bit of a mommy makeover after all these years. Yes, ma'am. And now are you feeling good about yourself? I love it. I feel great. Excellent. And you look great. Thank Absolutely. You. It's about feeling great and looking great. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Gibson, you can't tell me you don't like the fact that this is your woman. She looks gorgeous. I do, Your Honor. So what's the problem? I feel I'm here to save my relationship with Diamond. Because, like, I really feel like she's the one for me. Despite my mistakes and my past relationships, like, I really feel like this is the one for me. I just want her to stop disrespecting me in our relationship and flirting with other guys and other girls. Ooh, so it's all over the place, according to you. Yes, ma'am. Let me go on over here to Miss Edwards. Miss Edwards, why don't you take me back a little bit? You've been together for three years. Yes, ma'am. You all do not have children together, but you have a blended family. You each have children from previous relationships. Yes, Your Honor. I heard there was a proposal, but no <laughs> engagement. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that sounds a little weird. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you all met and what got us to divorce court? Yes, Your Honor. So, I met Cortez on social media. Somebody was... slipped into somebody's DM. I slipped into his. That's how you I willed him in. I wanted him. I told him, I said, you're so fine. I mean, look at him. I said, you're so fine. I just thought I'd let you know. And he opened up the inbox, and he read it, and he responded. And I asked him, I said, do you have a girlfriend? He said, no. I said, well, you do now. Yep. <laughs> Talk and... about shooting that shot, girl. You were okay. not playing. I wanted him, so I got him. And... and you all started dating. Do you live together now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this has become serious, correct? Yes. When you saw this young lady, you decided when, she was shooting a shot, so you were going for it? When Diamond first inboxed me, I left it there for a while, for a couple hours. Then I inboxed her back. 20 minutes. A couple hours? <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes. You didn't leave it there for a while. That's yeah, nothing. you know, really 20 did. minutes. I left it there for a couple hours, and then I asked her. I told matter of fact, I told her, you're beautiful yourself. Thought I'd just let you know. And it went from there. And so y'all started flirting with each other and the rest is history. <laughs> and yes. the rest was history. So how in the world did we get to here? Let me give you an example. As you know, I got my body done. We go to Miami. I what was... kind of procedure did you get? I got a Brazilian butt lift. Okay, so you got a new booty and you feel good. And great. Flat stomach on flat Too flat. Too good. Okay. <laughs> so we go and I was doing a, the self-massage in the shower. Right. And I just heard this noise coming from the outside. We was in a hotel room. No. I'm in the bathroom at the, at the time. Tiz and the masseuse are out in the room. So as I'm draining, I just hear slurping noises. No. So no, I hopped slurping out, noises. yes, but I couldn't hop out the I shower out as the shower, quick no. as I wanted to because I had just got my body done, you know what I'm saying? So I'm sore. Mm. So when I walk out there, she's fixing herself. She has this grin. Tez just looks, puts his head down, shakes his head. So I'm like, what's going on? 
Everybody you froze up. Are you suggesting that he got a happy ending to the I massage? I really, I think so. That's and when I asked him about it, he, what, what was it then? That's not it at all. Well, what was it? She got her massage from her masseuse. She has gotten a shower. I knew I was gonna have to massage her once we got back to home. So I'm asking her masseuse, how do I massage? She's showing me how to do it, this and that, and she told me to practice on her. Boy. So I'm practicing on her. I don't know where she hear noises from. How can you even hear noises like that if you're in the shower? Because the door was open. No. Was no noises, Your Honor. Well, wait a minute. I'm gonna tell you, the woman says she heard slurping noises. Yes, I'm not deluded. Well, what at least sounded like slurping noises. That's in her mind. Was no slurping so noises. So what were you doing? No what were you doing with the masseuse? All I was doing was she was showing me how to massage. And then she told me to massage practice on her. I'm practicing cool. on her. Massage. And when she got out the shower, that's when she was seeing her getting up and whatever else that she I'm thought she I'm just curious, seen. Mr. Gibson, why couldn't you say, can you show me how I'm going to need to massage my woman? She'll be out of the shower in a minute. Why, why would you need to practice on a masseuse? Because oh. I thought the masseuse would be the one showing you. Yeah. Why did the Planet, masseuse need to be is. massaged by no, you? She was showing me how to do it at first. On I'm her. I'm asking her, like, is this right? It's before I was massaged still, on That's her. still very then inappropriate. Then she was telling me when I was Regardless doing it. Regardless like, of whatever happened in that room. Do it here. It do was it there. inappropriate. Yeah. What about the time I found a woman's bra in the court? Oh, Lord Jesus, we are in the middle of bras. Not my bra. Whose bra was it? I, you so, me. Your Honor, we go to the grocery store one day. I was there grocery shopping, and I had forgot my purse in the car. So I put my groceries on hold. I run out to the car. I'm searching the car up and down. I find a random bra under my daughter's car seat. You, you know who brought it. So I say, whose bra was this? You know exactly whose bra? bra. Tell, tell everybody whose bra was. Tell them what you got to say. That is her daughter's bra. My daughter is 13. The bra wasn't even that like, big. She didn't even look at the bra. What is she didn't big? It was, it, it was bigger she than mine, it. and I'm in the deep. And once she seen it, she just seen red. Wait, wait, wait. Whose bra? Get you tell me. Was there any cheating that I'm not aware of? When we first got together. I did. I'm not gonna lie. And she, and she always showing her booty. Let me show it one more time, because I don't think you understand how good I feel, <laughs> sir. Oh, and that's why, so you giving up the butt now. And you got the bikini. Guess who took the picture? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as a oh. myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. That was not her daughter's bra. Yeah. I was not there. Whose bra was I don't know. I have not seen it. She has not submitted the evidence. But a mama know if that's her daughter's bra. I'm going to tell you that right now. Thank you. So come up with another excuse. Tell me something else. Because it wasn't a daughter's bra.
Well, I, I buy her bras. I buy her bras. I supply the she bras. She's 13. Who else bought the bras? I know that was not her bra. That was not her bra. The 13 year old don't have any money. Mm. And unless the mother bought it, she didn't buy her own bra. And this lady is saying she didn't buy that bra. So again, sir, whose bra was it? That's not, that's her daughter's bra. See what I'm saying? That's why I say he just doesn't take anything serious. And it's just she hard for me to believe him. But you bra. have all these insecurities and problems with me. Her daughter told her it's an old bra. I feel like the accusers be the abusers, Your Honor. Something tells me that there's some trust that's missing in this relationship. Yes, ma'am. So where's that coming from? Why is the trust missing in the relationship? He just doesn't know how to tell the truth. You see the responses? Why wouldn't I? Why would I trust him? Every time I have an answer, or I mean, every time I have a question for him, there's never a straight-up answer. You can't even be a man about it and tell me, like, you know what, babe? No. This is what happened. You know what I mean? Give me a reason to trust you. I don't have a reason to trust you. I'm left to think what I think, and I'm a woman, so I'm gonna That's think the worst of the worst. Mr. Gibson, Mrs. Miss Edwards is saying there's something that her spidey sense is telling her that you're not being honest about. That's what she's saying. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. But there's something that has happened in your relationship that makes her question you. You tell me, did anything happen? Was there any cheating that I'm not aware of? between the two of you that I'm right. not aware of? When we first got together. I did. I'm not gonna lie and to she, you. And she always showing her booty. Always showing her booty to any and everybody. <laughs> well, I mean... If the... I can tell you, can I it please? It looks you? good. Let me show it one more time, because I don't think you understand how good I feel, <laughs> no. sir. It looks no. good. Why wouldn't You know I? what? Actually... <laughs> Why I think wouldn't you I? submitted a, a before and I? after picture. Yes, Your Honor. I would I like to see evidence. this, because since... Miss Edwards is really proud of this new booty. Look at my belly. I mean, it might not look a lot to you guys, but my stomach hanging out of my pants, it does not do... Look, look. I love that. Yeah. No, I did not. I felt insecure about that. Oh, and that's why. So you're giving up the butt now. And you got the bikini. And Your Honor, guess herself. who took that picture? Hmm? Guess who took the picture? Oh, I'm pretty sure. I'll tell you a story. One day, we go out to the bar. Mm -hmm. We go to the bar. We having a good old time, kicking it with some friends. She goes to the bathroom. She's drunk. I know when my lady gets drunk, she can linger off or be extremely friendly sometimes. So she's gone for a while, like at least 30 minutes. So I go to the bathroom to 15. get her. The women's bathroom. Yes, I went in the women's bathroom. <laughs> I go to get her. He's crazy. I go in there, her and the, another girl coming out the stall, fixing their pants. She wanted they to see what I looked each like, other. Cortez. They Fake kissing, whispering Listen, on each other. Everybody knows I, I got my know, body done. Court says everybody knows I got my body done. She just wanted to see. Why Let are me you see in what a it looks like. With another girl showing her your butt. You we don't were know intoxicated. This girl. That was it. Ain't nothing happened in there. Nothing do happened. Do you think something happened in the in the in the women's stall? I really do. So what was the thing that you thought happened in the women's? They was stall? doing whatever they was doing, other than using the bathroom. So your your woman says to you, she was showing off her butt to the girl. A strange in woman. Well, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but women become best friends in the bathroom. <laughs> we fix each other's clothes. But she don't know we her. We attack... I can not tell you the number of times. I'm gonna tell you right now. Women, that's how we do. We that's become best we friends do. when we get to... I mean, it Thank sounds you. crazy. Thank but, you. But it's just something that women do. Thank you. I'm just Thank giving you. you a little bit of... Thank you. ...inside information that men will never find out. I know, you're looking at me like, Lord, judge, but no. it's just the truth. The more you know. I'm sorry, but that's just not enough for me. Like, I just feel like he just doesn't take anything serious. Mr. Gibson, I think she's right. I think you need to be more serious. Can I ask you something? Yes, you may. Oh, let's get it. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here 
being unapologetically me on a platform like this. I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Okay, what about mm -hmm. on social media? Okay, tell me what happened. She, she have a picture on social media. Some people comment, people like it. I respect that. I got a beautiful lady. Yep. So, but she'll go too far into it on social media. For example, she posted a picture. People liked it. People commented. She started commenting back to the to the males, mm -hmm. and he's just talking to her, telling her, "Yeah, babe." I like your body and this and that and that. She's saying it's a family member. Now, I know she call everybody babe and babe. She'll call you babe or babe. Not here in this courtroom, she won't. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she talk. So I'm not really thinking nothing of it, but now it's like, okay, why are y'all talking like this? Who is this? My gay like, best her friend. Her child is her gay best friend. You know it's my so gay best friend. So I, I ain't gonna lie. I goes deeper into it. She leaves one day, leaves her phone, leaves it open. What I picture go are you her talking phone. about? What picture? I see this same boy that she was talking to on her post. She inboxed him a naked picture of her body. That don't sit well with me. Why'd you send a naked picture I to submitted you? that, actually. Whoa. That looks like the Thank before you. and after of the surgery Thank you, picture. my gay best friend. I can't send no He's another girl best any friend. of that. I can't send no another girl And he asked me to see my body. Everybody knew I was excited about getting my body done. So, yes, I definitely sent him pictures of my body. Okay, so here's the deal. The two of you are going to have to learn to set some boundaries with each other if you're going to have a successful relationship. You are feeling yourself, Miss Edwards, and I can tell you, Mr. Gibson, having been somebody who lost a significant amount of weight, she's gonna feel herself for a while because this has been a whole journey and you don't know what kind of securities or insecurities she felt on the when she was a bigger girl or a girl that didn't have the body that she wanted. She kind of felt like she was trapped You're in the wrong body. And so what me. she is all doing right now is enjoying the full woman that she feels like she finally can be. That's really the journey that she's on. And, and I can say to you, Ms. Edwards, you don't know fully who you're going to be. Right now, you might want to show your body off as much as possible, but then there may come a time where you only want to reserve it for the person that you love. But you're not fully who you are yet. Yes, ma'am. But you don't need to seek the approval of other people because you should never have allowed them to penetrate your spirit. And I when... feel like, Your Honor, that's... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I feel like that's what... My biggest thing is me having three kids, I'd eventually look in the mirror and start to not like my own self. You got with me with so that So now body that I have I the it. body that I want... I tell you every day. Mm -hmm. It's different. I, had a, I started having kids. I was 17. I'm 31. And you finally feel like you can be your true, authentic self. I got with her with that be. same body she had with them. And I tell her every I day. Know, I know, but Mr. It. Gibson, you were fine with it, which is one of the reasons why she's still with you. But she wasn't fine with it. Ms. Edwards, this is real important. Do not allow anybody to define you. You have to be the author of the only dictionary that defines you because if you let somebody else define you, if they start to put a negative definition on it, that's going to hurt you. Yes, ma'am. If you're defining it, no matter what, you can feel good about yourself. 
Mr. Gibson? Yeah, I know. I just feel like it's a respect thing. You and do that's what wrong. that's why I just Aren't feel like me? the this final straw for me about. was when he proposed to me, when he fake proposed to me. What does that she... mean? Oh. Do you see a ring? Only bling on my finger is my nail. Do you see a ring? She didn't no. take it. Well, what right? happened? So we go to the grocery store. It was just me, him, and my daughter. I had my daughter in one hand. I had a thing of milk in the other hand. And he really tapped me on my shoulder. I turned around and he said, babe, can I ask you a serious question? I said, what's up? He said, will you marry me? That's all you got? I'm sorry, but that's just not enough for me. Like, I just feel like he just doesn't take anything serious. So I instantly got mad. Like, who does I still it? don't have an That's how you ask somebody? You didn't get on a knee. You didn't do any of that. Like, I just feel like I deserve it. Oh, I do a lot for you. The least you can do is get the, the little knee dirty or Why something. Why couldn't you get on the knee? She, before I could... She seen the ring. She just burst out crying. It just didn't feel like anything. Cussing just, me I just out. Felt nah, like this it was ain't right. I, feel like I it's can't give you an joke. answer right now. Embarrassing me in front of the store, in front of everybody. Wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Gibson, is this the woman that you want to marry? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Edwards, is this the man that you want to marry? Yes, ma'am. Something tells me that I don't care how the man that I want to marry asks me to marry him. If I want to marry him, I'm about to lock that down if that's the person for me. If he's your person, y'all could get over all this little mess. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. I don't think either one of you are cheating. I think you need to work on boundaries, which we've all agreed that we are going to work on boundaries. But I think you can get over this little mess if that's your person. I feel like he is. I just want him to take things a little bit more serious. Mr. I... Mr. Gibson, I think she's right. I think you need to be more serious. Can I ask her something? Yes, you may. <laughs> oh, let's get it. Diamond, I love you. You know you mean everything to me. You my moonlight, you my shining star, you my everything. You helped me change who I was. You made me who I am. You made me a man for not only myself, but for my kids, for you, for my family. I love you with everything in me. I promise to love you, protect you, provide for you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? I will. Put it on the right finger, boy. <laughs> See, he can't take nothing I'm serious. I'm a little nervous. No, I think he's nervous. <laughs> Oh, thank you, baby. I love you. I love you, too. Okay, you see how she bent over and the booty still popped? <laughs> you ain't got to go back to that side of the room. You need to stand over there. That's going to be your wife. Why couldn't he do that to begin with? 
because then I wouldn't have had the pleasure of seeing it all happen in front of me. So, you're supposed to say to yourself right now, that's all me, that's all mine. That's all that you need to worry about. Don't let nobody get in between you and you, Miss Edwards, stay out of other people's DMs. <laughs> you in the only DM that matters now. <laughs> somebody's fiance now. That's mine. It's all mine. <laughs> a proposal that I actually liked. I'm rooting for this couple. Listen, you loved Miss Edwards in the beginning. Yes. There's nothing wrong with little Edwards 2.0. No, not at all. And I think the two of them together, they might make a good enough match. I agree. You saw he got down on that knee. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't in the grocery store. No. Maybe she got a proposal. <laughs> Made in Georgia. When you mention the Tuskegee Airmen, most people these days are aware of the first black military pilots from World War II. I'm this guy, this person. But sadly, with so few still around, the opportunities to learn firsthand are slowly fading away. I'm Eugene Richardson, and I've been blessed I'm 95 years old. He may feel blessed to be 95, but we were blessed to have the opportunity to hear his experiences breaking down barriers. Well, I wanted to fly since I was a kid. And then in January of 44, they sent me to, I went to Tuskegee and started to fly through the flight program there, which took, took about a year. Tuskegee was the only place where black men were trained for, uh, to be pilots. Simply put, the military didn't believe that black men had the intelligence and skills to be pilots, but needed the reinforcements. People like Dr. Richardson dreamed of flying and service, and this was his chance. The flying program with blacks was actually an experiment, an experiment to see whether black men could be pilots or not. And uh, we were anxious to make this a positive experience. Now with movies and books about their exploits, the Tuskegee Airmen are legendary, but even as they're celebrated for their skill, not as much attention is paid to the obstacles that they had to overcome just for the opportunity to serve a country that still viewed them as less than. Did it ever bother you that you're there, you're, you're a pilot, you're serving your country, but you can't even go into town? Yeah, but you're afraid to go into town. And that was a little un unsettling. And you had to sort of wonder, what's wrong with these dumb people down here? <laughs> I'm down here to protect them, and they're treating me like, uh, you know, like I don't know what. His strength and wisdom allow him now to just move on. But the reality is, in a lot of ways, they were risking their lives at home for the opportunity to risk their lives potentially in combat. Even in uniform. I had a bus driver tell me, I don't give a damn about that uniform. You do, you do what you're supposed to do down here, you know. He said uniform didn't mean anything to him. And the consequences for resisting, even for what we now refer to as military heroes, was severe. Somebody has a song, Southern trees bear strange fruit, you know. It means that means somebody's hanging, being hung, hung on a tree. They had the test to get in. And yet they pushed on, not having any idea that they would ever be viewed as trailblazers or heroes, but knowing that their service could create opportunities. To me, it's important for people to know that so that we can sort of get rid of the stereotype that exists for, uh, about people with, with, with brown skin. People like Dr. Richardson will forever be remembered in history books, but their impact is being felt daily by so many of us who came after them. I came out of service in 46. Now at that time, they were not hiring guys with brown skin to be airline pilots. Well, my son, in April, my son retired as a, a captain uh, uh, for American Airlines. Now that, that happened as a result of men with brown skin being pilots during, during World War II. And for that, 
He tells me their sacrifices were well worth it. Never could have done it without the uh, Tuskegee Airmen experience. Dr. Eugene Richardson is living history.